Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Game Week 2 in the Vitality County Championship. And today, one here at Trent Bridge, with the visitors being Worcestershire. Now, Worcestershire drew against Warwickshire in their first match, and obviously Notts had that disappointing ending to the game against Essex here just a few days ago. But Ollie Mooney from the Trent Bridge media team caught up with Lyndon James earlier on this week, and here's his views on everything that happened in Essex and looking forward to this game against Worcestershire. Worcester on Friday, um, having had a couple of days sort of to reflect on that, that opening fixture, um, what has been sort of the, the, the thoughts and feelings of the group after our first game? Yeah, obviously a bit frustrating. Um, you know, we did a lot of good things in that game and to come away with a result like that is obviously, yeah, very frustrating. But the beauty of it is we've only got three days in between games, so you've got to pick yourself up and see back and train today and get ready to go again Friday. Well, quite a lot of overs in that match, actually, and um, I suppose compared to last season when sometimes maybe you would have wanted more game time than you actually got. Is, has it been quite pleasing to be getting off to that kind of start where you're, you're heavily involved in that bowling attack? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I sort of throughout the summer last year, my, my overs kind of picked up as it as it went on. So having a couple of stresses the two years before with Britt Hudson and trying to like limit my overs last year, but you know, I've worked hard with so Shiny, Pricey, um, to try and get my body in the best place it can be, and try and just kind of let me go now and, and be a some, an all-out senior kind of, you know, no limit on my overs or anything. Um, to get in touch with body feels good, so hopefully, it can, you know, long may it continue. Five wickets to to get yourself off the mark uh, on game on game one, and yeah, up there with Dan Patterson in the in the early yeah. wicket taking charts. I suppose it's uh, great to hit the ground running in that kind of way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I felt in pretty good rhythm um, in that in, in the Essex game, and then the North Hunts friendly. Um, so yeah, credit to Shani actually. Like when we went to Abu Dhabi, something wasn't quite right. I wasn't quite feeling that rhythm, and you know, we went away and, and found some old footage of when I've been you know bowling my, my better spells and. Um, we did a couple of little, little work ones together and you know, it all seemed to click in the last game, so I'm really happy with that. First competitive match under Pass as, mm. as new club captain, um, having found his leadership and, and, and how he's adapted to the new role. Yeah, I think he's great. I mean, obviously, having played under him in the one day stuff and then also a couple of games last year, um, you know, he's very calm, he's very methodical as well. Uh, he knows what he wants to get out of, out of his players and you know, you know what, what your role is, which I think, you know, is it any kind of leader is, you know, it's pretty vital that, that your players kind of know that and he's really honest about that. Um, but yeah, he just has full full faith in, in the side that he, he picks and the players that he picks to, to go out and deliver what, what they need to do. And uh, Worcester on Friday at home again, is it is it comforting to be having the first two games on home soil? Yeah, I think so. It's always nice. I obviously love playing here um, at home. And hopefully we can bounce back after last week, but you know we know our kind of style of cricket we want to play, the pitch we want to play on, and you know hopefully we come out with a better side of result this, this weekend. Having had sort of a, a feel for the conditions that you had in, on the Essex game, um, do you perhaps feel somewhat better prepared for what the April conditions will have in store for you come Friday? Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously it was different with the cricket or a ball. Um, felt like a very much new ball pitch. Um, I think you should well early on, you know, put that as under pressure, um, and then you know we saw as the sun came out, as said, same as it always is a trend, but the sun comes out, ball gets a little older, it can be a little bit easier to bow and score, and you know, that's what Matt Critchley and Paul Watt do against us on, on you know, Sunday, so yeah, I, I guess we understand that that probably will be the case again coming this weekend, um, so I guess that's the beauty of obviously knowing the, your home conditions a bit better than the position. With the, the new boys in Jack Haynes and, and Dylan Pennington making their uh, Council Championship debuts for the club and uh, both got off to a great start, you know, especially in the in the first innings. Um, you know, we talk about Jack Haynes with uh, that, that 77 and Dylan got his uh, first few wickets. Um, you know, how, how have they settled in to the side? And I suppose from a, a bowler's perspective, you know, how, how have you got, got along with uh, Dylan? Yeah, we'll start with Dylan. I think he was actually really unlucky in, in the uh, Essex game. He could, come, could have come away with a lot more wickets, uh, especially in the first innings. I think he had a lot of edges, I think, out of hand or didn't carry or like, you know, went away to the boundary or whatever. So I think he was very unlucky. But he kind of showed up, see what he can do. He can bowl with good pace, skillful. You know, he kept coming back to our goal. It seems to be one of those in that game. Um, and then Haynes, he obviously batted beautifully in that first innings. Um, 
I showed what he can do. Um, great temperament, high skill. Um, so I think they're two great additions. Obviously, similar age to me as well, which is quite nice to have a couple of lads kind of similar age to me, and uh, you know they fit the really, really nicely amongst the lads. The thoughts of Lyndon James there earlier on this week. Now, just to inform you that obviously the toss has taken place already and it's two from two for Hasib Hamid. He won that toss and he has chosen to have a bat. So let's just tell you now of the Nottinghamshire selected 11 for this fixture against Worcestershire. We've just mentioned him there, and he actually scored a 50 in the first innings the last time Worcestershire visited in 2022. That is your captain, Hasib Hamid. Now, Ben Duckett requires one more run to reach 500 runs against Worcestershire, and he'll be opening the batting with Hasib Hamid very, very shortly. In at number three comes Ben Slater. 94 runs needed to reach 7,500 first-class runs for Ben Slater. And what about this next person? He scored a crucial 100 in the previous match against Essex. He took the gloves and he takes the gloves again for this fixture. That is, of course, Joe Clark. Now, number 14, Matthew Montgomery, took a couple of catches in the slips and he'll be in there again this morning as obviously... No, sorry, he won't be in there this morning. He'll be uh, in the dressing room, hopefully, with his pads on for a very, very long time. But that's number 14, Matthew Montgomery. This person next, he was part of a crucial partnership with Joe Clark in the match against Essex. He used to play for Worcestershire, but he is now firmly in that Nottinghamshire camp. It is, of course, Jack Haynes. We've just heard from Lyndon James there, and he took five wickets against Essex. And he'll look to take some more wickets when the time comes later on in the match. That's number eight, Lyndon James. Calvin Harrison comes in next. Now, obviously, he did take a fantastic wicket against Essex, and he is part of a double spinning option for Hasib Hamid this game. That one is Calvin Harrison. And next up, he makes his first start of the season. He wears number 22. He will be bowling when the time comes, a double spin option. But, of course, who I'm talking about is Liam Patterson-White. This next person, he had a rough campaign last year with injury. It is, of course, your Bullwell Bomber. He will take the new ball when it's available and when it is to options for Nottinghamshire. It is Luke Fletcher. And finally, well, he took his first class wicket for Nats, for Nots last week. It is, of course, Dylan Pennington. That is your Nottinghamshire selected 11 for this fixture against Worcestershire. Now, the bell has rang, which means we are just a few minutes away from the start of play. The Knots opening batters of Hasib Hamid and Ben Duckett will make their way down the steps very, very shortly. A couple of names to look out for from Worcester's point of view. Well, of course, he used to play for Knots. It is Jake Libby. He's been in fantastic form for Worcester in the last few years. And then, obviously, the ex West Indian captain Jason Holder. He is part of their overseas this year. He's a big name. He's a big bloke, to be honest. I saw him earlier this morning. He's absolutely massive, and he'll be looking to make his mark here at Trent Bridge. But it's time for me to hand over to your commentary team for this fixture. It is Frank Watson and the one and only Dave Bracegirdle. Well, hello, everybody, and a very good morning. Welcome to Trent Bridge on a lovely, uh, bright, sunny, indeed warm spring morning here for the start of round two of the county championship with Nottinghamshire hosting Worcestershire. Um, the uh, players just assembling, as you can see, those of you watching the live stream, just in front of the pavilion, the far end of the ground, and uh, we're just waiting the arrival of the umpires. Many thanks to Aaron Lord for setting the day up. Those of you I know like to have a little look, a little catch-up on the live stream with Aaron before play starts at uh, around about quarter to 11 every day. And uh, Aaron set the day up beautifully. If you have been um, listening to Aaron, or indeed if you haven't, the news from the middle is that Nottinghamshire have won the toss and they've opted to bat first. Give you the teams in 
just a moment as uh, our two umpires Alex Wolf and Ben Debenham do take to the field with the Worcestershire uh, players behind them and the two Nottinghamshire batters following in the rear and that's because Asiba Mead for the second match running under his uh, first season as the full club captain has won the toss and this time as opposed to what he did a week ago this time he's opted to bat first we're playing on the same strip that uh, Nottinghamshire were well beaten in the first round of matches so uh, likely that uh, there might be a little bit of wear and tear on that one and as a result both sides have uh, made a change in the bowling department particularly the spinning department uh, we'll touch on Worcestershire in just a second but I can tell you Nottinghamshire outgo last season's two 50 plus wicket men leading wicket taker last year Brett Hutton and uh, 50 odd wickets for Dane Patterson neither Hutton nor Patterson play Luke Fletcher comes in to replenish the seam bowling stocks Liam Patterson White plays his first First game since the match against Essex in uh, the middle of last summer. He didn't play in any of the last eight matches. So Nottinghamshire, Seba Mead, Ben Duckett, Ben Slater, Joe Clark, Matthew Montgomery, Jack Haynes, Lyndon James, Liam Patterson-White, Calvin Harrison, Luke Fletcher and Dylan Pennington. A very good morning. I'm Dave Bracegirdle from BBC Radio Nottingham. Um, we'll have different commentary teams and we'll have plenty of guests popping in through the course of the match but I'm delighted that uh, today joining me for the uh, opening skirmishes, the opening exchanges uh, kindly sent down loan to us for the day from BBC Hereford and Worcester, uh, my good chum Frank Watson very very good morning, welcome back to Trent Bridge Frank. Good morning Dave, lovely to be here, thank you, uh, good morning everybody and uh, cricket in the sunshine who'd have thought it it's a pleasure to be here and uh, a very, very different scene from what you would see if you were at Worcester's HQ at the moment where the water is lapping at the boundary boards. Joe Leach to start proceedings here this morning, bowling to Hasib Hamid from the Stuart Broad End, the newly named pavilion end here at Trent Bridge. Leach is in and his first ball is... Uh, on a good length and Hasib just gets in behind it, pushes it out on the offside. One change for Worcestershire from the side which played so well in the drawn game at Edgbaston last week. And that sees Josh Baker brought into the side at the expense of Matthew Waite. Worcestershire, I think, following Notts' lead really in uh, including a, an extra spinner in the side given that they are playing on a used pitch. Here's Leach again, moving towards us. Right arm over the wicket, balls to Hamid, and that's the first runs of the day, the first runs of the game, a back foot drive from Hamid, and it will go all the way to the extra cover boundary. Nice shot from the not skipper, and uh, he'll feel a lot better for that. Just an error in length by Leach. A little bit of width as well, and Hamid punching it away through that uh, extra cover area for a boundary so four without loss not sunny morning pitch looks quite dry actually even though it's yeah. a used surface there's leach in again bowls and this time it's a, a bit fuller Hamid just leans into it looking to drive it doesn't quite time it it runs up to Dolavira, the captain at mid off yeah it looks quite dry i think the first round not exclusively but most sides that won the toss had a bowl last week. It didn't pay off for a lot of them, and they ended up seeing big scores posted. It'll be interesting to see how many do what Notts did today when they win the toss and decide to have a bat. Here's Leach again, he bowls, and uh, Hamid gets four more, short and wide from Leach. Actually, might not go all the way. He cut it away behind square. Jake Libby gives chase. In fact, it's only two. I thought he'd uh, got hold of that a little bit more conclusively than he had. But uh, two more runs. Leach just struggling for a little bit of rhythm this morning at the moment. Having said the pitch is dry, notice that there is sawdust being provided by the ground staff at both ends, not being made use of yet. Six without loss then, as Leach is in once more from the Stuart Broad end. Bowls better this time from the Worcester man and uh, Habid forward solidly pushing defensively up to Dolivera at mid-off I think the feeling was last week the Kookaburra ball didn't do a huge amount for the bowlers if if it does anything it's probably in the first hour while the scene still 
slightly <coughs> proud. Nowhere near as proud as the Dukes. A quick update from yep. BBC Radio Nottingham. So I'll just jump in as the next ball has gone through to Gareth Roderick, the keeper. Where well, we started on time, lovely blue skies over Trent Bridge here. Nottinghamshire for the second week running, win the toss. This time they've chosen to bat first in a side that has two changes. Luke Fletcher and Liam Patterson-White come in. Two seamers, Brett Hutton and Dane Patterson drop out. We've had one over bold already, six runs to a Seba meet. Nottinghamshire six without loss. Quick update there for uh, BBC Radio Nottingham. I think we might just have started a whisker or two before 11 o'clock, which is always good. Nice to get underway. Nathan Smith is going to bowl the second over. Kiwi, who um, I think it's probably fair to say Frank was a, um, a of course, one or two raised eyebrows when a couple of months ago the announcement was made that Nathan Smith was joining Worcestershire. I don't think too many people had sort of followed his progress, but he's had a terrific winter back home, hasn't he? And yeah, he finished as a top wicket taker in the Plunkett Shield uh, with Wellington, and they won the competition. I think he was voted the most valuable player mm. as well. So, yeah, and made a good start at Edgbaston last week for Worcestershire. Could be just one of these that's come in under the radar, yeah. an unsung diamond, might, uh, might well have a very, very good year. All rounder bats uh, in the lower order, but can contribute good runs. He's bowling to Ben Duckett here at the start of this Nottinghamshire innings. And Duckett, unusually, uh, yeah. for those of you that watch <laughs> Ben Duckett in test cricket, That's a rarity, lets it go through it? to the wicketkeeper. He had a very quiet and, it has to be said, disappointing game uh, against Essex. Ben Duckett, when Notts were set to score 335 on the last day, it was, uh, it was all the talk. If Ben Duckett can stay there for three or four hours, perhaps Notts will have a chance. But... He perished cheaply in both innings, 21 and 5 against Essex, and his batting partner, Asiba Mead, likewise, 34 and 10. So for two England Test Internationals, it was a poor return, but Duckett works this one nicely off his legs to midwick. It is a good stop. Six without loss is the score. Interesting that uh, Notts are going to play both spinners in this game. Liam Patterson-White, who didn't feature at all in the second half of last year. Very capable batter, of course. First last 100 to his name. Back in the side, and Calvin Harrison has duck it. This time will get a couple of runs working this through mid-wicket. Brett Oliveira, the skipper, after it. And uh, duck it's away. His first two runs of the match, eight without loss, Nottinghamshire. Decent crowd in, still one or two more just uh, coming through the gates now and plenty taking their seats. The strip is right over towards the Fox Road side of the ground. Those of you that know Trent Bridge, it's in a direct line with the, uh, the committee rooms, that sort of end of the Trent Bridge ground. Here's Nathan Smith, bustling right armour in past umpire Debenham and bowls and duck it, lets it go through to the keeper. So we've got ben, De uh, ben Debenham at this end, who didn't play first class cricket. At the other end, at square leg at the moment, Alex Wharf, who started out uh, with his home county, Yorkshire, came down to Notts for a couple of seasons and then finished his career with Glamorgan, where he had a really good time of it and actually um, got himself up into the England ODI ranks. But now a very well-respected umpire and our match referee is Will Smith someone who else spent time at Trent Bridge also uh, successful spells with uh, both Hampshire and indeed Durham where he lifted the county title a couple of times as Smith bowls again to Duckett who just holds out his bat drops it into the covers and there's no run I'd, I'd forgotten Frank that Worcestershire one of these sides that don't have uh, Numbers. Names and numbers on the uh, on the pulleys, so uh, it'll have to be player identification, the the old-fashioned way. Yeah, you'll get there, Dave. You know them all. Come across one or two, certainly. And uh, the slip cordon's a bit different from um, from recent years. So you've got Jason Holders in there at second, Adam Hose at first, Rob Jones at third, and Baker at fourth. Smith in again, duck it squared up and somehow still manages to push it into the uh, mid-wicket region and I think he'd have been more than happy to settle for a single as it was the last ball of the over but Amid pushed him and they do come back quite rightly for two. So lots of 
made uh, so far an, an unbroken start. Ten without loss there, four from that over from Smith, six from Leach's first over, and that Worcestershire side, yes, Gareth, Gareth Roderick. Jake Libby, of course, uh, spent the first part of his career here. Cashy Valley, who, of course, got all the headlines last week, um, century in each innings against Warwickshire. Rob Jones, who we've seen in the past uh, playing for Lancashire. Adam Hose, who's had a pretty good time of things in the past. He's, uh, he's been here with Somerset, but particularly with Warwickshire in white ball cricket. A lot of runs here. Here's Leach again from the Stuart Broad end, and uh, more runs for Hamid, courtesy of width from Leach, just chopped down towards third man. Jake Libby in pursuit. Good running from uh, Hamid and Duckett. They get three. So uh, fairly free flowing start from the knots openers so far 13 without loss after one ball of the third over leach will go round the wicket to the left-handed ducket as he usually does first time i've seen nathan smith in the flesh i wasn't at edgebaston quite impressed with that first over got a bit yep. of carry didn't he bit of pace and uh, as you said on that last ball, sort of squared, duck it up a bit, even though he managed to get it away through the covers for two. So encouragement, slight encouragement for Smith, but nonetheless a good start from the batters. Duck it waits now for Leach. Round the wicket. Bowls, and uh, he's just pushing this one back up the pitch. Four slips, as I said, for the opening bowlers. Adam Hose at first, Jason Holder at second, Rob Jones at third and Josh Baker at fourth. The left arm spinner included today at the expense of Matthew Waite, who will be uh, disappointed to miss out. Played really well in the first innings at Edgbaston last week and uh, has made a good start to his career at New Road. There's Leach again round the wicket, bowls and Duckett drives through the covers for four. Good shot. Over pitch from Leach and Duckett just leaning into it. Nice punchy extra cover drive takes him on to eight. Very positive start by these two. It's what you tend to see these yeah. days, isn't it, Dave? I think it from is. most sides, batsmen a lot more positive at the start of the innings than they used to be. And that fourth slip's been dispatched by Dolivera to extra cover now in response to that. 17 without loss. Leach again round the wicket to Duckett. And is he any balls? Oh, and he beats him this time. That's a good one from Leach. Duckett feeling for it outside the off stump. Just got the length right that time. Just got him pushing forward. Bit of bounce and through to Roderick. This match three years ago. Uh, sorry, Worcestershire fans. Um, ben Duckett, 177 not out. And that's a um, a, a popular score in this fixture because um, remember that pink ball game here mm, when Joe Clark was playing for yeah. Worcestershire he actually scored 177 not out on the last day for Worcestershire Leach round the wicket again to Duckett who this time uh, is just less certainly steering the ball out behind square on the offside Jake Libby coming in from backward point deep gully to do the fielding beautiful morning smattering well, maybe a bit more of a, than a smattering of spectators in the ground. A well-populated pavilion. And uh, Knott's looking to bounce back after the disappointment of defeat last week against Essex. Leach again round the wicket balls. Duckett uh, doesn't move his feet much, but uh, drives out on the offside. Baker fields, and there is no run. End of the over. Good start by not 17 without loss off three. Hamid has nine. Duckett has eight. Worcestershire's last success on this ground was in 2017 when they were both in Division 2. Worcestershire had a uh, fine time of it here, winning that one. But the last couple of meetings at Trent Bridge, Notts have won them both quite emphatically, 2021 and uh, 2020. 22. Luke Fletcher with a career best seven for in 2021. Dane Patterson got a big haul of wickets as well the last time they played in 2022. That was also in Division 2, of course, after the, uh, the 
the year where they played sort of the conference system in 2021. A meet on strike on nine, the right-hander gets one on his hips that he can just turn away quickly out into the uh, deep. Fielded a long leg, a couple of runs. Who's that down there? Is that Cash Alley? Yep. Down in front of the Batman board. Biggest uh, boundary by far is over towards the Bridgeford Road side of the ground. Very pleasant morning here. I'd love to hear from you if you uh, want to get in touch. I'm on the old Twittery thing, X thing, whatever you want to call it, at Brace Cricket. Frank's on there as well, at Frank Watson 58. That's Nathan Smith wearing squad number 20 bowls wide of the pegs and goes through to the keeper. Have you got the emails for this one or, or not? No, not do, no. no. So it's a, I'm afraid it's a Twittery thing for, um, for today. We are promised... Um, no, no other teasers than that, but we are promised uh, we'll have one or two guests popping in through the day just to uh, rest the voices of Frank and myself and also give you an opportunity to, uh, to hear from one or two different people. So we'll, uh, we'll see if we can sort that out a little bit later on. 19 without loss, Nottinghamshire, on a bright morning in Nottingham. Next delivery from Smith. Bowls him! Oh. Absolutely superb delivery from Nathan Smith. Has taken two stumps out of the ground. And Asiba Mead is a pretty miserable start to the season. Got lowish scores against Essex and he's gone for 11 here. Getting uh, by some distance the ball of the morning so far. Which uproots two of his stumps. Not so 19 for one. A Mead who faced just 10 balls has been bowled for 11. And Worcestershire have got that early breakthrough. Yeah, quite a sight for a bowler, that, isn't it? When two stumps come out of the ground, just leaving that one remaining stump. Q widespread celebrations. Good start from Smith. I think he's, he's bowled with a real pace this morning, mm. getting real carry through to uh, Gareth Roderick. And um, Hamid just getting that one wrong. Played down the wrong line, and he's gone. 19 for one. Yeah, he's just brought, brought it in from wide on the crease, Frank. Just able to yeah. have a little look at our monitor there and just caught a replay from wide and yeah. angled it in. And I think the first impact was with the leg stump yeah. and then it's, it's sort of taken middle stump yeah. out as well as it's uh, done its damage. It's um, it's not done a huge amount off the seam, as you say. It's just kind of angled back in um, from a fairly wide point of delivery, but a great breakthrough because Hamid had looked good hadn't he he'd looked quite uh, quite fluent really first mistake he's made I think oh he may, may have played and missed at the last ball of the first over but uh, yeah good breakthrough for Smith presumably you know he's come fairly quickly on the heels of that Wellington victory in the Plunkett Shield he's arrived in England and he's picked up where he left off he's probably in the form of his life at the moment and mm. expecting to take wickets and uh, there's nothing better for a bowler than to, to run up feeling that it you're going to get batsmen out all the time and you've got to enjoy that because uh, there's plenty of days where it doesn't feel like that new man is ben slater so uh, two left-handed bends at the crease slater's another one who Barely gave us a glimpse of his uh, of his time and talent against Essex. Made nine and three. Smith comes in to bowl to him from this end. Foolish delivery, and Ben Slater has nothing to do with it. It goes it goes through to the keeper. Four slips a gully and uh, an extra cover. Tacking field from Worcestershire, who've got the first breakthrough within the first half an hour of the morning's play. Indeed, within the first quarter of an hour of the morning's play, and that's very much set them on their way. Again, we're playing with the Kookaburra ball, which if uh, the first match is a guideline, it did quite a bit in the first session each day. In the afternoon, it went flat as a pancake and uh, we saw three century stands the first three days against Essex as Slater is away, just angling this down to long leg. But um, I think by and large, it wasn't a great spectacle seeing the Kookaburra ball in the afternoon, although the batters tucked in. 20 for one. Took it back on strike. One ball left in the fourth over. Smith figures of one for seven. Joe Leach, who... It's his benefit year, isn't it? It is indeed. 
is uh, naught for 13. Former skipper, of course. We've seen him uh, captain in Worcestershire many times against Knots, including their last win here in 2017. Smith bowls now and has dropped on the leg side to the current skipper, Brett D'Oliveira. And it's uh, the end of a successful over. We've had four overs here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester. And Knots are 20 for one. Yes, it's Joe Leach's testimonial year. And... Uh be various opportunities for me to draw attention to events and and basically push Joe's testimony. He's a very deserving beneficiary, I think. Uh, most are obviously these days, but uh, Joe's pretty much carried this seam attack over the years for uh, for some time, and uh, a very popular man at New Road. Very loyal, hard-working, as you say, captain for a few years. At Joe Leach uh, 2024 is the Twitter handle for the testimonial account. And if you just Google Joe Leach testimonial, you can get details of all the events that are taking place. He comes in now around the wicket from the Stuart Broad end. And Slater is in behind that plane back to him. And there's no run. The next event is a golf day at Ombersley Golf Club. And there are uh, opportunities to get a team in there if you visit the website you can uh, you can have a four ball or you can have a three ball and a Worcestershire player to complete your four ball if anybody's interested as I say just uh, just search for Joe Leach testimonial and you'll get all the details and of all the other events as well here he is round the wicket Leach to Slater and he just steers this one down on the offside Libby Fields at backward point and there's no run. 20 for 1 then. Knotts having won the toss and chosen to bat on a sunny morning at Trembridge. It's a proper spring cricket morning. Warmer as well than last weekend. I think probably up and down the country cricketers will be <laughs> it couldn't be colder. relieved. No. <laughs> They'll be relieved to be playing in proper conditions. And pleased to say they're playing in all nine county championship games. There's Leach around the wicket. Bowls. Slater pushing out on the offside. Libby again smartly to his left to field. And your next challenge, Dave, is to find out how many captains that have won the toss have chosen to bat up and down the country. It's an interesting one, I think. I think the Kookaburra certainly plays a part. It will do less after the first hour or so. The seam is not as proud as it is on the Duke and it flattens down rather more quickly, I think. But the first hour, it can still pose challenges. Runs for Slater here as he clips this one nicely off his hip. In front of square on the leg side. Adam Finch goes back from mid-wicket to do the fielding. Two for Slater. He goes to three. Look, it is eight. 22 for one. Hamid, the man out for 11. Um. Dave's going to report back in a minute. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped you in it a bit there. Didn't I? Well, Surrey have chosen to field at the Oval against Somerset. Somerset are 16 for one. Essex have chosen to bat at Chelmsford and are 14 for two against Kent. Interesting. There's Leach again round the wicket bowls and Slater is beaten, pushing at this one outside the off stump. Hampshire have chosen to bat at home to Lancashire and are 12 without loss. And the other game is at Edgbaston where Warwickshire are playing Durham. Remember, Durham were completely washed away all four days. And in that one, Durham have won the toss and they've stuck the Bears in. Interesting. So, uh, so three, it's 50 three backs, two yeah. fields in uh, Division 1. I suppose another factor in this game that would have influenced that decision... Leach round the wicket bowl. Slater gets a single, pushing out on the leg side. Finch again the fielder. Slater goes to four, 23 for one at the end of the over. Another factor would have been, I think, that uh, you know, you if you bat second, you're going to have to bat last on a used yep. pitch. Yeah. So I mean, by then it will be the if we get to Monday, it'll be the eighth day of this 
pitch. I'm telling porkies, actually, Frank, and listeners, I do apologise because of Glamorgan Derbyshire start delayed in Cardiff. <laughs> Division 2, Yorkshire batting at uh, Gloucestershire, 7 for 1. Leicestershire, 17 without loss at home to Sussex. And Northampton, 7 for 1 at home to Middlesex. So Derbyshire is still the only county not to have taken to the That's field. That's right, yeah. Crikey, if, if the wet weather's followed them from four wet days at Derby down to uh, something similar at Cardiff, they'll really think their uh, season is cursed with bad luck. As Smith bowls, and that is very, very elegant indeed from Ben Slater, just rocked back and pulled it away for four runs, 23 uh, for one. What it did do as well last uh, week with two matches completely washed away, those at Derby and uh, those at, or well, that game up at uh, Chesterley Street in Division 1, did raise the subject about how many points you should get. Mm. Um, there were some sides that battled away hard for four days <coughs> and uh, got the eight draw points, whereas in those two yeah. games, four counties didn't even get on the field and got the same eight draw points. It's it's an interesting question, isn't it, as to whether you should get the same for an abandoned or, or not. Of course, they didn't get the chance to get any bonus points, but there we are. The umpire's just checked the ball, giving it back to Smith. It comes in and bowls a really full delivery that does uh, Ben Slater just outside the off stump, and it thuds into the gloves of Gareth Roderick, who, I think, is it fair to say, Frank, looking from afar, he... he he certainly had to play second fiddle when he first moved from Gloucestershire with Ben Cox keeping the gloves and now obviously Ben's moved on Gareth's got a real opportunity not only to cement himself with the gloves but at the top of the order as well yeah I think he I think he he forced his way to a position of number one keeper to be honest Smith in and bowls and this goes through to the keep in oh, so, in no, ball. In so in no balls a couple of runs in Red Bull cricket, he had become first choice. Yeah, uh, and, uh, when, he, when he first moved, though, he didn't, did he? I think he played against Notts the first time we saw him at New yeah. Roda as a fielder. Yeah. yeah. He struggled when he first moved. He had, it, it was a very difficult time for him, I think. Um, and uh, it took him a while to settle. He struggled, as some players do when they move counties. The, the whole upheaval mm. was uh, a difficult thing for him and the family, but uh, very settled now. Comes Smith once more. The only wicket to fall so far. Bowls and again wide of the pegs. Two former Bears omitted from uh, Worcestershire's starting lineup this morning. Ed Pollock and Ethan Brooks were in the squad but didn't make the final cut. And as we've been saying, the former Yorkshire medium pacer Matthew Waite, he was also excluded from the 14. Or from the 11. He was in the 14, wasn't he, and played last week. Smith's going to go round the wicket now, a different line of attack halfway through this sixth over of the morning here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester. Those of you watching on the live stream as well, this is angled in towards the sticks and Slater defends to Libby at point. No run. Our view, as Frank observed when he arrived here, is, uh, is now masked the building of the Dave Bracegirdle residential care home <laughs> away to our right is uh, all but complete now we can no longer see right have you chosen your <laughs> have you chosen your suite I'm, I'm, yeah. well, I'm disappointed there's no balconies so, uh, there's so that's a, a roof terrace yeah I was going to say you'd, you'd have to go upstairs wouldn't you I would imagine you can see in it's uh, it's not quite clear to see that you, you're able to see all of the, the ground from in there as Slater on the back foot punches it into the covers no run, 29 for one, but certainly the, uh, the view from the Radcliffe Road end is a little different here at Trembridge than it used to be. He reminds me, Nathan Smith, of Neil Radford in the way that he bowls. Slightly different run-up. Neil had sort of short steps, but in terms of the way that he, uh, he delivers and he's at the batsman, similar sort of pace, busy, keen to get back to his mark. Comes in once more, Smith bowls to Slater and he's uh, angled this with an open face between third and fourth slip and I think there's enough pace on that to go all the way to the pavilion rope there is. So Slater gets a boundary, a little, uh, little bit of fortune there, maybe the Worcestershire slip cordon may feel it, perhaps should have been stopped, just managed to bisect third and fourth slip who were the the widest pair amongst that catching cordon. He gets a boundary, so not going along at a healthy old lick here, but they have lost the wicket of their captain. They're 33 for one after six. 
Yeah, you're kind, kind to the batsman. I thought you were there, Dave. Angled face. I thought it was an edge, but he won't mind. He kept it down. Soft hands, wasn't it? That was the key, I think. And he, 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 he's entitled to a little bit of fortune early on. And they have raced along 33 mm. for once. Later's on 12. He's only faced 15. Duck it on strike. Leach round the wicket. More runs. Tucks this away behind square on the leg side. They've taken one. They're not going to come back for two. Uh, they were thinking about it. But uh, Kashif in quickly. Unable to prevent the second. A few people have been in touch already. Thank you at Brace Cricket. Paul Not Taylor on the wicket. Absolutely unplayable delivery. Thank you, Paul. Daniel says, hey, up, Dave, uh, listening uh, to what hopefully is going to be a great game. Good to see Fletch back in the squad, and I can't wait to be basking in the sunshine there watching tomorrow. Joe Leach in round the wicket again, and on the back foot Slater pushes out on the offside. And there's no run. It was uh, Nathan Smith, not Kashif. I should have... Uh, Said, Kashif at mid-off. Josh Roberts, two spinners in April. Bold decision from Knotts. And Halvor says, um, I'm struggling here. Are the commentaries location locked? I can't listen today. I'm in Norway. Was able to get it last week. Mm. Um, I don't know about no, that, Halvor. I don't Halvor. think they are. Should be, should be available on the BBC uh, Sports app. Leach round the wicket again from the uh, Stuart Broadend. Bowls and Slater in behind this. Punches it. Up to Dolivier at mid-on. We certainly are available via that uh, well-known um, live streaming channel. Our uh, our commentaries are on there. You should be able to find uh, the Nottinghamshire commentaries on that. Um, the Blighter says, having been bowled out for 80 just four days ago, what could possibly go wrong by wanting to bat on the same wicket again? Thank you, Blighter. The man who put the harm in pharmacy says good to see Fletch and Liam back in the side. A bit surprised, though. They've left Dane and Brett out. Leach again round the wicket. Bowls and Slater is pushing this one again up to Dolivera at mid-on. Well, Ben Slater, you said he struggled last week, but he's come out today and looked very positive, I think, very purposeful. Played and missed a couple of times, but generally got a bat on it and... Look to be busy. That one tremendous pull shot off mm. Nathan Smith. Very dismissive. And he's already faced 18 deliveries. Duckett's been there since the start. He's only faced 13. Yeah. It's odd how it goes, isn't yeah. it? The batsman just coming in his face more than the guy who's been there for a while. Leach bowls, and I nearly got him out, didn't I? Because he's felt for that one outside the off. Some good delivery from Joe Leach. Probably just hit the seam and nipped away. I have to say, as poor as knots were on the last day Sam Cook and Jamie mm. Porter are, are a real handful and yeah. in that match Sam Cook of course got a hat trick in the in the first innings you, you know what it's like Frank you can go years and years and years without seeing a, a hat trick and special moment to get yeah. one right at the start of the game there Sam Cook here comes Leach again round the wicket bowls and Slater drives handsomely but straight to Kashif at mid off there's no run end of the over 34 for one Slater 12 Duckett 9 Hamid the man out for 11 Nathan Smith has the wicket and I've just had a message saying the commentary is cutting in and out on the BBC S Sports app so uh, I don't think that's anything to do with us no no it's not it's but, uh, um, hopefully these things will get ironed out mm, as the day goes on yeah Talking yeah, just going back to Sam Cook's spell, I mean, obviously, you you only need to look at the figures to appreciate that it was highly impressive. But uh, I spoke to one of the umpires, Steve O'Shaughnessy, the other day. He was standing at Cook's end in that second innings, and he said he really, really did look like getting a wicket with virtually every ball. It must have been almost perfect seam bowling in yeah, those conditions. Terrific player. Duck it does get an opportunity now to uh, renew acquaintances with Smith and he's beaten by one that extra little bit of zip just short of a length is good bounce good carry in this wicket as we saw there goes through to Gareth Roderick just talking about hat tricks there's never been one in all the meetings between Nottinghamshire and Worcestershire for either side and again whenever this fixture comes around as well we also uh, remind folks that in Nottinghamshire's entire history they've only ever tied one match that was here, early season game against Worcestershire in 1993. Next ball is 
Uh, well, he's got Duckett there. As he uh, clipped off a bale, I think he may well have done. Duckett's gone. No, he's and caught, lots of 34 for two. Difficult to see whether he uh, he just feathered one through there or has lost a bale, but Duckett is out nonetheless. We'll get confirmation in a moment. Yes, he's feathered it through to Gareth Roderick. So for the third innings in a row, Ben Duckett has been dismissed cheaply. He's out for nine. Caught Roderick. Bold Smith, who's uh, had a terrific start to... Uh, Guess what is maybe his first match here at Trent Bridge. A lot of New Zealanders have, of course, played on this ground over the years and uh, really excelled both with bat and ball. And Nathan Smith could be another. Duckett caught Roderick Ball Smith for nine. 15 balls faced at the one boundary, but that's a really important wicket because, as everyone knows, he can score his runs so quickly when he's in and set, but didn't get that opportunity today. No, good, uh, good stuff from Nathan Smith. He's been uh, he's been busy, yep. aggressive, bowled with good pace, and he he's a, I said he reminded me of Neil Radford. Another thing about him, he just he wants to bowl the next ball straight away, doesn't he? You know, he's through, he's beaten the bat, and he peels away, and he's going back to his mark. There's no hanging around. He's aggressive and keen, and a great sight for his captain Brett Dolivera, I'm sure. And I know that uh, they've been very impressed with his approach since he arrived straight off the back of the, the first-class season in New Zealand. And uh, impressive start from Nathan Smith this morning. Two for 17 in just his fourth over. And Worcestershire have now sent back both openers in the space of the first eight overs. Just what they would have wanted if they're going to take advantage of any assistance that will be offered with the Kookaburra in this first session. Yeah, it's following a uh, similar sort of pattern in the in both innings of the Essex game, really. Either uh, Amid or Duckett able to hang around for long. So the first of the uh, acquaintances renewed yeah. players is, uh, is out there, Joe Clark. At the crease, scored a century in that uh, first innings against Essex. Here comes Smith to bowl to Joe Clark. Away first time with a couple of runs, just worked it nicely off his hip. Gets uh, his innings underway. Two to Clark. Nottinghamshire 36 for two. This has been very, very good indeed from Smith. He's uh, He's gone for runs in every over. There's not been a main mm, this morning, no. but they are putting the ball up there, challenging the yeah. batters. And, uh, of course, it's a fast outfield and very attacking field, so there are lots of gaps, so no maidens as yet. But those two important wickets, and they could be priceless come the end of the day, as Smith this time fairly wide of the mark. And it goes through to Gareth Roderick. Lots of, again, stuffed the middle order full of batters. They've got uh, Matthew Montgomery listed at five. Jack Haynes, another former Worcestershire man, of course, who got 77 on debut last week. At six, Lyndon James seven, and, uh, and probably Liam Patterson White and Calvin Harrison. So, uh, on paper, there's, uh, there's plenty of batting there. 36 for two as the uh, next one left alone goes through to the keeper. But as we saw last week, and as we always uh, say and see, matches aren't played out on paper. Bottom of the order, I think, will be uh, Luke Fletcher and Dylan Pennington. Imagine in that order, Dylan might uh, might lay claim for going in ahead of Fletch, but I think the senior man might uh, might have to come in at 10. 36 for two, Nottinghamshire. He's not bad, Dylan Pennington. No, no. He's not bad. He got a 50 at uh, Chelmsford yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah, we uh, had a chat with him last week, telling me all about that, as this is pushed into the offside to end the over. 36 for two, said he batted uh, for a long time there with Jake Libby, who got 180-odd. And uh, Worcestershire, after 36 minutes of play, I've Nottinghamshire 36 for two. Eight overs have been bowled by Leach and Smith. Um, Adam Finch, you'd imagine, and Jason Hold are the, uh, the likeliest change bowlers. And, of course, the spin options are there with Josh Baker and Brett D'Oliveira, but they're not going to be required just yet. We might get the token over of spin before lunch, but you'd imagine it'll be a seam-heavy morning. 
It's Joe Leach to continue from the Stuart Broad end around the wicket to the left handed Ben Slater. Bolts and Slater is forward, pushing out on the offside. Baker Fields just get the sense that Leach is settling a little bit after struggling for a bit of rhythm in his first three or four overs. Had a knee operation quite recently in January and uh, it was it was expected that he would miss the first couple of games but uh, his rehab went really well. Got some overs in uh, on a pre-season camp in Spain and then uh, injury to Tom Taylor and Ben Gibbon as Leach comes in again, bowls, and Slater drives straight back up the pitch. No run. They've started uh, at Cardiff, uh, so we're, we're Derby playing everywhere. Playing. Derby have won the toss, stuck Glamorgan in, they've just started. And, uh, yeah, two bowlers took each other out in a pre-season game at Kidderminster, collided with each other in the outfield, and both Gibbon and Tom Taylor out injured as a result. So Leach, uh, more than happy to play in the first game at Edgbaston last week and did pretty well coming in there around the wicket again and bowling and Slater just working that to mid wicket fielded by Finch no run 36 for 2 and uh, yeah Worcestershire only obviously only bowled once in that game last week but uh, Leach bowled 17 overs 2 for 59 so that will have pleased him to have got through that unscathed and here he is in his familiar style from the Stuart Broadend round the wicket to Slater who works this one away on the Ooh. onside there's a most uncharacteristic misfield from Brett Oliveira at mid on almost can't remember the last time I saw anything like that from Dolivera. Whether he took his eye off it or it bobbled, I don't know. But uh, it looked a fairly routine stop for him at mid on, moving to his left, and he missed it completely. It went through his legs, and they get away for two bonus runs yeah. for Slater. Captain probably got 12 things at once going through yeah. his mind. Jonathan's yeah. been in touch, uh, obviously a Worcestershire supporter. Feel like a shrewd signing by Worcestershire, Nathan Smith, an experienced Cookaburra ball bowler. He's showing the others how to do it. Listening in whilst working from home. Hopefully we can see Worcestershire at New Road this year if the floods stay away. Leach round the wicket bowls and Slater drives this one square on the offside. Libby, smart piece of fielding moving to his left. And... Uh, there is no run. Yeah, well, not much hope of seeing cricket at New Road in the near future. I feel to blame to some extent, Dave, because I've moved over the winter from uh, where I used to live out in the sticks back into the city. I'm within walking distance of the ground, expecting to be able to walk to watch the cricket and then be playing at Kidderminster until June at least. Leach bowls and this one driven back up the pitch by Slater and there's no run. I say that, I think they're hoping to play at New Road in May but uh, still underwater when I was there on Tuesday. 38 for 2 at the end of that ninth over of the innings. The men out Hamid for 11 and Duckett for 9, both wickets to Nathan Smith. Slater has 14, Joe Clark has 2. Talking about New Zealand greats that have played on this uh, ground. Lovely to hear from Andre Adams, who's been in touch. He's uh, following, watching the pictures. Dave, Nathan Smith is an absolute jet. He's a proper cricketer. Um, best wishes uh, back to Andre Adams. What a player he was. He'd have enjoyed bowling in these conditions. And here is the absolute jet, in Andre's words. Nathan Smith bowls now, and this is wide of the pegs, and it goes through to the keeper. And I'm reminded... Um, by our esteemed producer Kirsty, that uh, it's Stephen Mullaney's testimonial in yeah. the year as yeah. uh, as well. Stephen <laughs> Mullaney, we'd have got there, Kirsty. Yeah. We'd have got there. Um, for Worcestershire <laughs> fans, you might be thinking, "Oh, oh, yeah, forgot about it. Forgot about him. He's not in the not side. He's uh, um, looking after the the second eleven, the next generation of Nottinghamshire players, if you like, Stephen Mullaney. But he's got his uh, got his testimonial year. Um, he will." come up and um, we'll be able to 
talk all about such things at some point soon, I'm sure, as this is pushed into the offside. He did say to me, Dave, I'm, there's, there's certain regulations, you know all yeah. about this, Frank, there's yeah. certain regulations about what uh, what we can say and all the rest of it, he says, but um, if I can't plug anything, you certainly mm. can, so yeah. we'll... Uh, we'll, the we'll players, it, it, mm. there, there are quite severe restrictions and the players are not allowed to sort of self-promote, shall we say, so uh, that's that's why the rest of us have to do it for them. But a full programme of events, Stephen Mullaney, testimonial year, you'll be able to look it up and yep. I'm sure those uh, Nottinghamshire supporters will be made well aware of all the forthcoming functions. 38 for two here at Trent Bridge, Joe Clark on two as he lunges forward. No it's ball. another no ball from Nathan Smith, that takes knots up to 40. Having won the toss, opted to bat first, they've lost to Seba Mead, bowled by Smith for 11, that was 19 for one and... 34 for two in Smith's last over when Ben Duckett just uh, nibbled at one very close to off stump. Thought it might have lifted a bale off, but just got a feather on it through to Gareth Roderick. Sawdust at this end. The pile has uh, been diminished as the breeze knocks it over and this next one's steered down into the gully. Not talked about Jason Holder yet, which is... Uh, Wrong of us, really. It just shows he's not really featured in the action. But what a what a pickup you'd imagine mm. for Worcestershire, who have had some outstanding uh, West Indian overseas players in the past, including one who was whose name was older, but of course recently. Um, <laughs> well, he wasn't an overseas. <laughs> no, Andre Russell, of course, um, played a little bit. Didn't did, did Darren yeah. Sammy play for Worcestershire as well? Um, well, they've been. The, all sorts really when mm. you look back Alzori, Joseph, Shannon, Gabriel next ball is wider the pegs and through to the keeper and it remains 40 for 2 but a good pick up yeah. uh, Jason for Holder. 5 games, mm. he won't play at New Road <laughs> I, was, I was actually looking you've got a couple of games at, uh, at Kidderminster the yeah. first scheduled game as it stands right now for New Road um, is against Nottinghamshire around about is it 20th of May something mm. like that, third week mm. or so of uh, of May, um, will it, new will new be, be fair? Where's your, where's your morning? Will we be going? We as in knots be going to New Road or Kitty? Forty for two. Clark on a couple, and uh, again happy just to bide his time. Just get used to the conditions. Just get used to the bowling. And, uh, realizes he doesn't have to play at this unless it go through to Roderick. It'll be a struggle, Dave, to play at New Road by then I think that's still the hope but uh, everything they've done to try and get it ready has been undermined by the eighth flood Crikey. of the winter which came a couple of weekends ago uh, John Duffield in a cheery mood Dave not so my tip for relegation very ordinary looking squad too much uh, self regard as uh, Clark ends mm. the over with another dot ball well bowled uh, Nathan Smith an over that was uh, spoiled by the no ball. Smith 2 for 21 after 5 here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester and of course those of you watching on Trent Bridge Live, the live uh, pictures with our commentary, which of course you can mute if you want, but uh, with our commentary are available and a lot of people uh, very much enjoy the coverage of the uh, the live streams around the counties and uh, I know Frank like me if we, we do get a day off we, we are yeah. able to very much enjoy looking at the coverage of the, the other games Jason Holder just uh, going through a little bit of a warm up at this end suggesting he might replace Nathan Smith as Joe Leach continues and Slater is pushing out on the offside and there's no run, Leach has settled now it seems to me into a little bit of a rhythm round the wicket to the left hander and Slater has, apart from that two that he picked up with the Dolivera misfield, has been somewhat becalmed after getting quite a lively start. He's 14 off 27 now. Nice sunny morning. Mm. And Leach enjoying his work round the wicket into Slater. Bowls and Slater is forward again, just steers this out on the offside. Jake Libby comes in. From backward point to field. Uh, T reminds us of the uh, great W.G. Grace quote. When you win the toss, bat. Mm. If you're in doubt, think about it, then bat. And if you have very big doubts about it, consult a colleague, then bat. Thank you, T. 
Not sure how often WG no. Grace played at Headingley <laughs> in April or, or September. Trent Ridge, yeah. yeah. Trent Ridge on a green seaver. Yeah. Here's Leach again. Bald. And Slater is again forward, pushing out on the offside. And Baker is the fielder. Gen Adam Finch now going through yeah. quite a vigorous warm-up as well. Might be a double change. Uh, a gentleman who signs off, John C. Uh, Dave Frank is the chair of the Leach Testimonial Committee, and I'm the secretary, says John C. Yeah. Uh, see you sometime over the weekend. Um, very much looking forward to uh, to seeing John C. over the next day or two, and uh, wish you well. We'll have a we'll have a catch up when uh, when you get across, John. Here's Leach again. Bowls and uh, Slater turning this will edge inside edge really on the leg side. Thinks about two, but Nathan Smith is very quickly in from long leg and they take only a single. 41 for two. Slater goes to 15. Joe Clark on two. I love watching Joe Clark bat. Um, obviously preferred it when I was watching him back uh, for Worcestershire rather than against them but he's such a good player to watch isn't he if he gets going yep. he's such an elegant stroke maker you can't really say that you like cricket if you don't enjoy watching Joe Clark play slightly gives you a chance I think at the start maybe you could say but if he gets going I just think he's a glorious batsman to watch changing the field leeches come over the wicket and he's put a man out deep mid wicket as well for Clark and comes in there and bowls oh and that's a good delivery which bounced a bit on Clark and takes him on the thigh and drops down nip back as well good ball from Leach yeah had a good year last year Joe Clark over a thousand runs at uh, an average of 50.2 really good year uh, for Knotts now averages 38.3 mm. since uh, the move. I think it's he averaged about bad, 40, didn't he, uh, in his Worcestershire days. And for a while, there was a huge disparity between what he'd done at Worcestershire and here, but gradually he's getting that average up. Leach again is in bowls and he's on the back foot playing very correctly defensively up to mid on. And there's no run. The end of another good over from Leach, actually. His figures now six overs, no mains, no wicket for 20. 41 for two. Mark the Mod has After been 11. in touch. Sorry, Frank. Mark Sorry. The, Mark the Mod has been in touch. Uh, morning, gents, from a sunny Seven Oaks in Kent. I'm in the garden sorting out my stock for tomorrow's local vinyl record fair. And I've got my two Bibles to hand. And he's, uh, he's, in one hand, he's got the Playfair Cricket Annual. And in the other, he's got the Rare Record yeah. Price Guide 2024. Very from, good. Uh, from the record collectors. Vinyl records. That's Jason Holder. Comes into uh, attack. That'll be attack from our end of the ground, the Radcliffe Road end. Big, tall uh, Barbadian, no longer skipper of the West Indies. A um, man who had a, a season at Trembridge, Craig Brathwaite, is now the skipper, but Jason Holder was very much part of their World Cup winning short format side in recent years. He's had a little bit of county experience played for North Ants two or three years ago didn't he Jason Holder but it'll be interesting to see how he goes 41 for two would I be right in presuming that he didn't get picked up in the IPL auction and as a result suddenly found himself with some time on his hands so jumped at the offer to uh, to come here yeah I think it was a a chance conversation. Slater has 15. He faces the first ball from Jason Holder and uh, think, drops it out on the offside. I think I'm right in saying that um, it was Josh Cobb who's joined Worcestershire on a white ball contract who alerted the the management to the possibility that Holder might be available. Well, he, he would have been a teammate at North Ends, yeah. wouldn't he? Indeed, he yeah. may well have been his captain. And sure. I think I think that's uh, how it came about, mm -hmm. but certainly ideal. It always looks somebody that you think from his size he should be bowling 10 miles an hour yeah. quicker, but again, this is a uh, foolish delivery. It turned away square on the offside and Libby's first to it, but he's got the control, hasn't he? He doesn't need to run in and try and bang it down at 89, 90 miles an hour. He just knows where he's putting it and mm. the damage he can do on that line and length and at that pace. 
Yeah, and I think he's uh, the other. The other bonus is that um, with his experience and his captaincy experience and so on, he's a, he's he's an old head on not that old shoulders, and there's a lot to offer to the team. I think comes in again over the wicket balls, and this one goes through to the keeper. Did he start round the wicket? Yeah, fairly sure he did, and then just without any fuss whatsoever, must have just whispered to. Joe Clark and the umpire are going over the wicket, so Clark moved to the other side. Three slips. Three other fielders on the offside and fairly regulation setting on the leg side, a long leg, a mid wicket, and Joe Leach at mid on, and now umpire Debenham is asking somebody just to just to move or keep still. Ben Slater will have alerted them to the fact that a little bit of movement behind the bowler's arm. Next delivery nice and full and Slater, former Derbyshire man, a man of Chesterfield, blocks this one. It remains 41 for two here. If you're just joining us, a very good morning. Knotts won the toss, opted to bat. Two changes, both in the bowling uh, department. Brett Hutton and Dane Patterson, both omitted for this game. Luke Fletcher comes in to replenish the seam bowling stocks, but... They're playing two spinners as well as Calvin Harris and Liam Patterson White returns, having missed the last eight matches of last season. Holder to Slater, wide enough for Slater to leave. Good number inside the ground. Always staggers me, I always mention it. A lot of people almost as far away from the strip as, yeah. as could be in the yeah, uh, William Clark stand. Yeah, why would you and Maybe uh, less queues for the bar. I don't know, it's an odd one, isn't it? A long, long way away. People are a creature of habit, Frank. If they've sat there for years, they'll continue sitting there. doesn't matter where the strip is. As Slater blocks this one, and having not had a maiden at all this morning, Jason Holder comes on, drops six balls right on the spot, and he gets the first maiden of the day. 12 overs gone, Nottinghamshire 41 for two. Yeah, and it's Adam Finch coming on to replace Leach at the... Stuart Broad end, formerly the Pavilion end. Finch, who uh, the junior member of the the seam attack, um, did pick up um, three wickets at uh, Edgbaston last week. 14 overs, one made, and three for 56. Had a couple of spells where he was on it, and one or two where he wasn't. But uh, be hoping he can settle into a nice rhythm this morning the big difference this week i think for seam bowlers up and down the country is going to be that the there isn't a gale force wind blowing now which can really upset their rhythm and certainly was a problem for both sides at edgbaston last week from what i gather is finch is in and his first ball to clock is over pitched on leg stump clock clips it through mid wicket and uh thought he was going to get two i think but uh good bit of fielding out there Moving to his right. Yes, last week, um, any number of times, play was sort of held up whilst the bowlers were buffeted, yes. knocked out of their stride yeah. in their uh, in their approach. And, of course, we had the, the bales flying off in the, the strongest gusts as well. Yeah, it was, I, the reason I hesitated about the field was because it was Ethan Brooks who's come on as a sub. Joe Leach just slipped off for a moment, possibly to... Uh, Get a sweater. No, he's not. Somebody has. Leach is down there. Fine leg. Finch ball to the left-handed Slater. He pushes out on the offside. S and the Smith. aforementioned Brooks does the fielding. Smith, maybe. I think Could finished be his Smith. Spell. Leach was... Uh, Smith was fielding down there, wasn't he? Mm. Probably just a comfort break. But Ethan Brooks, yet to play in the Worcestershire first team, following his move from Warwickshire. Matthews. And his brother's moved as well to uh, Middlesex, has, yeah. hasn't yeah. he? So uh, the Brooks family's connection with Edgbaston ended. As Finch is in and bowls, and Slater on the back foot pushes up to mid-off, and there's no run. I see Liam Norwell, unfortunately, has picked up another injury, mm. hasn't he? Missed all of last year, and uh, yep. is out again. Uh, Matthew's been in touch. Summer's back. First time i managed to tune in this season. Familiar sounds of cricket again. Come on, knots. And Paul Taylor says, uh, just for your info, there's currently over a 1,000 watching on the live stream. Thank you, Paul. I don't know if that's good, bad or indifferent, but um, thank you very much to all of you that uh, have taken 
time out of your day to follow the county championship start of round two finch again in bowl slater forcing off the back foot but uh, straight to libby backward point he's got becalmed a bit hasn't he slater yeah. 12 off his first sort of 15 deliveries now 15 off 39 it's a measure of the extent to which worcestershire have settled in the bowling and um He's hit some good shots straight to fielders as well, which is always a bit frustrating. Finch continues. Striding in. Balls. Good pace outside the off stump. Left alone by Slater. Didn't make double figures in either innings last week. You, you want to get that early score, don't you? You want to get an early score on your board, on the board and it just eases you into the season. So uh, you can understand him. Just taking his time here. Just wants to hang out there in the middle for as long as he can and just hope he gets one or two bad balls just hope all the timing comes back and he can make a decent contribution for his side Finch again two Slater four this time short and wide cut away behind square between fourth slip and backward point down to the third man boundary no need to run ripple of applause end of the over Finch started well but uh, conceding a boundary off the last ball and Slater moves to 19 not to 46 for two uh, Mark says uh, for the first time this season he's had a chance to have a little look at the uh, Dave Brace good on <laughs> retirement home uh, way to our right and says it uh, it looks very very nice indeed I don't know if uh, uh, a, it's worth having a look, or B, it's possible for uh, one of our splendid camera crew out there, out and about, all around the ground. Maybe somebody during the course of the over can get a, a shot of the uh, the new build. It's, uh, it's clearly not open to residents yet. There's one or two people on top in yellow jackets that we've uh, we've seen, but it looks as if they're they're getting somewhere near. Just wonder if he's got a good view up there. The hard hatted chap watching on on top of the. Uh, new build away to our right this is played by Joe Clark into the gap on the leg side fielded by Joe Leach a single taken and everybody swaps over from right hander to left hander so that's the first run off the bowling of Jason Holder been some uh, memorable contests over the years between these two sides I can remember contest here at 2011 2012 or something I'll have to look it up where 20 wickets fell on the first day uh, 47 for two as holder balls now to Slater don't know what the order was I think knots were bowled out for 170 or 180 before T and Worcestershire were bowled out for a similar score by the end and not surprisingly we didn't go the uh, the full four days in that one. 20 wickets going down on the first day, early season game at Trent Bridge. It's uh, it's not uh, not been uncommon over the years. Jason Holder once more selected to go round the wicket. Start of this over and Slater happy just to defend. Um, Ken says, watching the live stream from Illinois in the United States, whilst I've been enjoying the return of proper cricket with the county season in England, I'm getting increasingly nervous about our beloved knots and, uh, uh, and while home at Trent Bridge as well. Thank you, Ken. Thank you very much for getting in touch from Illinois. Our first overseas correspondent of the day, I think. Next ball is uh, steered to backward point and there's no run. You made me think about a game that I saw here, uh, Dave, in uh, in 1988. It's a long time ago, I, rem I know, but uh, my first year as a cricket commentator. And uh, Worcestershire were uh, 23 for 7 and 39 for 8 Crikey. on the first morning here at Trent Bridge and went on to get 159. In the first inning, so 39 for eight got 159. Hold it to Slater. It was down the leg side. Slater couldn't just deflect it away for runs, but will get a leg by 48 for two. And then in reply, Knotts 33 for seven, 47 for eight, went on to get 135. 
Worcestershire then got 199 in the second innings and not one knocking off 225 for the loss of four wickets in the last innings. So first morning, it was wickets were tumbling all over the place. Mm. It was seaming around. Franklin Stevens and Kevin Cooper. <laughs> Holder. Clark drives into the covers. Decent stop there at extra cover to end the over. A couple of runs from that one. 48 for two. Is that Rob Jones? I think it is the uh, former Lancastrian. I think many times we've seen uh, Lancaster come here and Rob Jones has been the 12th man and give memory serves. He's, uh, he's actually spent more time on the field than a lot of the players who started. It's, it's, it's just a memory I've got of Rob Jones. Always, always seems to have been used as a sub-fielder on this ground for Lancashire. 48 for two, just looking in 2000 here, Worcestershire won. Um, Glenn McGrath took eight for 86 in that match, but it was a match that featured a record, a last wicket, a 10th wicket record for Knotts. Uh, 152, Usman Afzal with 151, and AJ Harris, who also played for Worcestershire, of course, he made 39, that was it, 24 years ago. We've Finch to continue. Yeah, Update coming shortly, I think. Yeah, we've had an hour. Finch bowls, Slater drives, square of the wicket, diving stop by Libby. Just going back to that 1988 game. So I said Franklin Stevens and Kevin Cooper, David Mills, Kevin Evans, and uh, Worcestershire, Dilly and Radford, five each. Well, we've been playing for an hour. Nottinghamshire won the toss, opted to bat first. Backfired a little bit, you fancy, at the start because they've lost both openers, Asiba Mead and Ben Duckett to the New Zealand and Nathan Smith. Recovery being led by Joe Clark and Ben Slater. Knots currently 48 for two. As Finch comes round the wicket again and bowls and Slater tucks this one away down. Fine on the leg side. Brilliant stop by Joe Leach down in front of his big man, getting down really well. Sliding stop, good return, and they only get two. Good fielding from Leach, but the 50 up for knots. Slater goes to 21, and he's, he's broken the shackles a little yeah. bit after being tied down, particularly by the end of Leach's spell. 50 brought up in an hour, they're uh, averaging about three and a half and over knots. Finch in, balls. Slater is forward, pushing up to mid-off. There's no run. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, good, good to see Nathan Smith get those two wickets, obviously from a Worcestershire point of view, but you'd probably feel honours fairly even, even though the two openers are out, and uh, with the Kookaburra, given what we saw last week, the chances are that to uh, get through this first session... Only two or three down, and uh, it got a chance of piling the runs on in the afternoon. Finch round the wicket, goes wide on the crease. Slater just uh, clips this one away, didn't time it. Toe over the bat, really, which he looks at now, as it's fielded by Baker at mid-wicket. Hamid, first out, bowled by Nathan Smith. Two stumps uprooted, great sight for the bowler. And uh, just one stump remaining as he dragged himself off. And then uh, Ben Duckett edging Smith behind out for nine. Finch in again, bowl. Slater steers out on the offside. Rob Jones moving to his left from third slip to do the fielding. And there's no run. 50 for two it remains. Bright morning here at Trent Bridge. Proper cricket weather for the first time this season up and down the country I would imagine today. Finch round the wicket again past umpire Wharf from the Stuart Broad end bowls and uh, Slater is forward. Thickish inside edge as it goes out on the onside fielded by Baker. End of the over from Finch. 50 for two. His figures, two overs, no maidens, no wicket for seven. Jason Holder has bowled two overs, one maiden, no wicket for one. And the other two bowlers used Joe Leach, six overs, no maidens, no wicket for 20. And the wicket taker, Nathan Smith, five overs, no maidens, two for 21. 
I've, uh, and we I've, have I've, our I've, first guest. I was going to say, I've just gone AWOL because um, I've been uh, just letting in our first guest. Here's uh, Jason Holder to start the 16th over. And uh, this is pushed into the offside. And there's no run. Um, well, Frank, I think you ought to really, uh, <laughs> you ought to really uh, well, we can, have a chat. We, yeah, we can do it together with our first, uh, with our first guest. Because um, yesterday I had an email from Tim Jones, who uh, we've corresponded a little bit in the past, and said, he said, if you're at uh, if you're at the game, Dave, any chance of uh, of just mentioning my new book? And I said, that's an absolute pleasure, Tim. No problem at all. As Holder comes in to bowl to the right-handed Clark, who's on four. And this is pushed up to uh, to mid on. He says, "Oh, that's that's very very kind of you." And I'll I'll have a listen because I'm going to be downstairs in the uh, in the press box on Friday. And I said, "Well, if, if you're going to be downstairs, I'm not plugging it. You can get yourself up here and do it yourself." So a very very warm welcome. Uh, a good afternoon as it is now as we pass twelve to uh, cricket author, broadcaster, journalist, uh, historian, archivist, and all-round good egg, uh, Tim Jones, who's popped in with uh, with his new book, which we'll mention in a second, 50 for two. Uh, hold up in play here. So, uh, welcome to Trent Bridge. Good to see you, Tim. Thank you, Dave. That's very kind. Hello. Hello, Frank. Well, just good morning, Tim. Or afternoon. Huh? Yep. Good just, to see you. Just and you, sir. I take it you two know each other. Yes. As uh, Holder bowls to Clark, and he defends. We'll uh, we'll get to uh, the subject matter in, in just a moment, but uh, we're here for start a play. Have you seen the cricket so far, Tim? Yes, I have. Uh, pretty even, I'd say, at the moment. Good start from uh, your new signing, Nathan mm. Smith. Could go well in English conditions. Oh, I think you're right. Bowled well last week at Edgebaston as well. Reminds me of Neil Radford, Tim. Oh, yes. Radford got a bundle of wickets and more in his career. There's Holder, another one. Fast experience, just dropping the ball on a coin here with uh, great regularity. 50 for two here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester. Frank Watson and Dave Bracegirdle here have been joined by uh, Tim Jones, who um, I guess, will come. as I say, we'll come to his subject matter in just a moment, but it, I'm, I guess he's very pleased to see... Jason Holder out there playing his second game for Worcestershire. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we'll say why in a moment as he bowls now and this is uh, pushed up to mid-off and there's no run. Umpire at this end, Ben Debenham. We've got shadows around the players. I don't think we I don't think we saw that at all on any of the four days last weekend against Essex unless it was shadows from the floodlights. Natural light, which is terrific. Holder coming to the end of his third over, still only conceded just one single. Clark's on four, faces him now and blocks. So that is the end of the over. Joe Clark four, Ben Slater 21. They've added 16 for the third wicket. Nottinghamshire 50, uh, 50 for two. Um, so we hand over to, to Frank if he can just elicit um, this, this new book that Tim is proudly owning. Uh, proudly holding just away to my right um, if you if you want to uh, just go through what what the premise of it is with him well i'll let tim tell us tim uh, first of all what your official title we can say historian archivist what is it is what how how did how did the club actually frame it covering both aspects yeah. Dave, historian and archivist yeah. of the club yes um and this book is basically about the 61 players who have played one championship match only for worcestershire here's finch round the wicket Bowls to Slater, pushes up to mid-off, no run, and that's that, that's that's the gist of it, Tim. It is. You're quite right, Frank. Uh, the one caveat to that, it goes up to the end of 2021. So a couple of players last season, um, Hamid Hasnain and uh, Saini, they're not in the book. You're right. Okay. Navdeep Saini, couldn't remember his first name. Navdeep. That's him. But first thing about it. Mm. I love the cover because it's got that lovely old scoreboard on it, hasn't it? Here's yes. Finch round the wicket again to Slater. Balls, and that's a good one from Finch. That's bounced a little bit more than most that we've seen from that end this morning and uh, climbed over the shoulder of Slater's bat. Encouragement for Finch, hands on head from him. 
So yeah, it's got that that lovely old score, but I know it's a mock-up because obviously 61 yes. for one is the title, and that's the score that's on the board. But uh, it is a it's 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 lovely, isn't it? It just brings yes. back memories, doesn't it? That that scoreboard. D Dave Wallace from Shropshire, he did that for me. He's a very gifted artist, and he's done a fantastic job yeah. with that. It's but yeah, that's a lovely, lovely building. Yeah, such a shame to see it in sort of disrepair now. As Finch comes in again, round the wicket to Slater, who edges this one. Plays it nicely, though, with soft hands, and it's running down to Rob Jones at fourth slip. Quite sharp from Finch, who settled after that first over, where he was a little bit wayward. And uh, now in his third over, it's conceded just seven. It's 50 for two. Where, did, where did the idea come from, then? Tim, just just something you were laid in the bath one day and thought, I wonder how many players have only played one game for Worcestershire. <laughs> Is that it? Finch again, round the wicket, bowls, Slater drives up to mid on, Dolivera Fields. I, I did have a, a book published a few years ago, it was called uh, The 52, which was only 52 players to have played first class cricket for Worcestershire, but not in the championship. And when it finished, a friend of mine who was helping me with the research, he said, oh, I'm going to miss doing this, Tim. I thought, I am as well. So what, what should we do next? I've had an idea. And from that idea, this is where we are mm. now. Finch again. Slater waits, back raised. He's in and bowls Yorker this time, which uh, squeezed out of the block hole by Slater. Gets a single out on the offside, keeps the strike. No, it's not the end of the over. 51 for two. He goes to 22. Off to a bit of a flyer, Ben Slater, but he's been pegged back by some tidy bowling. One ball left in the 17th over. And uh, I, I agree with you, Tim. On is fairly even, I think, mm. at the moment. Nathan Smith impressive at the start, but uh, these two have knuckled down quite nicely. Joe Clark. Uncharacteristically cautious, four off 22 so far. Waits now as Finch strides in and bowls, and uh, he works this one away to mid wicket. Baker fields, and there's no run. End of the over, 51 for two off 17. So, you, you, your next book will be some other quirky <laughs> I, Frank let's thing. not go there for the moment <laughs> if anything happens that'll be something for the winter and beyond I think this is plenty for be get to be getting on with now in all seriousness mm. Tim where's it available um, it, well, it, uh, available from me uh, people who know me or um, around the ground uh, they can easily send me an email with that just to register an interest it will be online um, I'm hoping with the next three or four weeks the major booksellers etc I won't name right. names but it should be uh, online then. And it's a sort of essay about each of the 61 players basically. There's Jason Holder and bowls outside the off storm. I've just uh, tweeted a picture of it so you can see the cover and uh, everything all about it at Brace Cricket if you want to have a little look. Um, Frank, Tim actually sent me some blurb yesterday, which oh, right, is interesting. Okay. This is the book for anyone who wants to know who played rugby union for England, who's the only player to have made his first-class debut during World War One, who was known as the Dudley Jessup, who was the prisoner of war associated with the Great Escape, who won the first Fastnet race, who played in an unofficial test match, uh, during his time as a prisoner of war, all who played for Worcestershire in just one game, as this is past the outside yes. uh, of the off stump. So... Of those, Tim, who is the most interesting to research? Maybe somebody you didn't know too much about and you thought, crikey, did he do that? Yeah. I, I think what one particular was a fellow E.G. Martin, e Evelyn George Martin, George Martin, um, from Martin's Bank, um, who became ultimately became Barclays. Uh, fascinating character, six foot eight tall, a bit like Jason Holder. Here is the six foot eight Jason Holder. Past umpire Debenham, balls to the left-handed Slater who drives through the offside for four. It was over-pitched, a little bit of width offered by Holder and Slater, eager to feed on that, punches it all the way across the lush outfield and it's away for four, just coming to rest mm. by the hover cover. And Slater's been waiting for that, he's under 26, 55 for two. So a very well-connected family and his parents were abroad a lot as a child and he was brought, and raised, brought up and raised in Brixham. Uh, at Berry Head House and subsequently became uh, well connected with all the bricks and trawlermen and fishermen. Holder looking for a little bit of a response here, balls to the left Andrew lets this go through to Gareth Roderick. 
Um, and he learnt the craft of sailing through them, which was to serve him well in, in both world wars. Uh, but he subsequently then went to uh, New College, Oxford, uh, where he was going to study for medicine. Uh, but he took over 100 wickets for Oxford University. He was a, a very fine bowler. Uh, what, what period is this? 1902-1903, uh, right. yeah. or 1903 he played for us. E. Martin. E. G. Martin. Right. What's his first name? Well, Evelyn George, but known oh, as George no. Martin. 55 for two. It was a, a fairly common male first name, wasn't mm. it? Evelyn for, yes. for a while. I think of Evelyn War and some others as this yes. goes again through to Roderick. 55 for two. But th th these Brixham trawlermen taught them everything they knew, um, mm -hmm. and he was a very gifted sailor. Uh, in the First World War, he was very much uh, responsible for uh, rescuing tugs and salvage, um, was awarded a, an OBE for doing so. And then in the 20s, holder again. It's not really something that nautical people are associated with cricket, is it? This mm. goes through to the keeper. If you used to spend most of your life out at sea, you, yes. you conversely aren't going to spend your Saturday afternoons on the village green either, Absolutely. are you? End of the over 55 for two. In the, in the 20s, this was just at the point when ocean racing was taking, mm. taking off, particularly in America. Uh, this is the gentleman who uh, had the idea to in and instigated the fastnet race. Uh, he bought himself, a, it was a French cutter called Jolly Breeze, refitted it himself in Tynmouth in South Devon and, and won the first race. Uh, and ultimately the Ocean Racing Club was formed and uh, he became the first Commodore of what became the Royal Ocean Racing Club, which would be pretty much be on a par with... Adam Finch from the Stuart Broadend Bowls. Joe Clark plays defensively back to the bowl. If you've just tuned in and you heard that, don't think you've got the wrong station <laughs> or something. <laughs> it's the yeah. Royal Yacht Club station. Yeah, We've got is. Tim Jones with us. He's talking about his book, 61 for 1, which is about Worcestershire's yeah. cricketers that have only played one championship well, match. Well, what is it on Test Match? Where do they go for the fishing? Yeah. <laughs> the weather the shipping the forecast. The shipping forecast, that's it. Um, oh, and, but Tim's talking about this this book about Worcestershire cricketers that only played one championship match. Who's Finch into Clark? Let's that go outside the off stump. And there's no run. It is available. Tim's mentioned his email. I'll just give out the email. All lowercase. Tim A Jones, four o five. Can't think why you chose that number. <laughs> at aol.com. Tim A Jones, four o five at AOL.com if you're interested. One thing that interests me, Tim, it, it, was there a theme? Uh, do, or, or is it, you know, players that maybe got injured or... Uh, ju I suppose times have changed. These days, yeah. it's just play, maybe overseas players who just get bust in for one game. Finch bowls again. Clark plays up to mid on. No run. It's a very good question, Frank, because y you're right that there are some players like Alan Donald features... More recently, Mitch Santner, Colin Munro, yeah. but some of the other players, particularly from the 1920s, who'd play as amateurs. Yeah. It may be deemed as a, a trial game, or in those days, if we'd got say a match at Kidderminster, it was custom for one of the club players yeah. to get in the side. Yeah. So as a result, they might have only played that one game. Yeah. Some real colourful characters, though. Finch. Striding in from the broad end, bowls and. Uh, Clark, well, he's working that one away off his pads, and the reaction from the bowler and the wicketkeeper suggests that if he hadn't got a bat on it, they'd have been going up for a big shout. But uh, he got a, a, a single out to backward square leg, and uh, as I said, Joe Clark uncharacteristically circumspect so far. He goes to five off 27 deliveries, and it's 56 for two. Adam Finch is an interesting one. I always think when I watch him, I can. I, I might be completely talking nonsense here, but let's just watch him as he hits the crease there, and uh, it's a full toss, which he gets away with, Slater drives it, only gets a single, he's hit Baker quite hard at extra cover on the hand, 57 for two, but I always think with Adam Finch you can tell what sort of mood he's in by the way that he hits the crease. If he, if he attacks it and his stride is quite long, I always think he's confident and he's bowling with some real verve and if he just appears to slow down a little bit as he approaches the crease I always think he's possibly not feeling at his best 
and the signs this morning for me and I, as I say this is only a personal observation but it looks to me as though he's he's at it this morning he's hitting the crease quite hard he comes in bowls and that's a good delivery on off stump Clark gets a single though just working it into the gap at extra cover and he goes on to seven and he keeps the strike I think it goes on to six and he keeps the strike. Such a quick scoreboard here. Slater 27, 58 for two. The men out Hamid 11 and Duckett 9 both falling to Nathan Smith. I was going to ask, um, and, and Frank covered a little bit of it there, um, how many players out of the si 61 would we might know? We, because a lot of them, as you, as you said, club players that were perhaps just yes. drafted in or whatever um, you know mentioned the name of Colin Munro and whatever and I've just sat here now and I've just thought of somebody that I know um, mainly associated with this parish please tell me you've got him in your book I'm thinking of Alexander Daniel Hales very good question you would be right but I haven't included players that we had on loan oh right yeah I've got so Alex doesn't make the cut he although doesn't. he played one game for uh, for he Worcestershire. Did. Got a 50 down at Cardiff, if I remember rightly. Uh, 50, I've just looked it up whilst I was thinking of a question. 15 and 63, yes, oh. in 2014. Yes. So it was almost where to dr not draw the line, but where to start and stop. So that's just one of my quirks, I think. So you've not but counted low knees. No, Luke, uh, Luke Wood would be another one who fits that category as well. N another former Nottinghamshire man. Indeed. Oh, so your books yeah. really should be 63 for <laughs> one. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. We have, <laughs> we have got spin. Better go. Um, it's Josh Baker bowling left arm spin round the wicket. Number 33 bowling to number 33 here. Josh Baker bowling to uh, Joe Clark. Um, and now we got enough stick for it at the time. Um, comes round the wicket again and bowls and it's pushed into the offside just so I know I'm dealing with the same fella it's Josh Baker who Ben Stokes had a, yeah. uh, had a yeah. very successful over against a couple of years ago Yeah, good character by the young man um, since then I understand it didn't, didn't Ben spend some time with him afterwards I think you know, he's, I think just, he, just I think one of those things I think he called him actually uh, or messaged him but yeah it was just one of those things it was an astonishing assault but in the long run, probably, one would hope, good for Josh's development. It's hard. I, I, you know, I just think it's so hard to be did, a did, young spin bowler these days, isn't it? Did you ever think that when you were hit for six? Well, it's cost my side six runs, but it's good for my development. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I never got hit for it's six. Happened. I never got hit for I six, did. Dave. <laughs> Here is uh, Baker bowling. There's a slip and a <laughs> short leg in there. The reason I never got here for six, Dave, is I was a wicketkeeper. <laughs> 59 for two. Holder is the uh, slip fielder. Is that Rob Jones under the lid? No, it's Kashif, I think. It's Cash Alley in there. Bobbing down nice and close. And uh, this one's deflected past him by Ben Slater. And moves on to 28. But 60 going back, for two. I do think it's just tremendously difficult to be a young spinner these days and um, you know if you play white ball cricket they looking to hit yep. you out the ground and Baker for a while after that experience with Stokes found that they tried to do that to him in red ball cricket as well he's in again and bowls tosses it up there Clark drives into the offside there is protection on that offside boundary with uh, Leach just mopping up in front of the Fox Road stand you'd imagine uh, when Worcestershire got here, presumably yesterday, and had a look and found out they were playing on a, a used wicket, Josh Baker would... Oh, I might get a chance here. Yeah, I think so. Interesting to see them turn to him this early. And he comes again. Balls. As uh, Slater took a step towards him, then readjusted, momentarily dropped back behind his crease and then worked it away onto the offside. So... Uh, First over of spin comes in the 20th over of the match. It leaked four runs. Nottinghamshire 62 for two here on the first day of the second round of matches. Nottinghamshire bottom of the table, lest we forget. The, the only positive result, if you like, from the first round of matches last weekend was here at Trent Bridge. Essex defeating Notts on, uh, on the final afternoon. Bundled out for just 80. It was a 
pretty poor batting show from Nottinghamshire. Well bowled to Cook and Porter in particular, but Notts didn't bat well. And as a result, go into this game with the little bit of pressure, as I say, of being bottom of the table. Adam Finch from the Stuart Broad end, round the wicket to the left-handed Slater, who's forward, pushing that out on the offside for a single. Libby's gone back onto the boundary at backward point now, so a comfortable single for the left-hander. Takes him on to 30, 63 for two. Tim Jones is with us, talking about his book 61 for one, about Worcestershire's one championship match cricketers. Um, I was trying to get at that idea of a theme Tim so mm. the more recent ones then presumably would be poss probably overseas players who maybe were here for white ball mainly but just nipped into the side absolutely Frank yes for convenience mm -hmm. I'm thinking Mitchell Santner yep Finch in bowls and uh, on the back foot Clark defends up to mid off to Oliveira Field no run it, it so Sodi would be another one. Oh yeah mm. of course um, yeah but what, what's been really helpful with the the current players as I'd refer to them is some of the contemporaries in the Worcester side have been able to say this is what they were like or mm. how they contributed mm. so that's a really lovely yeah. uh, bird's eye view of what they were about whereas the, the, the players from 70 80 100 years ago you're obviously relying on the records to find a little more mm. detail yeah. and their families to give some information. Yeah. Finch again turns straight hard running approach towards us. Bowls to Clark who uh, drives on the onside and picks up a single courtesy of a baker. Missfield at mid wicket. I say misfield, it was hit quite hard. Got down with his left hand and it just deflected off his hand and up to mid off where Kashi Ali completed the fielding and they took a single. Clark goes to nine, 64 for two. Had a lovely chat with Ish Sodi along with uh, John Curtis at Northampton after one T20 game, and uh, it was a, he gave us a little insight into his joy at playing for Worcestershire, which was nice. I'll just say a bit more about that in a minute. It's Finch bowls, Slater drives up to mid off, no run, and he basically he said that one of the reasons he was particularly excited to play at New Road and to play for Worcestershire was that one of his biggest influences was Dipak Patel mm. in Auckland and um, Dipak he he basically said had, had played a huge part in his development not just as a cricketer but as a, as a youngster mm. and um, he was thrilled to be able to follow in Dipak's footsteps so there was somebody doing service to his county even though he'd left 20 odd years before or more as Finch yes. bowls to Slater and he drives up to mid-off Cashy Field. No run, 64 for two in the 21st. Some lovely photographs in the book. Just uh, Thank you. A, a, a flick through here. It's, uh, it's magnificent. Um, just on the desk here, as, as an historian, I was telling Frank earlier, the first time I went to New Road was for the uh, Gillette Cup quarter-final in 1974. Wow. A match that dragged on into, into day two. And... I've sort of always had this for the last 50 years in my, my little box of memorabilia. Worcestershire Autographs 1974, part of the, uh, the Norman Gifford benefit brochure. Uh, all these autographs. And some of these players that are in your book are actually yes. have actually signed this card. Finch again to complete the over. Round the wicket, bowls, and Slater drives back to the bowler. There's no run. End of the over, 64 for two. Slater has 30, Clark has nine. Uh, just looking at one of those, Dave, fellow here, Bob Lanchbury. Uh, now, Bob was really helpful with some um, recollections of a match that one of the players I've mentioned, Paul Roberts, played in. Sadly died at a young age, Paul, in a climbing accident. But Bob played in a match with him in the seconds uh, against Lancashire at Urmston, and we beat the game started and finished in under a day, uh, where Paul Roberts and Paul Pridgen were the only two Worcester bowlers used, and we won a three a ch second eleven championship game inside three days. Good grief. A, a three day due to be three days, sorry, one inside <laughs> a day. And Bob featured, and he got some great stories with that with Cedric Boynes as well. A short game is a good game. Mm. Sixty four for two. Josh Baker to bowl. The next over, his second from this, the Radcliffe Road end. We bowl into Joe Clark, who, as Frank quite rightly pointed out, has been. Somewhat subdued so far, looks to be playing the, the waiting game. He's punched this uppishly, one bounce to mid-wicket Clark. He'd have been sick as a parrot if he'd got out there. And he, he played wonderfully, absolutely wonderfully in Nottingham's first innings against Essex and then went into a little bit of a quiet period after reaching his 100 as he's driven this one to mid-on and then danced down the track and, uh, and hold out to 
deepish mid on and then in the next over Jack Haynes who'd been there with him for a long time Haynes has made 77 just slapped a full toss from the leg spin of Matt Critchley straight to mid on at the other end as this goes through to the keeper and they'd battered from lunch till tea together a century plus partnership and then both followed each other back which opened the door and Essex burst through it taking those last five wickets with just four runs including the Sam Cook hat trick here's Baker around the wicket again and says run down I was going to say run down towards third man but the uh, reflexes of Jason Mr. Tickle yeah. <laughs> yeah long arms of Mr Tickle <laughs> prevented the ball from going more than a few paces that's nicely fielded there's Baker in again two balls left in the 22nd over and he defends and this is driven into the offside for a single tell me Tim I don't know if you, if you know you, you presumably would have come across it of the 61 people in the book who would you say in, in terms of uh, put, putting themselves imposing themselves on the game had the best one match record is this somebody in there who scored a 100 and was never seen again somebody in there who took five wickets and was never seen again uh, I'll let you just have a little think whilst Baker concludes the over here as Slater works us onto the leg side for another single 66 for two Slater will keep strike on 31 clock as 10 and you're listening to live county championship division one cricket from Trent Bridge Nottinghamshire 66 for two against Worcestershire two bowlers took a five wicket haul one was a fellow called Tom Allchurch uh, Ailes Owen Mann played for Stourbridge he took five wickets and so did Alan Donald in his debut game uh, but with Alan the, Donald as in as in AD as yes. in Alan Donald yes he did but the, the star of the show with the bat was a fellow called Percy Morris PJ Morris from Herefordshire uh, we knew nothing about him other than his, in, his initials when I started this project so I found births, deaths where he went to school but he got 77 in his, his one dig uh, a very fast scoring batsman and I think we lost the game quite heavily but Percy got his runs at a fair clip so that was good to find out a lot more about mm. him and his life Nathan Smith coming yep. back into the attack this time from the uh, pavilion slash Stuart Broadend and he'll go round the wicket to Slater racing in very purposeful approach and uh, Slater works this up to mid on hurries through for a well judged single Dolivera moving to his left to do the fielding 32 now to Slater 67 for 2 he's been the best of the knots batsmen so far for me Slater in terms of being the most assured at the crease this morning or this session got a bit of a flyer didn't let that go to his head then dug in as Joe Leach settled into a nice rhythm but he's looked to score at every opportunity as he did there with a well judged single Smith to Clark now over the wicket bowls and Clark gets a single maybe two as he steers this out on the offside comes back for two he'll have to hurry and uh, there's an appeal as Gareth Roderick removes two stumps when one bail would have been mm. enough as the throw came in from Libby, but Clark was well in. Did have to hurry, though. Probably a little bit more than he expected. But he picks up a couple. He was he was well home. And it's he goes to 12, 69 for two. It's one of those moments where you, you, you sometimes wonder, would there have been the chance of the run-out if the fielder had just composed himself a split second and then thrown it with pace rather than as we on the know, turn on yeah. the turn they just mm. like to get it in the air quickly trying to deter the the batters from coming back for two smith in bowls clark works this one away on the onside baker fields or if it would be i mean libby's a good field but yeah uh, we yeah. saw a run out at edgbaston last week that nathan smith produced that came from absolutely nowhere so quick was he over the ground and so incredibly quickly did he get his throw away that the batsman who he thought was a very comfortable two was out by a good yard or so it was an extraordinarily good piece of fielding it's that speed over the ground which is uh, which is so impressive with some of the fielders not to say that Jake Libby wasn't sharp there he was and he slid and it was a decent yeah. throw but as you say it wasn't uh, perhaps as quick a throw as it would have been if he had composed himself as Clark Plays this one away on the onside. Baker fields and there's no run. 69 for two. Hasib Hamid won the toss this morning. Chose to bat. 
and uh, not got off to a bit of a flyer. There were 19 without loss in the fourth over when Hamid was bowled by this man, Nathan Smith. Two stumps uprooted. He was out for 11. And Ben Duckett, his opening partner, followed him in the eighth over when he edged Smith through to Gareth Roderick and was out for nine. It was 34 for two at that point. Smith bowls now to Clark, who drives on the offside. And uh, fielded by... Jones in the covers, there's no run. So these two have added 35 since then. Slater, the main contributor, has 32. Clark, 12. It's 69 for two. And just the one wicket taker this morning, Nathan Smith. Two for 24 so far as he comes in to complete his sixth over. And... Joe Clark is forward, pushing up to Dolivera at mid-off, and there's no run. So 69 for two off, 23 overs, and I think probably with the Kookaburra being most helpful for the bowlers in the first hour or so, these two are now probably thinking, dig in, and we might be able to get something big on the board in the afternoon. Uh, just quickly before the new over starts, tell you elsewhere, Division 1 play everywhere today. Essex 102 for 2 at home to Kent, they were 14 for 2. Hampshire 70 for 2 down at Southampton against Lancashire. At the Oval, Somerset, the visitors there were put in, they 98 for 1. And Warwickshire's openers, 123 without loss against Durham. Give you Division 2 in just a second because Josh Baker's about to bowl to Ben Slater, who's on 32. Here comes the slow left arm spinner over the wicket. Bowls to the former Derbyshire man who's going to get at least one. Will they come for two? They will to backward point. And uh, Slater on his way to 34, 71 for two. In Division two, Glamorgan a 31 for one against Derbyshire. Yorkshire 59 for three at Bristol against Gloucestershire. Leicestershire 96 for three at home to Sussex. And Northampton 79 for one. At home to Middlesex is Baker coming in again to Slater and he defends this one Tim Jones alongside us uh, for this little passage of play Tim I know you love a good cricket book I wonder what you made of the uh, Daryl Mitchell autobiography <laughs> 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 71 for two <laughs> Next ball is uh, pushed away onto the offside, and there's a single. I bought one. Fabulous book. Fabulous read. I did. I did as well. In fairness to you, Dave. Yeah, it's tremendous. And, and I've, I've quoted a little passage from that in this one about one of the players, Adrian Shanker, who uh, made a very uh, sort of spurious <coughs> one-game appearance for us. And uh, Daryl was helpful with some comments about it as well. Yes, because uh, Frank was uh, a leading participant oh there's a full toss from Baker and this is uh, just punched straight to mid on no run Clark will feel he missed out um, I'm also fortunate enough to have had one or two books published that morning Tim that, that day when the postman delivers the first box and you get the chance to see the book and in all its glory for the first time as it's driven to, to mid off that is a magnificent feeling that nobody can, uh, can envisage exactly what it's like unless you've actually written a book yourself I agree entirely, Dave. That's very nicely put. There's Baker round the wicket and bowls. And this one is uh, nudged back to the spinner. 72 for two after 24 overs. It's called 61 for one. It's written by Tim Jones. If, uh, if anybody... Um, sends any messages to me I'll see they get passed on to Tim but uh, your, e no, your email address uh, if anybody wants further information Tim A. Jones 405 Tim A. Jones 405 at AOL.com Tim will tell you all about it but uh, it looks a lovely book Frank doesn't it? Yeah really interesting and, and I'm just drawing attention to this Norman Gifford uh, brochure that you showed us earlier Dave and um, all the names inside it of the sort of 1974 squad and it's been a sad week for Worcestershire cricket as many people will know it was Duncan Fernley's uh, memorial service on Tuesday and I know Tim was there and I was mm. there and so I went through the list of players on this uh, card Tim and uh, I was counting a how many 
aren't with us anymore. I'll just break off a Smith Bowles to Slater, who defends out on the offside. There's no run. And B, how many of these people were there on Tuesday? And it was quite a significant number, wasn't it? Norma Very Gifford much. was there. Um, Alan. Alan Ormrod was there. Ted Hemsley was there. Van Bernholder was there. Um, Bob Lanchbury wasn't there. Jim Coombs, Coombs was there. there. Uh, Paul Pridgen was there. Um, I think that's... And that's it, that's I think. A quite, a few, yes. quite a few of the others that, uh, as I say, are no longer with us. But uh, a lovely piece of memorabilia <laughs> and a lovely picture of Norman with bat in hand on, <laughs> on the front as well. And, and I wonder if either of you know if this place still exists. There's an advert on the back for the Red Heart Inn at Kington uh, in Flyford no, Favel. No. Nathan Smith bowls. <laughs> Slater works away on the onside. No, it doesn't. It, it, well, I think it, it's still there, but it's not in, its, mm -hmm. in the same mm -hmm. form. It used to be um, David Drinkwater, didn't it, that uh, ran it, I think. D Dick Thomas. And Dick Thomas before him. There's a connection, Frank. His son, Bill Thomas, W.R.K. Thomas. Bill Thomas, Will Thomas, yeah. He was in my first book of yeah. 52, played one first-class yeah. game for Worcestershire and against Sri Lanka. And played for Ombersley as well for, yes. a, for quite a long time. There's a connection. Yeah, there you go. It's a small world in the Worcestershire cricket fraternity. Here's Nathan Smith, now part of that fraternity, round the wicket, bowls to Slater, pushes out on the offside, and there's no run. That's one of the things that reminds me of Neil Bradford. When he finishes his follow-through, he sort of jogs away and right. is immediately wanting to get back and bowl the next ball. It's that, that absolute keenness to, uh, to get at it and get at the batsman again and... Uh, He's a busy, busy cricketer, isn't he? You can see that already. Top wicket taker in New Zealand's Plunkett Shield last winter. Round the wicket, he's in now. Bowls and Slater is forward, pushing out on the offside. And again, there's no run. 72 for two. What have we got? 15 minutes to mm. lunch. Quite a crucial little spell, this. If they get through to lunch... You know, my I always say eight, 80 for three is my par for lunch, I always think. If it honours even. If it's two down, I think the batters have enjoyed the best of it. If it's four, then I think the bowlers have. But uh, Worcestershire certainly will be uh, keen to try and break this partnership up before the break. Baker's been dispatched to backward square leg. Not all the way back. And Smith is calling Finch up off the boundary as well. So it's almost as though he's set a trap. Will it be a double bluff? Will he bowl short? No, he bowls on a good length. And uh, Slater just pushes up to mid on where Dolivera fields. But he's obviously set mm. that. And then he's thinking he might bang one in short. He's he, not really a happy hooker, Ben Slater. I can't it, know, although, off the top of my head think of... Uh, he did play that yeah, one magnificent yeah. shot this morning, didn't he? When Smith dropped short to him from this end, he uh, absolutely smashed it away in front of square. But uh, it's an odd field now. We've mm. got two slips, sort of first or second and fourth, really. And those two men out on the leg side. Smith comes in there and bowls. And this one is outside the off stump, just short of a length. And Slater steers it down into the gully. Libby Field, no run, 72 for two. Uh, Tim, can we just thank you first of all for coming up to, to say hello? And, and secondly, um, wish you the very, very best with your book. It, it looks magnificent, as, like I said, all, all books do. They smell uh, they smell nice, they look nice when they're hot <laughs> off the press, but uh, it's, it's a great idea. There's clearly been an awful lot of research gone into it. I would imagine some of the photographs have taken uh, quite a lot of um, sourcing, but uh, fabulous book. Um, I hope Worcestershire supporters will... Uh, um, we'll be in touch and we'll, yes. uh, and we'll get one. It's going to be a good summer read for those of you on holiday, for those of you that, uh, that follow the club. And I, and I guess for people who just love their cricket and love the cricket history, it's a fascinating book by the looks of it. And I'm sure it's a very, very, and going to be a very enjoyable read. Wish thank you well. Thank, thank you for inviting me up and allowing me to do that. Thank you, Frank, as well. Really appreciate it. There's Baker around the wicket bowls. And uh, we'll let Tim go and... Uh, uh, get in the uh, get in the food queue downstairs. Um, great to see 
Uh, Tim, we'll uh, hopefully have one or two more guests popping in to see us through the course of the day as we get towards the end of this session. This is dropped on the leg side. Baker's bowling and John C has been back in touch, Frank, to say Josh Baker was out for nearly a year with a back injury. Mm. Came back last season, yeah. 2023, leading wicket taker in the One Day Cup with 17 wickets. Only Wayne Parnell has ever taken more in a season of One Day Cricket. Thanks, John. As this is pushed into the offside and there's no run. 72 for two. That was nice, wasn't it? Um, Very nice. Yeah. It, would, would you book, agree with it? me? A new book. It just oh, oh it just smells nice isn't yeah it? <laughs> absolutely yeah if you um if you need any more information on that um get in touch with tim this goes through to the keeper of if you uh is it tim a jones 405 at aol.com or i'm sure frank or i would pass on uh, your names or your details to uh, to tim and wish him well By Debenham just went and had a little look at the footmarks where Baker was standing as Clark goes back to cut this one and the all too familiar oohs and ahs out there as he misses it and it goes through into the gloves of Roderick. Standing up of course. Just under 15 minutes to go until lunch as Clark drives again into a packed offside no run. The keeping Joe Clark's powder nice and dry here, aren't they? He's only on 12, faced 52 deliveries now, 72 for two knots. They will, uh, of course, have seen what happened with the Kookaburra ball in that first round of matches last week. And we're hoping, we'll be hoping that Worcestershire's bowlers don't get much assistance between lunch and tea, and that if Clark is there, he can do exactly what he did last uh, last friday uh, last it was saturday wasn't it of course essex batted first last saturday between lunch and tea he's got a century i'll be hoping he can do the same good over that i thought from josh baker oh. four overs one maiden no wicket for nine he's got away with a couple of full tosses but uh beaten the bat on a couple of occasions good start for the youngster nathan smith racing in round the wicket to slater who tucks this one away on the leg side and baker does the fielding out at deep mid wicket 73 for two slater goes to 36 and nathan smith the busiest of the worcestershire seamers this morning in his eighth over probably keep going till lunch now you would have thought Maybe get a, another one or two in. Depending how Baker gets through those mm. very quickly. So he, he, it might be that we'll see Smith deliver 10 in the morning session. Comes in now. Balls and Clark is on the back foot. Very watchful. Stylish backward defensive. High left elbow. Pushes up to mid on. No run. Oh, it was a no ball. Yeah, thanks Dave. No ball given. He's bowled three now, hasn't yeah. he, this morning? He does charge in. It's a very, very fast approach. Just moving his marker back. Some bowlers build up their pace as they approach. Some get going quite quickly, quite early on in the run-up. And Smith's one of those. Bowl short. Clark cuts off the back foot. Libby Fields moving to his right at backward point. No run. Just can't find the gaps, can he, Joe Clark? Uh, Halvor's been back in touch. Where was he? Norway, was he? Somewhere in Scandinavia. Got the live stream working, he says, but I still can't uh, get anything on the BBC app or BBC website. Um, well, as long as you've got us, Halvor. And Hawkey says, absolute pleasure to be listening to the cricket once again. I'm a Knotts lad living 150 miles away. It's fantastic to be transported back to Trent Bridge via the live stream. Very There's welcome, Hawkey. Thank you. Smith again in... Past umpire wall bowls and that one uh, bounces a little bit, nips back maybe, just takes Clark on the inside thigh, I think, drops down on the offside. Goes for a little walk, the batsman prodding at the pitch, indicates with his hand to his partner that it just nipped back a little bit. Still asking questions, Nathan Smith. Two for 27, he's in his eighth. Good effort from him. One slip, oh, two slips really, first and sort of fourth. And Smith is in and bowls and Clark drives this one away on the onside. Didn't quite go where he meant it to. 
I think his hand slipped. He's taken his glove off and he's wiping his right hand in the dirt at the end of the next strip. Possibly the bat just twisted in his hand as he played that one, I think, and it went a bit squarer than he intended. 75 for two. Sun not quite shining with the same intensity that it was earlier, but it's fairly bright. Adjustments to the field again. Finch moving squarer, that long leg, to sort of deep backward square. Kashif coming in off the boundary to a kind of second mid-wicket. Got two mid-wickets catching now. One quite close, one a little bit deeper. Smith bowls. Clark drives on the offside. Handsome, beautiful shot, actually. Best shot he's played. And... Uh, it gets him four despite mm. Dolivera's chase down towards the scoreboard. Sliding stop, unable to keep the ball inside the rope. Lovely shot from Joe Clark. As good as anything we've seen all morning, probably, in terms of aesthetics. He goes to 16. It's 79 for two with one ball left in the 27th. Yes, yeah, nice shot from Joe Clark. Uh, Matthew Montgomery listed to come in at five. Jack Haynes, I'm sure he'll be keen to go well against his former side. He'll bat at six. Smith again in to complete the over. Bowls, good quick delivery. Clark in behind it, plays defensively out on the offside. And that is the end of the over. So eight overs, one maiden, two for 31. And Baker to continue from the Radcliffe Road end. Certainly rush around Worcestershire, don't they, um, Clearly they want to keep up with the over eight, showing a zero at the moment. Those uh, those no balls don't do anything to, to help that. That's three we've had from Smith so far. But they are quick between the fields and with Baker bowling as well. Already four overs under his belt. They, uh, they shouldn't really incur any over eight penalties, you'd imagine. 79 for two. We've had 27 overs. Certainly time for at least two more in this session, if not three, as Baker comes in to begin his fifth bowling two slate. A little bit of gentle turn there, back into the left-hander. Played down into the ground and fielded by Cash Alley at short leg. Paul quickly returned and Baker tosses this one up, driven into the offside. And this is going to bring him a couple more runs later. Just managed to uh, thread it through the offside for two. Knots into the 80s now, 81 for two. Ben Slater up to 38. Joe Clark 16, partnership worth 47 for this third wicket. Baker once more and very, very deep into his crease there. Slater defends on the opening day last Friday. Essex bowled out for 2-5-3 here on the Saturday. Knots made 2-9-3, just to give you some sort of idea where first inning scores were in the last game. Next one down the leg side, tickled away. Another single for Slater. Knots should certainly have got more than 2-9-3. Lost their last... Uh, six wickets for the last five wickets for six runs was it something like that blown away Sam Cook's hat trick doing the damage 82 for two Breeze just picking up a, a little bit the flags we can see are just gently rippling can't see a Worcestershire flag this one's uh, pushed into the offside, fielded by Jones. No run, 82 for two. Gone missing in action, the Worcestershire flag, Frank. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why. Baker to Joe Clark. That's the defensive push that ends the 28th over. Joe Clark, 16. Slater, 39. They've added 49, Baker... Five overs, one maiden, none for 12. Had five bowlers used this morning. Dolivira going to have a bowl now. Yeah. Probably the last over before lunch, I would imagine. Well, the board 
bottom left of the Batman board says 12.55 in the digital numbers. So yeah. I guess it's just how long it takes him to uh, sort his field out. And if anything of note happens, they might be able to squeeze another one in after this one. Be a real bonus for Worcestershire if you can just winkle out one more batsman on the stroke of lunch. Yeah, I'd say, as I said earlier, I think 82 for two probably just favours the batting side. Oliveira bowls and Slater pushes this out on the onside. Jones is the fielder. I think it will be, uh, we might just get one more in. He's in again now, the Worcestershire captain. And this one again is tickled away to Jones at mid-wicket with any spin. One turn from Baker, didn't it, in that last over? Mm. Dolivier has decided to go round the wicket to the left-hander. And we'd expect it to turn a little bit. Worn pitch. Slater right outside off stump. Giving Dolivier nothing to aim at in terms of the stumps. Just walks in behind it, drops it down on the offside. Quite odd for a bowler coming in when he just can't see anything. Slater's absolutely slap in front of the stumps. It's Dolliver bowls and he chips this one away on the onside. A little bit uppishly, but safely. Fielded by Libby at mid on. Slater just composes himself. Oliveira in again, balls to him, full, and he drives for a single out on the offside. Leach will field. Slater goes to 39 40, 83 for two. Does have a century against Worcestershire Ben Slater. Yeah. Um, that day when they didn't get a wicket. Yeah, it? The, the final day, two or three years ago, when uh, both he and Asiba Mead battered through the day. He also has a very big score at New Road, but that was yeah. in uh, in the COVID yeah. uh, year of 2020, playing for Leicestershire, where he went for a one-game loan. Uh, in fact, he played two games, two-game loan. Oliveira to Clark, who drives out on the offside. Jones Fields, no run, end of the over. We will get one more mm. in. But um, Leicester as a city, I think, was, uh, was, was out of bounds, wasn't it? So um, Leicestershire Road, couldn't play yeah. Lancashire at home so they played the game at New Road and yeah. it coincided with um, Ben Slater's debut for Leicestershire and I think he got 170 or so against Lancashire Notts recalled him uh, for the game here a week later and he got another 100 against Lancashire Yeah it's a good quiz question isn't it which mm. Leicestershire batsman <laughs> got 100 against Lancashire at Worcester which Nottinghamshire batsman got a hundred a hundred against Lancashire at Worcester for Leicestershire? Yep. That one turns. Oh, he's tucked it away on the onside, and Cashy Valley at short leg has picked it up on the half volley. It turned. He played it with the spin. It was a good bit of fielding, but it just bounced almost into his hands. I, I don't think he, he dropped it. it. I wonder if he had it from the reaction. So close. Yeah. Baker again. Over the wicket, bowls to Slater, Fuller, driven up to mid-on. No run, we're not going to see a replay. But it was very, very close. It would have been one of those where he just tucks it away and straight into the hands of short leg. I reckon it just picked it up on half volley. Well, it may do, and of course those watching on the live stream can actually rewind it and have a little mm. look, so it uh, be nice if somebody let us know. We might see a replay at the end of the over. Baker again into Slater, full toss, and Slater just uh, pushes it out on the offside. Libby at short extra does the fielding. Three balls left to lunch, 83 for two. Two men out, Hamid 11 and Duck at nine, both falling to Nathan Smith. Baker bowls, and Slater is rocking forward, just drops this one down on the onside. Impressed with Baker this morning, mm. bowled nicely. Yep. A few full tosses, but he's got the ball up there. It's turned a bit. And he's been a threat. He's in his sixth over. No wicket for 12. Bowls again nicely. Flighted. 
Slater pushes back to him. It's good from Dolivier to get him in the game early as, as well, isn't it? It's not like he's sat stewing. Yeah. One ball left in the session. Baker to bowl it. Bowls it now. Slater is forward, defending, and there's no run. So lunch arrives with not 83 for two off 30 overs. Slater has 40, and Joe Clark is 16. Uh, I think it is just short. We have just seen a replay, Frank, and I think it is just yeah. short. But all the uh, all the animation from the Worcestershire side is that it very nearly carried. I think that. Uh, is what we can interpret, or I can interpret from uh, well, the replay just, I've just seen. Somebody just said to me that they rewound it and it was a drop. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Okay. I only saw it out the corner of my eye, but uh, nice I don't. Know, I mean, I, it, 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 it's harsh to call it a drop, isn't it? If you've ever fielded yeah. it short leg, you'll know that they, 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 they go in. If they stick, they stick. If they don't, they don't. But uh, it was it was tight, and it was it was a, a half chance, shall we say? But. Uh, Encouraging from Baker. Mm. Six overs, two maidens, no wicket for 12. D'Olivera, one over, no maidens, no wicket for one. And the other bowlers used Leach. Six overs, no maidens, no wicket for 20. Holder, four overs, two maidens, no wicket for five. Finch, five overs, no maidens, no wicket for 13. And the wicket taker, Jason Nathan Smith, eight overs, one maiden, two for 31. Yeah, I think you can make a case for both sides uh, taking something from that morning session. Worcestershire, I think, in particular, will be pleased to get rid of uh, Ben Duckett. We know any time at the crease for Duckett, he's going to score his runs quickly. They've got him out for nine. They've got a Seba Mead out for 11. They've, uh, by and large, kept Nottinghamshire nice and quiet, or relatively quiet. Joe Clark, in particular, only making 16 runs. Of course, it all depends on what happens from here on in. If not, have a good afternoon with the bat. You can say they've laid the platform in this session. If Worcester should come out and um, can go bang, bang, and get a couple of wickets, not if there are 100 for four, 120 for five or whatever, Worcestershire will be very much on top. That's all in the future. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. Many thanks to Tim Jones for coming in, telling us all about his, uh, his new book. But thanks um, to Frank for his company. He'll be back with me when we restart just after lunch. And thanks to you for, uh, for being there and enjoying the morning session with us. At lunch, Nottinghamshire 83 for two from 30 overs. Ben Slater 40, Joe Clark 16. We'll do it all again in 40 minutes' time. I hope you'll join us then.
Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Trent Bridge. Join us in uh, good time for the resumption of play here in Nottingham with the home county. 83 for two at lunch. We had a very absorbing morning session. We got underway on time with Nottinghamshire having won the toss, opted to bat first. A couple of changes from the side that were well beaten here in the first round of matches by Essex. Luke Fletcher back into the side. Liam Patterson White, the slow left arm spinner in. And uh, perhaps a little surprisingly, Nottinghamshire's two leading wicket takers last year, Dane Patterson and Brett Hutton, the two omitted from the Knott side. Worcestershire, they've made one change from the side that drew last week with Warwickshire. And that is uh, Josh Baker, the slow left arm spinner that we've seen bowl five or six overs already in this match has come in for Matthew Waite. I'm Dave Bracegirdle from BBC Radio Nottingham. Frank Watson's alongside me from BBC Hereford and Worcester. And we will have, uh, hopefully various guests popping in the commentary box to join us through the uh, through the afternoon and evening sessions as we uh, as we did in the morning session tim jones uh, here this morning just telling us all about the new book he's bought on uh, worcestershire cricketers uh, worcestershire cricketers specifically have played just one match for the county lovely looking book really nice looking book and um, if you miss that uh, Tim's email address, timajones405 at aol.com. The book's just come out and uh, he'll be able to sort you out with a copy and uh, no doubt um, sign it personally to you if uh, that's something you might be interested in. The players have made their way into the middle. You've heard enough from me for a moment or two, so uh, a very good afternoon. Full no doubt of fish and chips <laughs> alongside <coughs> me is Frank Watson. Thanks, Dave. Good afternoon. Joe Leach to uh, start things off this afternoon from the Stuart Broad end. Ball to Joe Clark, his old teammate, and he pushes out into the offside. And Rob Jones does the fielding. There's no run. It's like change in the uh, the mood and the the feel out there with the keeper standing up. Just the one slip in. Backward point, extra cover, mid off, and then on the onside, mid on. That man catching at a sort of deepish mid-wicket. Two men out on the leg side boundary for Clark. These two know each other really well. Leach in, bowls. Clark on the back foot, drives back past the bowler. Dolivera moves across from mid-off to do the fielding and there's no run. It's a circumspect Joe Clark. 16 mm. off 63 deliveries. I always think he's dangerous when he's in this mood he's not going to give it away as he sometimes does early on in his innings but determined to build on that excellent hundred that he made last week and always sweet for him to do well against his old teammates Jack Haynes will have the same opportunity shortly Leach in bowls and Clark is forward pushes no ball well, that's very unusual Joe Leach doesn't bowl many no balls but umpire Alex Worth calling that one two more on to the total yeah obviously we're getting uh, used to Dylan Pennington and Jack Haynes of course Josh Tong as well uh, here at Trembridge that's a 50 partnership by the way they're uh, just applauding those two runners take the partnership from 49 to 51 um, but uh, talking to Dylan Pennington at the press day last week found out obviously it wasn't that aware that he was he comes from Shrewsbury like Joe Clark and Joe Leach mm. yeah Leach in bowls to Clark, who tucks that one away down to long leg for a single. So, Joe, so Clark, Joe Clark actually comes from Oswestry in Shropshire, but uh, he goes to 17. Um, but Joe Leach, although he doesn't actually hail from Shrewsbury, he's well, a Staffordshire boy really, mm. comes from Stone, but Shrewsbury was his club and he went to school at Shrewsbury School. As did Ed Barnard. You, you were going. You spoilt my stat there because I was going to say. Oh, sorry. I was going to say there's more in the Notts eleven uh, born in Shrewsbury than yeah. born in Nottingham. Uh, uh, just Luke Fletcher born in Nottingham. Right. Okay. Oh, so Joe. Yeah, Joe Leach was. It, uh, Joe Clark was. It, it was born in Shrewsbury. All oh, right. I don't know. I I know Oswestry is his home. I think it says. So. Yeah, I think it says born. Yeah. Um, but that might so, be because that's yeah. the major hospital. Of course, we had James Taylor here as well from Shrewsbury about yeah. a yeah. decade ago. Leach balls. Slater steers out square on the offside. There's no run. All because of the, the sort of satellite academy that Worcestershire have in yeah. Shropshire, really. James Taylor and uh, Joe Leach and Ed Barnard and um, Joe Clark. Mm. Joe Hart. 
There's another one who was in the academy, the goalkeeper, yep. the Celtic goalkeeper, was yep. a left arm seamer, was in the Worcestershire Academy in his youth. Crikey. And played at Shrewsbury Cricket Club as well. Joe Leach, the aforementioned, round the wicket, in now to bowl to Slater, who drives for four. Over pitched, outside off stump, and Slater not going to miss out on that. Put it away in front of square. Square drive, nicely played. And he goes to 44, 90 for two. One ball left in the 31st, the first over after lunch. And Ben Slater, the pick of the batters so far today. Off to a flyer, then reined himself in and weathered a, a tighter spell of bowling, but uh, has put the bad ball away whenever it's come along. And waits again now and gets another single here as he tucks his... No, he doesn't. He's sent back by Joe Clark as Josh Baker moves smartly to his left to do the fielding at mid-wicket. And he will come in now and peel off his sweater and cap. Give it to the umpire because he will continue his spell which began before lunch from this Ratcliffe Road end with the score on 90 for two. Yeah, seven from that first over after lunch. The uh, run rate has dropped now to... 2.9 runs and over. Of course, it's not like hugely significant, especially at this stage of the innings. But uh, Nottinghamshire in the early stages were rattling along, weren't they? Uh, when Asib and Duckett first went out, their runs came very readily in the opening three or four overs. But then Amid went and he went in the fourth. Duckett went in the eighth and not had to rebuild. 90 for two it is now. Clock on 17 facing. Josh Baker actually about six overs this morning. Two maidens, none for 12. Balls to Joe Clark now. Reaches forward and defends the ball out onto the offside. Kashi Fally comes in and uh, picks the ball up. He's in a stationary catching position at short extra. Next one's driven just out of his reach to his left and away for four runs through the offside. Driven away by Joe Clark. I think the jury's uh, still out on whether there was a, a chance. I mean, it, it looked at it a couple of times just in the final over before lunch. Baker bowling to Ben Slater with the short leg in there. It just seemed just to die in front of Kashi Fali as Ben Slater just went to defend it on the leg side. Nice shot from Clark. He's under 21. 94 for two as Baker round the wicket. Bowles tosses it up and this one is driven into the covers to uh, Rob Jones. And there's no run. Nice feel around the ground. Good crowd in. Uh, mainly at this end, the Radcliffe Road end, so we can't see them all from our commentary position. But good numbers all around as this one's played up to the, is that the skipper dropping on it at mid-on. And there's... Uh, no addition to the total, 94 for two. Worcestershire getting through six different bowlers this morning as Baker fires one in and Clark defends. This is the 32nd over. Very noticeable in last week's match here. Knots against Essex after about 30 overs. It's indeed the, the second session of the Kookaburra balls. Very, very little responses. This one's again driven through the offside. Once more, two Worcestershire fielders. Um, Kashi Fally and Rob Jones diving. Ali to his left, Jones to his right, and it went between them, bisected them nicely. Two boundaries in the over then, so lots have started brightly in this session. They've already added 15 from just two overs. Slater on 44, Joe Clark on 25 now, and the partnership worth 64. Yeah, <clears throat> nice shot from Clark. Second one was... Even nicer than the first, I thought, in terms of uh, its quality. Successive boundaries for him, having been so circumspect, might be just what he needs to kick-start him. He's moved on to 25. This partnership beginning to take on a really significant status now. As Leach comes round the wicket to bowl to Slater and another run for him as he just steers this one off the back foot out to Kashif Elliott. Deep 
Backward point, shortish boundary on that side of the ground. Long way to the rope on the other side, which is some sort of 20 yards in from the boundary. But uh, there were some short boundaries at Edgbaston last week for the game against Warwickshire. And of course, it's the same for both sides. Mm. 99 for two. Leach over the wicket to the right-handed Clark with that man in on the drive at short mid-wicket again. And uh, ooh, slightly tentative shot by Clark. Pulled his bottom hand off the bat, suggesting that it might just have bounced a little bit. Two or three have done that from that Stuart Broad end. This innings just bounced a little bit more than the batsman expected. Mentioned this morning, Frank, in, um, a game. It was 2012. I looked it up at lunch. 20 wickets fell on the first day. Nottinghamshire bowled out for 118 with six wickets for Richard Jones of Worcestershire. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the coaches is Leach Bowles and Clark is forward, pushing up to mid on. So, not 118 all out. And then by stumps, Worcestershire 130 all out. An mm. extraordinary opening day there. Um, day two. A century for Ricky Vessels as Knott's piled on 400. And although Daryl Mitchell got a century on the third day uh, for Worcestershire, Knott's got the win. But uh, first day, and it's first day of the season, Knott's 118 all out, Worcestershire 130 not out. That was 2012 on this ground. Joe Leach turns 99 for two as he moves in towards us and bowls to Clark, who drives quite timing that up to mid off Brett Dolivera the Worcestershire captain does the fielding rubs the ball on his left thigh in an attempt to uh, keep some shine and they don't shine too badly in my experience kookaburras but uh, the seam by now will have flattened out quite considerably I think when the 33rd over here is Leach. Bowls to Clark, drives. Beautiful shot. And a brilliant stop by Rob Jones, diving to his right at extra. That certainly saved four runs. If that had gone through, it would have raced away to the boundary. Hit it really well, Clark, but a super bit of fielding from Jones. The number of people that have said to me, we're using Kookaburra balls for the first two rounds of uh, the county championship so that our players, when they play for England down in Australia, um, will be more used to the ball. No. I, I, I don't see any <laughs> any link between those two uh, statements. Leach bowls to Clark, defends out on the offside. Well, there isn't any, is there? I mean, Joe Root's playing for Yorkshire, I think, today, but uh, there, are, there won't be many players no. playing county cricket today who no. will be playing in the Ashes. 99 for two at the end of the over. I, I, I've said this on many occasions before. Um, there are, As far as I know, there are th basically three balls used, aren't there, in, in the world, I think. Um, Dukes, Kookaburras, and then the, the one that they use in the West Indies, which is different. And They still use a reader, anyway. I can't, well... I think they're doing league cricket, mm. but I can't understand how you can have a, a a game that's worldwide and it doesn't have the same ball. It just doesn't seem to make any sense to me at all. Whether that should be the Kookaburra or not, I don't know. But um, see, they I are very different. Yeah. They feel different in the hand. They, and the seam, it's the seam, isn't it? There's an extra line of stitching, I think, on the Duke, and it's a much prouder seam. It's going to be Baker to continue. I'm, I'm of the opinion that, OK, if they do it that way in Australia, they do it that way in Australia. If, uh, here, we do it this way, but mm. I, don't, I don't think it's right that we should play some games with this ball and some games with that ball, as uh, Slater again latches onto a Baker full toss and gets it through the offside for another boundary. So he moves to 49 here, Ben Slater. Just what you want is it first ball of the over there, a nice loopy full toss that you can drive away. That brings the 100 up for Nottinghamshire as well. That's the uh, prolonged round of applause you heard from, I would guess, predominantly Nottinghamshire supporters and members. There are a few here we saw with the uh, the pairs, um, logos on the uh, on the jackets and coats as they were coming in this morning. 
good to have the Worcestershire supporters here. Down the leg side, a fancy LBW shout was not too confident. Now let's have a look at the umpire. No signal, so there was some bat involved. That's why he wasn't giving out LBW anyway. So Ben Slater gets his first 50 of the season. He's faced 103 deliveries and hit six fours. He's been at the crease for exactly two hours. Well battered Ben Slater. and four for two. Clark, he's got a quarter century, he's on 25 and again goes through the offside and Kashi Fali dives once more for it. Don't know if he's had any goalkeeping practice but he's been diving left, right and centre at the moment. Kashi Fali is right in the firing line there with Joe Clark looking to drive in that area. Next delivery. Sees Clark come down the track and he's hit it straight back over the bowler's head and it disappears just below us for six. Nice shot from Clark, real show of intent and maybe, maybe just why they were uh, eating their salad or carrots or whatever they were having at lunchtime. The chap might have just been for Joe Clark perhaps to apply a little bit of pressure to Josh Baker. That was a nice clean strike from Clark and the ball is uh, making its way slowly back. I'm sure the umpire Ben Debenham will have a little look. He will. 110 for two. It will have uh, clattered around amongst the seating below us somewhere. There's um, a picture of the Kookaburra alongside the Next Duke. Next ball sees Clark come again and that's skimmed along the ground. A little bit like the old uh, Barnes Wallace bouncing bomb. It was hit very, very hard indeed. It would have taken Josh Baker's hand off had he uh, been able to get anywhere near it. And a uh, couple of bounces. Gosh, that went quickly, didn't it? A couple of bounces over the rope for 414 for two. Just have a look in a sec. There's one ball left, Frank. Yeah, Whatever it just is. out of interest. I found an old tweet with a picture of the Kookaburra alongside the Duke. 14 for two. Next ball cut away. This time there'll be a single. So uh, Joe Clark will keep strike 115 for two he's on to 36 we've had 34 overs in the inning so since lunch four overs have brought 32 runs Ben Slater 50 Joe Clark 36 yeah I thought those uh, successive drives that Clark played off Baker might just kind of kick start him and, and it has done exactly that really and he's decided that uh, circumspection was for the morning session and this afternoon it's more like uh, the old Joe Clark and he's raced to 36 in, in no time. He was, what was he on, 16 at lunch? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, impressive from Joe Clark. And yep. he's kept the strike, as you say. Takes guard now against Leach from the Stuart Broad end over the wicket. Bustles in, as usual, bowls, and that one's uh, just back of a length. Clark on the back foot plays it out defensively on the onside and Adam Hose who's in that uh, very straightish catching position just off the cut strip that silly mid on does the fielding got to give him his full name the Isle of Wight Danny uh, Adam Hose I, I can't I can never watch him and uh, and Danny Briggs without throwing in an Isle of Wight reference good to have them in the county game still of course which now is Leach comes in bowls and that's short and wide and Clark he is in the mood now. It's almost as though he's changed gear and he's on the back foot and he just thumps that away through extra cover. And, uh, well, we're in for a treat if Joe Clark's in the mood because uh, there aren't many better batsmen to watch in the country than him when he's going. Got 100 last week and he's come out after lunch here and he looks an entirely different player from the one who was uh, out there this morning. And that's a worry, I would think, mm. for... Brett Dolivera and the Worcestershire coaching staff had a tidy morning, but they've uh, begun the afternoon session rather sloppily. Leach is into Clark again now, and that's better from Leach, much straighter. And Clark is forward, pushes out on the offside. Rob Jones fields at extra cover. 
Uh, busy press box downstairs. Frank popped down and got a, uh, a cuppa, as you did during the luncheon interval. Lots and lots and lots of interest in this game. Lots of people down there. Managed to uh, uh, get my fishing rod out and, uh, and, and land a volunteer to come up and join us for half an hour. James Coyne's here from the uh, Cricketer. Glad to have you with us, James. We'll bring you in in just a second. Um, see what's uh, what's going down, as the kids say at the Cricketer. Leach again bowls, and there's more runs for Clark. Just to push this time on the offside. He's timed it nicely. Libby's in pursuit. They've taken two. They're coming back for three. Good running again by these two. They have to hurry, but uh, Slater is home. Clark motoring along now has gone to 43. He's really in the mood since the lunch interval, and it's 122 for two. Worcestershire need to do something about this. 39 runs conceded since lunch in the blink of an eye really and the whole mood has changed out there they need a wicket actually they do indeed yeah thanks for popping up james uh, james uh, what's the morning uh, unfold before us even stevens at lunch yeah thanks for having me yeah it's uh, it's certainly an interesting game it's a little bit different with this kookaburra ball isn't it it's, yeah. the, the dynamic is slightly different you know two spinners on before lunch mm. leech to complete the over, balls to, uh, not to complete the over, fifth ball, the beg your pardon, balls to Slater, defends out on the offside. I was just saying, James, I mm. pulled up a tweet from last year when we were talking about the Kookaburra and the Duke, trying to actually describe the difference in the seam. It's not so much the number of, st well, it's not so much the number of stitches as the thickness of the stitching on the Duke. Can you retweet that, Frank, so everybody yeah, can see it? Yeah, I'll Frank do that. Watson, 58, yeah. um, and everybody can have a little look at and that. And it's, uh, and the, and the, 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 the stitching feels very different in your hand on the kookaburra. Mm. Leach round the wicket. Bowls. Slater pushes out on the offside. There's no run end of the over. 122 for two. If what we saw last week all up and down the country is anything to go by this is the session isn't it for the batting side where you really want to fill your boots it I was think. it were you at a game last week i wasn't this is my first day right. I was, well i was at a game but it was at desert springs in spain but oh, uh, but, oh yeah <laughs> sorry i'll just pick that up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah um no it's it's very very interesting because i i think most most bowlers um out there probably would prefer the duke's ball most seen bowlers but it's funny there's the odd one apparently sam cook like likes the kookaburra because it feels lighter in the hand and i suppose to George Scrimshaw of North Hans the other day and he said that he likes the, the feel of the kookaburra as well so it, you know it's not universal but you know it, it's pretty clear that you know we've got, we've got a different yeah. type of cricket here today we haven't got three slips in for, for Joe Leach or something have we right now Be an update for Radio Nottingham in just a second and more from Frank Watson and James Coyne um, Worcester have found themselves in a bit of a pickle at the moment. I'll come back to that in a second. Josh Baker's going to continue. Rapid start to the afternoon session, Lisa, for Nottinghamshire. They're now 122 for two, which means they've added 39 runs in just five overs since lunch. Joe Clark on the offensive. He's rocketed to 43. Ben Slater on 50. Nottinghamshire won the toss and battered. 122 for two. So that's a quick update for BBC Radio Nottingham. There's fielders going here, there and everywhere. It's like they're playing um, musical chairs at the moment as Brett D'Olivier and his bowler just try and get the right sort of field to contain Clark, which is never easy. But uh, two are now out on the leg side, mid on and mid off, maybe a yard or two deeper. But if Clark takes the aerial route as he did in the previous over um, they're not back far enough yet I know you were on the way up I don't know if you saw the six but Clark came straight down the track to him lifted him for six yeah it was a strong shot wasn't it very aggressive 122 for two next ball sent by Baker and here he comes again and there it goes again that one has uh, got a first class stamp on it as it goes deep into the uh, lower tier of the Radcliffe Road stand thrown back by uh, a Nottinghamshire supporter wearing an England cap um, a good uh, 15 or 20 rows back downstairs and Clark quick as a flash he was 16 not out at lunch as uh, Frank was just saying now 49 not out he's made a bit of a mess of Baker's figures as well none for 42 in the nine yeah I mean we're playing quite far over on the square aren't we and that boundary looks quite a bit shorter than it normally is when you're playing a championship game here so yeah he's targeting that clearly here comes Baker looking for a response this is uh, just nudged by Clark just biding his time 128 for two. 
But um, Brett D'Oliveira certainly must be hoping that uh, Clark makes a full shot. As that is toil and trouble against his former county in the past. I remember the first time he went back to New Road, he uh, got a duck. But on this occasion, here at Trent Bridge, he gets a half century, 100 last week in the first innings against Essex. 50 here from 88 balls, five fours and two sixes. Lunch, he was something like 16 off 72 balls, so he's uh, really, really gone through. Uh, from 16 to 50 in double quick time, it's 129 for two. Yeah, I think Notts fans will be happy to see that he ground through that early mm. period, actually, because there have been times when he hasn't quite done that, have they? Two balls left. Dave Bracegirl, Frank Watson and James Coyne from the cricketer. Watching on here is now uh, oh. Ben Slater comes and has a huge slice of luck. It's not really Slater's game to come dancing down the track, and he did so, came up pace or two out of his crease and has inside edged it past his stumps, past Gareth Roderick and will get a fortunate three. Was that a nick or was it a... There's no signal from the umpire. Yeah, I, I think, think he got bat on it. Um, 132 for two. Um, when I was a little and first of all, I, used to, I was always into be cricket obviously and, uh, and other sport, well, into my music. So my wall was full of posters of... Bowie and Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton and Peter Gabriel and Chuck Berry and then a little later uh, we had the Debbie Harry phase of course as everybody did. Next ball is uh, dropped on the leg side and there's no run. I'll get them a point in a second because it's the end of the over. I'd like to think youngsters now up and down the country, all over the country, the cricket lovers, their bedroom wall has got a poster of the, from this month's cricketer on the wall, James. It's poster month, it's the cricketer. Get your cricketer get your free poster well it's the wall chart isn't it with, with all the fixtures on that's the, that's that's the one that's the one you want in the April issue and it's still, still out still available so go out to your local WH Smith or go online and get hold of it um, mention of Peter Gabriel there as a, as a classic Genesis <laughs> fan uh, Dave I'm very happy to hear that so. fantastic it was the one where he had I don't know a, a, a headpiece on the a sunflower or a daisy oh, or, right. or some such. I think I think it was. Uh, I don't know if it's still available. Sounds magazine, but they always used to be the the, the centrefold. You know, you used to have to carefully un uh, un unpick the um, the clips in the middle, um, just so they didn't mark, ruin the poster. But uh, yeah. Joe Leach round the wicket bowls to <laughs> Slater, who pushes out on the offside. I was just going to say, I think his bandmates were a bit annoying when he dressed up in all those costumes, <laughs> yeah, and they realised yeah. they got him on the front page of Melody Makers. Yeah. So they, yeah. Suddenly they weren't so upset. <laughs> it was on your wall, Frank. Yeah, not not dissimilar, I would say, from some of the people that you've uh, that you've mentioned. Um, yeah, so I was I'm a Peter Gabriel fan. Um, I was I was slightly. Slightly different. I was I was a big Barry fan. Saw the Ziggy Stardust tour. Leach round the wicket. Ball suits later. It pushes out on the onside. And no runners. Baker fields. But um, yeah, I was I was just recalling the other day actually how great it was to be able to go and see really you know big important bands in quite small venues. I was a I grew up in in Birmingham and went to. The Odeon's a sort of 300-seat cinema, and yet you, I saw Roxy Music and Cockney Rebel and, you know, various Hall & Oates mm. and all sorts of characters there in an intimate venue. Fantastic. Leech round the wicket, bowls and Slater drives. Sort of thickish outside edge, Libby Fields at cover. So different from the arena now where yeah. you go and you might, you know, you're miles <laughs> away and you're watching them on a screen, aren't you? Having bought your ticket two and a half years yeah, in advance. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it was uh, it was a great time I think, and um, Thin Lizzy at, and David Bowie at the Town Hall in Birmingham quite remarkable evenings that I remember so well. Yeah, you go back yeah. and look at some of the classic sort of you know, gig lists of these bands, and yeah. it's staggering how some of the you know they played all over, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Leech. In modern times, round the wicket, balls to Slater. <laughs> Slater works it to mid-wicket again, Baker fields. It's really interesting what's happened since lunch in this game because Slater, who was uh, the pick of the batters this morning, was on 40 at lunch. He's added just 13 since then. But Joe Clark has absolutely set off since lunch. Success, well, two boundaries in the second over after lunch from Baker. Cover drives that both went to the the rope and it almost seems that it just ticked him into the next 
gear and he's gone for it since then. Leach balls to Slater, defends out on the offside, hose fields, no run. And he's uh, absolutely put his foot on the accelerator, as it were, and he's been breathtaking since lunch. Hit Baker for two sixes, raced to his 50, and now you look at it, his 50 has come off. 80 what was it 88 balls Slater's actually came off 103 balls and yet at that point we would have said that Slater had been the dominant batsman mm. such is Joe Clark's ability to dominate when he gets in the mood Leach round the wicket bowls to Slater who is again watchful pushes out on the offside good over from Joe Leach certainly the tidiest since the break and at the uh, at the end of it, Worcestershire, uh, I beg your pardon, Nottinghamshire, off 37 overs, are 132 for two. The men out this morning, Hamid 11 and Duckett for nine. But this partnership is now worth 98 and Worcestershire need to break it. Or they could be looking at uh, a pretty dismal afternoon. Adam Finch coming into the attack. He is indeed. James Coyne is with us from the Cricketer magazine. I, I guess there's a lot, of, a lot of pride and satisfaction in the monthly magazine coming out, but no sooner has it come out, you've got to start again. Yeah, and obviously... Uh there's obviously a website as well which we, we put yep. a lot of effort and time into and all our reporters are the out the award winning website yeah, well, six years in a row so there you go um, yeah we're, we're all out and about this week covering different games as much as we can so um, yeah please have a look at that as well everybody if you're, if you're online uh, yeah and check out what we're doing we're doing a lot of reporting interviewing um, investigate, investigative stuff, loads of things. So, and that's what the cricketer.com. That's the cricketer.com, yeah. And um, yeah, it's and we're all sort of got a bit of an eye on what this Cookerborough ball is doing at the moment. 132 for two. As Adam Finch, lengthy approach comes in right on, briskish, bowls a ball on the pads of Joe Clark, the right-hander turns it down to long leg. They'll all swap over now for the lefty. So, Clark is 51, Slater 53. Um, <laughs> It must be a, a a tremendous responsibility for those charged with looking after the cricketer in that, I guess, like Wisden, it's been around forever. Mm. And everybody knows it. You think of um, cricket in this country, um, as well as getting the sounds for me, musical posters back in the day. I've got, you know, I've got all the, all the cricketers, again, the monthly magazine. Um, 133 for two, next ball is uh, pushed into the offside and uh, and, and I used to get the old um, you, you'll have seen them now but way before you were born the green binders that they used to have yeah, with the right. uh, the gold embossed cricketer playing his, uh, his elegant defensive shot on yeah no absolutely you know it's a, it's a heritage publication and it's you know we in 1921 was when it started and obviously 2021 we had our big centenary mm. celebration so uh, the sort of scale of it and the and the magnitude of it was sort of rammed home when we were doing that really so yes you do feel that when you're putting it together Finch round the wicket to the left-handed Slater turns this off his hips, cry of wait, and there's no run. And all the great editors down the years, you know, your Swanton, CMJ, you know, these mm. great figures in the game. So, you, yeah, you, you sort of feel you have to try and live up to that that sort of uh, heritage, really. A new yourself, office-based or, or round the country, or, or how does it work? Well... Since since COVID, we're all we're all sort of based at home really, but mm. I mean, we do go in uh, every now and again to sort of have meetings and what have you. But yeah, we're all out and about making the most of our sort of uh, uh, regional spots, I suppose, and trying to cover county cricket as best we can. Finch balls again, short, pulled short. away by Slater onto the leg side, fielder out there who flung himself at it. Who's that, Frank? Can Smith, you see? I think Nathan Smith, the Kiwi. We've got the first two wickets this morning. It's uh, it's four runs, but. Just fancy that might have been in the air. He uh, flung himself at it, couldn't get there. And we've got the century partnership between Slater and Clark. We saw three of those last week, one on the uh, first day, one on the second day, one on the third day, and, of course, on the fourth day. Not between them couldn't get 100 bowled out for 80. But this has been a very good stuff from this pair. They, uh, they complement each other nicely. It must be a, a bit of a nightmare for opposition attacks. One a left-hander, one a right-hander, of course. But... Joe Clark, as we've seen since lunch, he, he's not prepared to let anything um, go to waste. If there's a ball he can feed on, he'll uh, he'll try and tuck in. And Slate has played very nicely indeed in this innings. Yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to know what, wh whether there's any any prospect of them getting any reverse swing later on, because that's one of the reasons for bringing in this 
kookaburra ball is to try and encourage the seamers to bowl with a reverse swing but I don't know in this early in the year with all the rain we've had I don't know how much of that there's going to be Andy says Dave have, did you receive my pre-lunch uh, pre message I don't know Andy I've got hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of them um, send it again mate I'll, I'll look out for it down the leg side this one's tickled down to long leg for a single by Slater uh, many thanks to everybody that has taken the trouble to get in touch today uh, on the old twittery thing x thing whatever you want to call it at brace cricket and at frank watson 58 are you on that as well i'm afraid you have to be these days go on then go on then you've got to be on there as well yeah at coin james yeah i'm afraid i'm on there i was going to ask you dave how i mean how surprised were you to see um you know win the toss and bat doesn't happen them all that often at trent bridge does it, it used wicket i don't know if anybody's told you that this is yeah. the same wicket that um they played the Essex game on last week as uh, Adam Finch comes in, passed on by Debon and bowls. Down the leg side, tickled and caught. Just a fine tickle, or was it off the pad? It was off the pad. They did me there, I have to admit. There was an initial cry of catch, and it was a wonderful take from Roderick. There was a definite deflection. Joe Clark stands there, and the umpire calls over. 138 for two. Thought he'd got that. Holder looked interested, didn't he, at yeah. first slip, but yeah. Yeah. Um, apologies, folks. 138 for two. Seemed like a, a real intent to play it down the leg side, and it was a very, very good take indeed from uh, Kareth Roderick. Sorry, what were we talking about? No, I was just saying the toss. <laughs> I mean, uh, I yes. Um, use wicket, I suppose. Not going in with two spinners. I guess that might be the, yep. the thinking. The way the um, the way the match played out last week. I guess they're taking a little bit from that and thinking if they've got Worcestershire batting. Uh, in the fourth innings on this one, it, uh, it might benefit Knots as it uh, as it benefited Essex last week. Interestingly, on the Essex one, I haven't mentioned it yet today. I was having a look at all the scorecards at lunch. Sam Cook not playing for Essex. Leach balls to Slater, pushes up to mid on. Yeah, we were trying no to work run. out why that was actually. Whether it's rotation. It must be an injury. Surely. Um, Adam Rossington's not playing. He did break a finger here, so we knew he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't be playing. But uh, Aaron Beard in for Sam Cook. Yeah, you'd imagine. Uh, what well, we'll find out, I'm sure, personal reasons or injury or or rotation depends what it is. But Sam Cook not playing, having <laughs> having taken a hat trick here and uh, and ten wickets. Yeah. Joe Leach to continue, still looking for his first wicket of this innings. Moves in towards us, bowls, and Slater just steers down on the offside. Clark calls him through for a quick single. He goes to 59, 139 for two. Just going back to the cricketer, I, um, I began my cricket commentating in 1988 way back in the days of cricket call mm. and uh, of course Worcestershire won the championship that year and uh, they were quite high profile with the likes of Botham and Dilly etc. Phil Newport had a fantastic season and I uh, was making my way in the uh, the cricket journalism world that year, Leach in bowls, Clark defence, no run, and I uh, I remember being absolutely thrilled when I had a piece published in the Cricketer, which I've still got on Phil Newport, and I had a couple more published over the next year or two. You know, sort of full pages, and just thinking, wow, that's a real feather in the cap to get something in the Cricketer, and I still got copies of them, and uh, they're yeah, very special, fantastic, yeah, top right. magazine, it really is. I don't, I mean it. The others have come and gone, haven't they? Cricket World and Wisdom Cricket Monthly and so on. But the cricket has been there the whole time, really, I think. Leach again over the wicket. Bowls. Clark defends. Very watchfully there forward to this. No run. There was one that I... <laughs> I was the Nottinghamshire correspondent for JM96. I don't oh, know yeah. Johnny Miller, 96, <laughs> not out. That's right. Yeah, that was it, wasn't it? Johnny Miller, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Short-lived. Must confess, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, about. It, was a, it didn't last long, but yeah, yeah, I remember yeah it was. 96 not out, wasn't it? It yeah. was, was the asterisk alongside yeah, the 96. That's right. It's, if, on Cricket Call, it's amazing how many commentators actually began. It there. is. Yeah, radio yeah. DJs as well yeah. began on there. Yeah. Leach in, balls. And this one's tucked away on the onside by Clark for a single. Yeah, I did, yeah, the, uh, yeah, I did the football version, the club uh, call. Yeah, I did that yeah. in the winter for Hereford yeah. United. Clark goes to 52, 140 for two in the 58th over. Um, yeah, Neil Manthorpe, who's gone on to great things in South Africa, actually missed out on the Worcestershire job, which was given to me. But then they said, well, you can do Warwickshire if you want to. And he lived in Droitwich at the time, so he took the Warwickshire job. 
and uh, we were quite close friends for all the years we were doing cricket call and then when it finished he went out to South Africa and uh, well he's become the premier South African cricket journalist really in many ways he's fantastic he leaps round the wicket bowls to uh, Slater who pushes up to mid on yeah. no run. we had a reunion last year at Lords of uh, those those of us that are still on this earth gathered not all of us but at Lords one day last year and it was uh, it was super quite a few have, uh, have passed away um, sadly but uh, it was a great opportunity and um, I will always remember how lucky I was to get into it 140 for two after 50 Sorry, after 39 over, 57 left in the day. Good stuff, Frank. More from Frank Watson in a second. Just quickly, whilst one or two of the players are um, just taking a drink. Essex 169 for two at Chelmsford against Kent, Elgar and Cox, who put on 100 here in the first innings, have done the same again there. Hampshire 116 for three at the Utility Bowl, as we've got to call it now, against Lancashire. Uh, Somerset 171 for one against Surrey at the Oval, warming up nicely to play knots next week at Taunton. And Warwickshire, Warwickshire, 193 without loss. Alex Davis, 108 not out. Rob Yates, 78 not out. That's your Division 1 scores. We'll give you Division 2 in uh, the fullness of time. I don't think they're ready to start, are they? So Glamorgan, 91 for 2 against Derbyshire. Yorkshire, 143 for 5 against Gloucestershire. Leicestershire, 153 for 4 against Sussex. And Northampton, 123 for 1 against Middlesex, so you're up to speed. What we can say is uh, what a delight and a change it is to have play in all nine matches in the county championship round two. A bit less so, windy than last week yeah. as well. It's also great that everybody's playing as well. I hate those weeks when there's only two games in Division 1 and two in Division 2 or whatever. I know it's you know, to give everybody uh, a little bit of time off and we will run into things like that, but uh, to have all 18 playing at the moment is great. Um, change of uh, attack maybe here. Because, well, it's still Finch, but we've got three out on the leg side. Um, just in case Joe Clark tries to take on the, uh, the bumper. First ball is pitched up though and played to Leach at mid on there's uh, a long leg a deep backward square and a player just in front of square leg as well just in case Clark takes the aerial route I mean I hope I'm not over egging this slightly but I don't think you'd see this with a in a, no, a Duke's ball right. game with three yeah. men back on the hook I just don't think you'd see it so it, it is interesting at very at the very least <coughs> yeah Finch into his seventh over Fairly economical, none for 19 so far. Here he comes, lengthening his stride and bowls. Oh, that one was short, but certainly Clark's not going to be able to pull that down. Long legs throws. It's, it was um, well outside off stump. It's one of those situations, isn't it? Uh, when it when it flattens out with the Duke on day three or something, you see you see captains trying to be imaginative and and having two catches on the offside or yeah. whatever it might be, and start trying to make things happen, but trying to create artificial pressure if you like in this way on day one is is very unusual isn't it it is lots have scored 57 runs in 40 minutes here as uh, the next ball is uh, just cut out of the reach of the diving holder at slip he's the sole slipper holder and he's sort of in no man's land somewhere round about uh, second slip but he flung himself to his right it was in the air couldn't get there and it's four runs to clark that went a little closer to the fielder than Joe Clark would have wanted. Yeah, and it's pretty clear here that, that uh, Finch is sort of seen as Worcestershire's, I hate to use the term, but enforcer. Mm. That he's going to be the one that's going to be asked to bang it in, a la Stuart Broad a few years back for, for England. He's got the same sort of physique and build as Alan Richardson, his, his head coach, Frank. Can you see that? Mm, no, he yeah, says. No, I think that's a fair point, but uh, I mean, quite a different... Yeah, um, yeah. Different sort of action, really. Of but it's, it's, it, I, it, it's it, I just going back to what James has said. I mean, this is this is weird to see on day one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Second session, first forty overs with the ball. Partnership worth 110. We've got a man at third man now. Down the leg side again. Cries of catch as this is spooned down the leg side again. We'll have a look at umpire Debenham. Going to tap his knee, is he? No. So uh, some bat involved. 145 for two. But then again, you know, when they brought this in, this is probably the sort of thing they were thinking about, you know, in terms of the sort of different cricket that you might want to encourage English players to play, I suppose. It all depends on taste, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, I just think first 40 overs, 
you would be surprised. You know, you'd, ninety percent of your coaches would say we're still looking at the top of off, yeah. and we're not anymore. Slater's on fifty nine. The left hander faces Finch now and drives into the off uh, into the leg side for a single. We we're talking about this this morning, uh, James. You talked to, to people, to coaches, and you, you hear journos. Uh, writing it down. We're playing with a kookaburra ball to give people experience for when they go and play in the ashes down under. It's nonsense, isn't it? It's an absolute nonsense. How many of these players are going to be worrying about facing Australia down in the ashes in one year, five years, nine years? What good is this practice? Uh, this is practice for that. Absolutely none whatsoever. 146 for two. We've Next nailed the colours of the mask there. <laughs> well, yeah, no, good. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the other thing is we're having a competition here mm. where in Division 1 not everybody plays everybody twice, so there's yeah. uh, there's that disparity, and we're playing with two different balls. I mean, it, it's a nonsense. Yeah, I suppose they would say that they're, you know, there are players in this game who will hope to go on and play that level. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose with all, as with all experiments, you, you don't know quite how it's going to work out, and you've got to just throw it in there for a while, but... I. I guess a lot of people don't like the idea of it being used as an experiment, which is fair enough. Um, Andy's come back. He did ask me, uh, was I in? Uh, was I? Um, I did get his message before lunch. He said, right, today is the 20th anniversary of one of the greatest individual cricketing achievements of all time. Brian Lara's 400 not out at the Antigua Recreation Ground versus England. Leach to Slater, pushed up the ground, no run. As Max Boyce would say, I know because I was there. Apologies uh, to all our Welsh friends. Such a thrill, the atmosphere in Chicky's disco stand was something else. Um, and Dave, is that right? Will Young is available for the Taunton match next week following his wedding. Yep, that's what we understand. He's going to be available for knots from week three because he's, uh, he's tied the knot um, in the last few days. Funny you mentioned the Lara story because Shil Berry wrote a piece on that in the Telegraph. Uh, might even be today. I read it on the way up. Leach that. in again, ball, Slater defends, no run. And Shil was saying that it was so nailed on that Lara was going to score 400. Um, he'd sort of, they'd sort of given up on the idea of winning the game and it was all about him just scoring the 400. <laughs> so, so yeah, two sides to that story maybe. Just going back to um, what we're watching here though, it is, it is, you know, experiment or not. Um, I, I, and I recognise that captains and coaches will have talked at lunch and so on about how best to go about things just break off as Leach comes in again and Slater is on the back foot defending and there's no run but you know the conventional wisdom will tell you that the best way to get batsmen out generally is to bowl at the top of off stump um, and certainly not to move away from that plan until You've really exhausted all possibilities, but to see these sort of fields being set this early just tells you that they're not really expecting this ball to deviate a great deal off the surface. Yeah. Leach again around the wicket bowls, and Slater just clips this one down to long leg for a single. Goes to 61, 147 for two. I mean, I suppose there have been times when England has sort of done the short ball barrage, there's been times when I thought they've gone to it too soon, but that's yeah. often they've been bowling with a Duke, so maybe that's a bit different, but mm. this is slightly different, I guess. Yeah, it is, but, you know, well, it's, this surface looks very dry, doesn't it? Despite the fact that it's, you know, it's been, it's, it's April and it's been used before, it, it's not offering a lot of assistance at all, and they've very early looked to try and make something happen in a kind of unconventional way. Leach balls again and Clark is on the back foot pushing up to mid-off. There's a feel about it, there's a feel of a sort of, you know, they've been out there for five or six hours already and they haven't, they've only been out there for just over 40 overs. Now you make a very good point, That's, we're still quite early in the piece here, you know, we're only 40 overs in. But uh, these two look comfortable, although Slater's, Slater's been fairly circumspect since lunch. Clark's been the man who's uh, caught the eye, as he so often does. Leach into him now over the wicket bowls, and he's forward, pushing defensively out on the offside. And there's no run end of the over. It's interesting as well, having said the pitch is very dry, to see that uh, the bowlers' approaches are leaving. I mean, some of those footmarks will be there from last week as well when it was wetter, but. Uh, 
they're, they're making quite big indentations into the ground, which suggests there's quite a bit of moisture in the outfield, but the square itself looks very dry mm -hmm. indeed. It's another reason why Knots won't want to bat last, or yeah. wouldn't have wanted to bat last when they won the tour. I mean, I suppose praise to them for doing something a bit different. You know, the easy thing to mm. do would be produce a mm. fresh wicket, yeah. pick four seamers, yeah. and do it the conventional way, but they're trying to do it a bit differently. Yeah. Going to be Finch to continue. Snooker maximum on the board, one four seven. <laughs> We're nearly at uh, crucible time, aren't we? Next uh, delivery sent down and defended. Uh, apologies for those of you that have sent messages in and we've not got round to them. Andy Seston before lunch uh, said, good morning, Dave, following on the live stream. Apologies, Andy. Um, again, there's loads that have... Uh, Come in, uh, Philip the bookman is uh, is with us. Um, all the joys of retiring in rural France. I can sit and watch the, the live stream. Philip the bookman. Hope you're enjoying your day, mate. By the sound of it, you are. This is short, and Slater has pulled this one away. He's got underneath that, and Ben Slater now lifts a uh, six away on that short leg side into the Fox Road stand. I think it clattered into the brickwork there, and has got to be retrieved it might just actually have disappeared in that little gap between the Fox Road stand and the Larwood and Vos stand but uh, a vigorous pull from Slater who moves to 67 153 for two 150 up of course in the process and Slater was obviously aware that Joe Clark was closing in on his individual score and has uh, now pulled away again yeah that might have worried a couple of punters out mm. having a pint in the Larwood and Vos behind there magnificent shot was um, a lot of correspondence about uh, Tim Jones' book 61 for one. Thanks for that. Next ball is pushed into the offside. Uh, no run. Nice enough afternoon. Perhaps still need your top coat on out there, but uh, compared to what we had for the first round of matches, it's uh, very nice. The Blighter of Blighty says, Dave, I've been and renewed my membership. Flew back from Tenerife last night. It's 23 degrees cooler here. Wouldn't miss it for anything. Um, next ball pushed away on the leg side. Um, thanks for renewing your membership. Blighter of Blighty, hope you enjoyed your short break in Tenerife. We didn't ask what you, what you were doing in... Was it Desert Springs, Palm Springs? Desert Springs, <laughs> sadly not Palm Springs, no. No, no Desert Springs, fantastic facility. No, we, uh, the cricketer runs a schools tournament out there every year, so um, I was, it was my pleasure to be asked to go and uh, help with that this year. Just as you went there for pre-season. Yeah, there's quite a few counties have gone out there now. I, I can see why, you know, it's, it's uh, pretty much guaranteed weather, and uh, no, it's good facilities there now. Finch into his eighth over, bowls, and Slater drops it on the leg side, no run. There's a remarkable lack of balls going past the bat, isn't there? Yes. Considering, you know, uh, w w half a dozen player misses this morning when the bounce as much as anything did it, I think, from that far end. But uh, these two look very comfortable at the moment. Sam Marshall wondering where Will Young will feature in the, uh, in the top order next week against Somerset. Um, that's a good one, Sam. He will play, that's for sure. So a little bit of pressure on those that have got the shirts this week to uh, make a contribution. This one turned away behind square by Slater. Moves on to 68 at the end of that over Nottinghamshire. 154 for two here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester. And uh, available on the live stream via Trent Bridge Live. Thanks very much to uh, Aaron and Kirsty for looking after things um, in that department and uh, to our camera crew we've got Spence on the roof over at the far side above the pavilion we've got Stan and Lewis out there around the ground with the cameras as well bringing you the pictures one of which is zooming in right now on the uh, very impressive figure of a very impressive cricketer Jason Holder who's coming into the attack yeah, I, was, I thought it was a matter of time before he came back on uh, they just need to try and control this run rate somehow don't they it's funny. I, the first time I think I saw him, he was he, he's the bowler. If you ever watched the, uh, the uh, Fire in Babylon film, he's the young lad in the cane field at the start of the film who sort of yeah. sends the ball down as a sort of. Is uh, he? I think he is. And yeah, I don't know how old he was at the time, but uh, yeah, amazing to think he's here now and uh, with the pedigree he has behind him. 
Yes, on Monday when I uh, went off air, I mentioned it was Franklin Stevenson's birthday and I intended to get in touch with Frankie that night. Holder in, bowls, first ball of his second spell outside the off stump, left alone by Slater. Uh, we, uh, we exchanged messages a few times. He sends, uh, <laughs> in fact, I'll try and find it, he sends his love to all his uh, Nottinghamshire friends and uh, supporters. Um, Monday hit retirement age. Um, he asked how Knotts had got on that day. I'll try and find it for you in a second. I had to tell him they bowled out for 80. Um, now I've retired, Dave. I've got so much time on my hands. Can not, do Knotts want to retire? Uh, I'll come back. Holder again bowls. Left alone again by Slater. Do Knotts want me to come over and give them all some motivational speeches, he says. So that's, uh, that's Franklin Stevenson. Well, I'll be over in the summer to catch up with everybody, as he usually is. I've preached the converted here, but some, I was having a conversation with someone the other day and he said that he reckoned that Franklin Stevenson was the greatest all round and never to yeah. play test cricket. Yeah. So, but I'm preached the converted, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't duck the slower ball. You know that one, Dave? That's what they always used to say about do Franklin. Indeed. Don't duck the slower ball, and if you did... He could look very, very silly indeed. There's Holder around the wicket again, left alone outside the off stump by Slater, and there's no run. 154 for two. His book was good, wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> it's a, one of the best I've ever read. <laughs> That's why I said preacher the converted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Will Young. He, he can, Will Young um, will be will be. His third county, wasn't it? Was it North? He played, started at Durham, didn't he? Did he play a bit for oh, North? Oh, we had him North last year. Last year. Oh, yeah, his year. second time. Yeah. He scored a century on debut yeah. at the Oval. Comes from, uh, comes from New Plymouth in the North Island of New Zealand, Taranaki. There's whole, uh, Holder Bowles outside the off stump. This one a uh, little bit fuller, and Slater just squeezes it out on the offside into the covers. First time I met him was at the Oval first game he scored a century and interviewed him afterwards you know but it's been a nonsense for BBC Radio Nottingham chatted about his ton and then at the end I didn't know I just I just threw a punt in there I didn't even know uh, and then I, I said and, and at the end finally what's your favourite Will Young song I expected him to give me a um, a little bit of a quizzical look and you know well, who's this idiot I've no idea what you're talking about <laughs> Holder again Bowls. Slater drives into the covers. Smithfield, no run. He said, uh, I've had that done on me before. I went to Durham last year and they have a, a little bit of an initiation song in the in the dressing room. So they said, you've got to sing a song. Uh, what are you going to sing for us? He says, and I'd learned all the words to, um, was it, I think I'm going to leave right leave now. Leave right now. <laughs> he said, I just sat uh, stood up and sung it all to them, which which was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, answer. when he first signed uh, for North Ants, I did crack uh, the line uh, that, uh, uh, you know, when, when he's when, out, yeah. When, when the signing was announced, that they thought it was a gig with the announced at the ground, you know, with all the music concerts you get these days. Jason Holder around the wicket, bowls again. Slater on the back foot this time, looking to cut, but uh, might have just taken the pace off that one holder and he didn't time it, just chopped it into the ground. Runs out on the offside, no run. 154 for two knots, and that's uh, of 43 overs. At lunch, it was 83 for two, so they've raced ahead. Since then, really, mainly thanks to Joe Clark, 57 not out of 101 balls. And Ben Slater, the junior partner since the interval, he's 68 not out of 136 balls. Yes, it's always a worry leaving me to do the maths, but I think they've added 71 in 13 overs since lunch. So, uh, how many is that per over, James? Oh, no, you're right. no, <laughs> that's why I've gone into writing and not statistics. But um, uh, no, Will Young is a. Uh, uh, Calmly changing the subject. Will Young, uh, good, good signing that because I think he's going to play Blast as well, isn't he? So yeah. that's a good canny signing, I think. Yeah, Dylan Pennington's obviously just been for a net. He's returning from the indoor nets as uh, this next one from Finch is bowled just short of a length, pulled away by Joe Clark, 155 for two. So apart from coming up here and having a, yeah, a natter, becoming a um, uh, a rose between us two thorns. What have you got to do today then? Are you, are you doing a writing piece for the uh, for the website? Are you yeah. conjuring something up for the monthly magazine? Well, we, yeah. So I mean, a bit of everything really. We we we're sort of trying to get things done for next week's deadline, and then uh, yeah, I'm writing a pe colour piece for today's uh, website. And so yeah, a mixture of different things really. This Finch around the wicket again and tucks Slater up and it's defended so where are we April so uh, when's, the, when's the May one out when? oh uh, well it'll be out in about um, about two weeks time mm. now so yeah two weeks today I think so yeah it's an exciting time it comes thick and fast 
so much cricket. But uh, no, it's, it's a great time of year. You know, the championship owns the window, as it were. So it's it's great. I think thank you from uh, all cricket lovers up and down the country for for keeping it going and uh, and keeping the standards up. It's been a great read for much of my lifetime. Next ball, nice and full, driven back to Adam Finch. 155 for two because it's a, it's a different world we're in now if i want to see what the basin reserve looks like in new zealand i can just click on something and see it but um you know as a as a youngster when i first saw the cricketer in the, in the 60s and early 70s and what have you, it was pictures like that especially some of the the cover pictures um you know on the on the front cover and you know, God, i'd love to go there one day or there one day or or whatever i can remember um you know that first this is pushed into the offside the first photos we saw of the cricket grounds in the desert you know charger and the first time we saw um, cricket grounds with floodlights and whatever they were all in the in the cricketer that's right well we st you know and, and i suppose we're very lucky now because you know so much photography now we can make it look probably ever mm. more beautiful than it's ever been the magazine you know because there's so much choice in terms of photography and and yeah so it, we're, we're in so much breadth of cricket around the world Finch again, bowling to Slater, works this onto the leg side, takes a single, one more, 156 for two. Do you play yourself? Uh, I do, um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm having to rein it back in a bit this year, um, I'm, I've got various other things going on, but uh, uh, with a young family and what have you, but no, mm. I, do, I do play, uh, not particularly well, I'm sort of second, third, 11 standard. Where's that at, what part of the world uh, is that? Bedfordshire, so um, Flittick is my local club mm. I've been playing for, and a bit of bit of 40 club thrown in there as well so well, yeah. flitwick as i heard on the um on, on the uh, travel headlines on the radio the other day it does make an appearance in harry potter somewhere i think flitwick so. flitwick yeah i believe so i, I wouldn't know there's one area <laughs> i won't have been found as uh, clark helps us down the leg side 157 for two um now if they're not uh, either kicking a football or hitting a cricket ball. I'm not likely to have uh, read all about it. On 57 for two. Um, we'll let you get in the queue for your uh, scones and jam and cream, which uh, they'll be um, downstairs in the press room before uh, before too long. Great to have James Coyne with us today, and I'm sure during the course of the season we're going to pop up and say hello when he's, uh, when he's on the ground. Lovely stuff from, uh, from James. Um, there are. We are promised that uh, perhaps one or two more people might pop in and, uh, and say hello uh, to myself and to Frank Watson. Jason Holder will carry on from the Stuart Broad end, pavilion end of the ground here at uh, Trent Bridge. He's been uh, fairly lightly worked so far. The big man just starting his sixth over. Five overs, three maidens, no wicket for five so far. Coming into ball to Clark. And Clark is forward, pushing this one out to mid wicket. Smith the fielder. And there is no addition. Apologies if you lost us there from Trent Bridge. We think we're back with you now. No, we're not. We're not back with you. Seven for two. Again, apologies if uh, we bobbed out for a minute or two. It's always a little alarming when the power goes off and suddenly you're, uh, you're talking to each other or talking to yourself, as we <laughs> as we do a lot of the time. I think we're I think we're back there, folks. Um, not missed anything. Still 157 for two. We're in a Jason Holder over. Ball into Joe Clark, who drives out on the offside. Fielded at uh, mid-off by Finch. No run. Slater 69, Clark 59. These two came together with the score on 34. So uh, 
either side of lunch they've first steadied the ship and uh, now started to uh, steer it along at a rate of knots holder in again bowls and Clark drives again sweetly straight to mid off though Finch the fielder and there's no run Worcestershire have uh, adopted some alternative tactics since lunch particularly with Finch from this end with the field set back trying a sort of short ball approach but it hasn't paid off so far Clark with those two men catching at short mid wicket now facing holder one slip as well he's in bowls and again he's just pushing forward out on the offside and there's no run not a lot of assistance for no. the bowlers out there at the moment it's no. gone very very flat it is mirroring what we saw in the Essex mm. game we, again between lunch and tea and then if, uh, if that is, to go, is going to carry on into the third session look out for lots of wickets falling in the third session because uh, we saw that on each day as well last week holder to complete the over it's in bowls Clark drops it down on the offside and there is no run six overs four maidens no wicket for five now for holder 157 for two 45 overs gone 51 left in the day yeah ben slater playing his 132nd first class match 12 centuries, eight of them for knots. He played a long time for Derbyshire and only, uh, only got four centuries, but for knots, averaging almost 35. Never easy here, they say, at the top of the order. Missed out in the first match, but certainly cashing in here, and so far they've added 123 for the third wicket. Pretty even split, actually. Slater 57, Clark 58 of this partnership. Here's Finch. This will be his 10th over now. Bowles and Slater playing away from his body. Just uh, larrups the ball out to deep extra. Gets another single to move on to 70. That's a 158 for two. Matthew Montgomery will have had his pads on for a fair while. He's another one that didn't really contribute in either innings against Essex. Then Jack Haynes. You'd imagine he'll be looking forward to getting out there against his former county perhaps uh, one or two butterflies he'll be hoping to do well understandably Lyndon James Liam Patterson White Calvin Harrison Luke Fletcher and Dylan Pennington actually made his first class debut on this ground for Worcestershire in that pink ball game a few years ago this one's dragged down the leg side for four by Clark another boundary out feels fast Frank as it usually is here that went very quickly down there yeah, it did, but uh, just, just, I don't know. I, it, it's not working. This is it. They're giving runs away. I think that's how it seems to me at the moment. Anyway, I sometimes wonder. I'd, um, I'd prefer to see a more conventional attack for longer. You know. I, yeah, I, I, I just wonder how much the pre-match analysis sticks in the captain's and the bowler's head. This is the way to get so-and-so out. This is where you want to be bowling at so-and-so. Next ball. Pulled away again by Clark. And that's four more. Hit very, very hard. Back-to-back -back boundaries and Joe Clark getting a hurry up on here. Now gone to uh, to 67. They're the, the clearly bowling to predetermined plans, aren't they? Or trying to. Well, yeah. I mean, they, they've decided that they're not getting any help so a conventional approach of bowling at the top of off stump or just outside yeah. off stump isn't going to bring rewards so they're trying something else I just my feeling is that they've gone to that approach too early but. Finch in again back to back boundaries for Clark and he'll get uh, one here just nudging this down to long leg so uh, once again there's the very real possibility that he will overtake Ben Slater, who came in, of course, well before him. Clark is on 68, Slater on 70, 167 for two knots. So uh, they've added 84 in an hour and five minutes since lunch. And as Frank says, the balls have been there to hit. Rather.
the two regularly. This is down the leg side and given they've got a wicket this time. <laughs> leg side strangle and Slater has to go. Finch, you'd have to say that's a poor ball because it's always angling down the leg side. Slater went to flick it away and he's tickled it through to Gareth Roderick. And Worcestershire have a bowling bonus point in just how quickly things can turn. 167 for three. Ben Slater goes for 70. Caught Roderick bowled Finch. Faced 142 balls. It's seven fours and a six. And um, he will be absolutely uh, at odds with himself for just having a bit of a tickle, a bit of a flick down the leg side and uh, succumbing to the old leg side strangle. 167 for three and quick as a flash Worcestershire. Or, uh, with their tails up again and you just know in the huddle there somebody's going to be saying come on one brings two let's get another one yeah 133 added for that third wicket and Slater very unfortunate it happens we saw uh, Rob Jones of Worcestershire get out like that at Edgbaston last week just a little tickle down the leg side playing quite a long way away from his body it could only be uh, bat. There was no pad anywhere near it, and Worcestershire pick up a, a, a wicket with it, as you say, with a very ordinary delivery. Mm. But uh, such things happen, and they will now want, as you say, not just to pick up another one, but just to possibly regroup a little bit, bowl at the new batsman as much as possible, and just try and change the momentum of the innings a bit because since lunch it's been ragged new man is uh, Matthew Montgomery made his way out to the middle right-hander born in South Africa as uh, uh, European passport I think he actually played a game for Germany last year just looking last week 2 and 12 against Essex so Talking about Will Young and uh, where he will fit into the side for next week. Matthew Montgomery could do with a few runs here. We saw Ben Slater, who missed out last week, get some today as Finch comes in. And this is uh, striking him amidships first ball. And uh, that's the end of a successful over for uh, just fiddling with the uh, monitor which turned itself off uh, 167 for three Finch 10 overs no maidens but he's got that first wicket one for 45 and I think he caused Montgomery a little bit of uh, pain there yeah. with that one into the midriff he's gone down on his haunches for quite some time very important this next uh, half an hour or so I reckon Dave because uh, as I say Worcestershire needed to just regroup needed to get that breakthrough got Thank it in fortuitous circumstances or in a fortuitous mm. fashion and now they need to just uh, see if they can keep Joe Clark quiet as Holder has done to be fair six overs four maidens no wicket for five and they want to bowl as many deliveries at the new batsman in the next five overs as possible I would imagine slip gully short extra cover short mid wicket Holder to Clark, who's on 68. He's in there and bowls, and Clark is forward, pushing out on the offside. It's a good spell, this from Holder, isn't it? It's yes, been on yeah. the money, really. Yeah. Not a lot happening. But this is this this is the point that I was trying to make. Not a lot happening, so uh, keep it in the right areas. And uh, Jason Holder has done that very, very well. Frank, I'm going to go to the back of the room, because you've got a couple of guests in, and it makes a a lot more sense if you have a little bit of a chat to uh, a couple of guests. As Holder comes in and bowls, and this is driven into the offside. 167 for three. I'll just have to nip in in uh, five or ten minutes' time to do an update for Radio Nottingham. But uh, Frank's going to be in charge until then. Well, it's a rare privilege to be given that kind of responsibility here at Trent Bridge, I can tell you. I'm going to be joined by two former Worcestershire batsmen in a moment. Phil Neal recently elected president of the club and Alan Ormrod who's coming in alongside me as Jason Holder comes into bowl and Joe Clark drives into the offside Kashif Ali makes the stop at extra cover and there's no run and uh, yeah we've got an all Worcestershire 
team in the commentary box here. This is the first time it's ever happened. Good afternoon to both of you, Let's Phil hope it and brings Alan. Us some luck. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, we just got a little bit of luck, didn't we, with that leg side strangle? Uh, we were on our way up. All oh, right. See well, that Ben Slater just got you know widest ball from Adam Finch down the leg side, just flicked at it and nicked okay. it through to Gareth Roderick. Jason Holder from the Stuart Broadend bowls and clock plays defensively out on the offside 167 for three great to see you both so uh, you've been having a jolly in the committee room have you? <laughs> absolutely <laughs> just come in to represent the club yeah <laughs> yeah we've always been a good uh, good horse I've uh, not again yeah. regarding Worcester yeah I've tried to come and watch I, I was the first day at Edgebaston and the first day here just trying right. to uh, see some of the cricket away from home Here's Jason Holder from the Stuart Broadend, and he's got Joe Clark tied down quite nicely here, which is important because Clark's been very, very fluent since lunch. He blocks this one out on the offside. 68 now to the former Worcestershire batsman, 167 for three, and an important breakthrough. Uh, we were just discussing, actually, before you came up, whether like, I, I said I thought perhaps Worcestershire had gone away from conventional cricket if you like top of off stump trying to get batsmen out that way to setting rather more shall we say imaginative fields holder bowls outside the off stump left alone another maiden um i was saying that i thought maybe they'd gone away from it a little bit too soon for my liking and it might have been better to you know keep with more conventional fields but it i think a, part, a response to what happened last week as well uh, up and down the country is that with this ball on these surfaces there just doesn't seem to be much help for the bowlers no, no there doesn't uh, i was speaking to Stephen o'shaughnessy uh, i think it was two nights ago when he umpired here and looking at the results where not even were bowled out for 80 you know, yeah it's a surprising score of that uh, in relation to the two innings before that yeah uh and he was explaining to me that the, the ball itself, the kookaburra, it's an actually it, the stitching on the seam yep. is very very fine, as compared to when I played, the actual seam was more like a rope, yeah. and, it, and so therefore the, the the bowlers would have better opportunity of doing something off the wicket if not if, if it's not happening through the air. Yeah, another single for. Uh Joe, uh, for a first single for Montgomery there. Yeah, I'll just show you that that, that that a tweet that I put out about the two balls there, and you can see the picture of the Kookaburra alongside the Duke, and it it shows quite clearly the difference in the seam. But uh, I think clearly the case. Finch again bowls short, and Clark swivels round and uh, picks up another single. Josh Baker fields on the boundary, 169 for three. But yeah, the. Uh, the stitching on the Duke is a lot prouder, yeah. and it stays oh. that way quite a lot longer. Yeah. And uh, I think the stitching is fine. You can see yeah. it definitely yeah. when you look, when you give yeah. this illustration here for me. Yeah. It's definitely finer compared to the. Yeah, the and Duke. it flattens out apparently. For yeah. is what they tell me that it, yeah. you know, so after 20 overs or so, well, um, not there's not as there's not anywhere near as much opportunity for movement. Finch in bowls and. Uh, Forward comes Montgomery, taking on the pad, I think. Runs away on the onside. Might have been a bit of bat involved. Yeah, no umpire, no signal from umpire Ben Debenham. 170 for three. But you played you played with the Kookaburra a little bit, Phil, in and you have seen them a lot on tours, yeah. I guess. And, and they, you know, they, no more than 20 overs at the start, you'll get a bit of movement and a bit of seam. Uh, it was interesting, I saw Sam Cook, after getting his wickets here, said that he felt you had to keep the seam upright. Right. And I mentioned that to Alan Richardson. He said, well, that, funnily enough, at Hampshire, when they played a pre-season match, um, Abbott there bowled some cross-seam balls and was right. nipping around all over the place. So, you know, it's, I think the key would be to make sure you're bowling a fullish length and getting people to play early on. And you can't afford to waste the new ball. You have to be spot on. And then after that, I think you've seen already some here and, and a combination of the ball and the tactics that we saw with Basball, where Stokes would have three men back on the boundary and mm. someone halfway back. You might see a few teams reverting to that if they've got anyone with any pace. Yeah, which is which is what she did for a brief spell after lunch when Adam Finch was bowling. They've still got those two men back now. Clark just picked up another single. It's 171 for three as Adam Finch moves in from the Radcliffe Road end. And bowls fuller this time. 
and down the leg side Montgomery uh, flicking at it taking on the pad Gareth Roderick makes a tumbling stop to his left and uh, there's no addition but yeah it, I, I we were saying earlier you know we used to seeing even in you know with the Duke in in on very flat pitches captains looking for slightly odd fields and two or three catches close in the covers or whatever it might be but to see a captain going away from conventional uh, uh, sort of tactics in the first 40 overs as we've seen today is, is quite unusual and obviously tells us something about what's happening out there as Finch bowls a good length delivery and Montgomery pushes out on the offside I think we've seen and there's it. no run we saw at Edgebaston as well men on the drive being a feature yeah. with the wickets being a bit slower early yeah. season and, and I heard a comment earlier on from Nathan Smith when I popped in the dressing room about felt it was a a little too paced so the ball stopping in the wicket a little bit occasionally maybe men on the drive is an option I think the situation here is that the, the wicket seems to be too paced like you said but the one seems to kick through quite yeah. high on a certain length but uh, you can expect that with the, the, the weather conditions that we've had in the, the last few weeks or even months mm. uh, you're not going to get a flat deck so consequently, I think the order of the day for the ball is if you, you've got to keep bowling straight and straight, and it's a patient game here. Yeah. You've got to try and force the batsman to, to make, make a mistake. Thing. Yeah, Correct. absolutely. And Correct. Jason Hold is probably the the one that epitomised that the most. He's in his eighth over now. He's bowled five maidens. He's only conceded five runs. That's the point I was trying to make about a few minutes before you guys arrived which is I just thought that you know to go away from just if you like line and length conventional methods yeah. early on is, was was quite surprising but anyway we'll see if Holder gets any reward mm -hmm. Clark is very circumspect against him pushes him out on the onside I think the and situation there's no with Clark he, he's got to be thinking that uh, I don't want to we've lost the wicket a few, well, say a few overs ago. Yeah. He doesn't want to uh, throw his wicket away because he's the man it's in, in yeah. form. He's, he's the man, and he doesn't want to throw his wicket away. And uh, hence, he's, I think he's circumspect in his play. He wants to get uh, the other, uh, the other batsman time. Yeah. To get in, and then you start f get the the flow going like he had in a few uh, overs ago. Clark gets a single here, squeezing this one out on the offside. And he goes to 71. Montgomery has two. It's 172 for three. You'll hear in your headphones in a minute some uh, speech from BBC Radio Nottingham because they'll be having an update. When that happens, I will tear off my headphones and give them to Dave and he'll do the update. So uh, don't worry if you hear that and you don't quite know what's going on. Uh, I did a bit of research when I knew you two were coming, so uh, I, I'm going to ask you whether you know. Do you know what your highest score on this ground was, Alan and Phil? I'll tell you if 80, you don't. 85? No, you're underestimating yourself, Alan, I think. Am I? Well, yeah, you got got 100 here. Did I? No. Jason Holder from the Pavilion End Bowls. Montgomery pushes out on the offside. Here comes that update. in Nottinghamshire had a pretty good afternoon although they have just lost the wicket of Ben Slater for 70. Slater and Joe Clark uh, rattled on a partnership worth 133. Clark still there on 71. Matthew Montgomery with him on two. Nottinghamshire won the toss, opted to bat first. They're 172 for three. Thanks Dave. Jason Holder again outside the off stump through to the keeper. 172 for three. Yes, Alan, you made 107 here. I'm not sure what year it was. And Phil, you didn't get 100 here. But no. you got your highest score here was 83. Do you remember that? No, yeah. I, don't, I don't particularly remember. I did get 100 against Knotts in uh, a home game for Knotts, but it was yeah. in Newark. Oh, right, OK. I, I only looked up this ground, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. But um, I, did, I also recalled a game, Phil, that you will remember. Holder bowls and Montgomery is forward pushing up to mid off. No run, 172 for three 
at the end of the 49th over. The men out, Hasib Hamid for 11, Ben Duckett for 9, and since lunch, Ben Slater for 70. And it was that one in 1988 when both teams were bowled out very, very cheaply in the first innings. I think Worcestershire was 32 for 7, made 150 odd, then not to about 39 for 8 or something and made 140. It was the championship winning year of 88 and both teams made runs in the second innings but not won by six wickets I think. But five for Radford and five for Dilly in that in that innings. I, I forget the, the ones we didn't win Frank. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of Radford that's who Nathan Smith reminds me of Phil. I don't know if yeah. you think the same. I, Very I, similar approach and the way he peels away after he's bowled and wants to bowl the next ball straight away. Yeah, it, it doesn't run in as straight as Radders did, but a similar height. Yeah, and, uh, sort of skiddy, hit the pitch sort yeah. of action. I was going to say earlier when you were talking about what lengths people are bowling, I think that Nathan Smith, um, Je um, Jason Holder's doing the same, and Leachy would probably bowl the line and length, and they tend to use Adam Finch as the, a little bit yeah, differently yeah. as the sort of shot bowler. Yeah, yeah, that's what we were saying. Anyway, it's Nathan Smith back into the attack at this Radcliffe Road end. Got the first two wickets this morning, comes in and bowls to uh, Clark, who just steers this one square on the offside for a single, 173 for three. And... Uh, I think Nathan's looked a good acquisition. Yeah, he's, so he's, far. He's, I think he's, he's, he's looked really, really impressive, hasn't he? And that was a brilliant run out that he effected at Edgbaston as well last week. That, came from nowhere he appears to be a very busy aggressive cricketer oh, racing in now away from us passed on by Devon and bowls outside the off stump left alone by Montgomery with a swish of the bat and taken by Gareth Roderick and we just seem to have gone back now since that wicket to a, a more conventional approach although we have still got a uh, man in at short mid wicket and two men out on the leg side boundary 173 for three, but uh, yeah, we've also been debating the uh, the uh, merits of this experiment with the Kookaburra. Smith bowls again and pushed out on the onside by Montgomery as to whether it's uh, you know whether it's worthwhile and whether it's a a valid thing to try in the county championship. I mean, Dave was saying that one of the reasons given is that they'd say they want to prepare players to play in the Ashes down under. But, uh, you know, you, you'd have to question how many people <laughs> that had taken part in the experiment are actually realistically going to be involved in the Ashes. So that's an odd one. I don't think you can think about the Ashes down under when you're playing county cricket. Yeah. Because county cricket now, you've got to be thinking about the county. Yeah. And you've got to be thinking about winning the championship. This is what it's all about. And what comes from that is you make your selections. As uh, Smith bowls again, and this one's punched out on the offside for a single by Montgomery. As Dolivera moves to his left, and it was a no ball called by umpire Debenham. It's the fourth time Smith's overstepped. But I uh, won't be too worried if he can uh, pick up a wicket in this spell. Looks like it's going to be a tough afternoon for Worcestershire. There's not a lot of help out there for the seamers. Yeah, I think that's a good point, actually, Alan. As simple as that, really, isn't it? That, uh, you know, why are you experimenting in one competition in an attempt to prepare players to play in a completely different one on the other side of the world? Single here for Clark as he steers it out square on the offside, 177 for three. I think one of the things the selectors have got to look at is the actual wickets themselves they're playing county cricket on and see if we can find a wicket which is similar to those conditions mm. and then uh, watch the players who you've got in mind how they deal with that that wicket. Yeah. Uh, I just feel that um, county cricket is, is, is a breeding ground and it's a development area but you can't plan. You can't plan anything for uh, a tour which is about six yeah. months or even seven yeah. months away. in completely different uh, conditions. Conditions plus yeah. the fact you might have injuries on the players who you're looking at. I yeah, mean, you've got to have a, a wider aspect on your selection uh, program. I think. Yeah. 
Now, just saying about you two playing here at Trent Bridge and Allen, and I'd forgotten, and of course, just been reminded by Dave, you, you actually came here as director of cricket for a while, didn't you? Yeah, when I was, when, when was that? Was that straight after it? You finished at Lanks? In I finished at Lanks in 92, then I had a sabbatical 93, and I joined here in 94. Right. Blocked yeah. out that one by Montgomery. End of the over from Nathan Smith. Nine overs, one maiden, two for 36 now for him. And not after 50 overs, 177 for three. And how long were you here, Alan? I was here five years. I, was, I finished in September, I think it was, 98. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was. I had a fairly successful side, uh, time. I became third in the championship in my first year. Then I had uh, problems with uh, with uh, Chris Lewis, who wanted to leave. He wanted to go to Surrey, which I imagine he was tapped up by Surrey at the time. And then a the year later, I had um, Chris Cairns leave at the end of the season. But we came joint top with Surrey in the, uh, what was then, the, the John, was it the John Player, John Player League? Yeah, oh, the well, the League. Sunday League anyway, yeah. yeah. But we uh, Leg by for not here, takes it on to 179 for three. But we didn't get the uh, the title because we got done on run rate. We, Surrey won that, won it that right. year. But uh, from then on, because of losing two major players, mm. uh, I struggled to find anybody who could uh, fill, those, fill those positions. But it was a it was a good time. I enjoy my time yeah. at Nottingham. Jason Holder in again, bowls and uh, Montgomery will get his first boundary here. Wide half volley to be fair from Holder, and he just leans into it and uh, well, it wasn't really a full bloody drive. Just pushed it into the gap between uh, cover and point, and out to the boundary. Just in front of square on the offside, 182 for three. Montgomery goes to seven. We'll feel a bit better for that. Interesting that they've kept both those men in on the leg side in the sort of short mid-wicket catching position. It's a tactic that they've employed particularly for Joe Clark, but they've kept them in there for Montgomery. Holder in again to him and uh, beats him outside the off stump. Good delivery, maybe a fraction of movement, just felt for it. It's length as much as anything that's done the damage there. And Jason Holder's been very tidy. Halfway through his ninth over, he's conceded just ten runs. Five maidens in there. Doing a good job, but uh, at the moment it looks as though patience is the order of the day. How many sure. overs has he bowled in this, uh, this spell? He's bowled... This is his fourth. I think he bowled five in his first spell. Okay. Here he is now. Bowls and he beats Montgomery again. That one did look as though it went a little bit off the seam. And he, Roderick was moving to his right as he took it. But it is all about patience, Phil, isn't it? On uh, on these sort of pitches, you just got to so. take take the chance when it comes. No, what did you think of uh, What did you think of Josh Baker this morning? Bowled quite well, I thought. Yeah, I mean, I th I think. Um, you know, both sides have looked at the pitch and decided it's a used pitch. It's probably going to turn a little bit later on, but obviously not that much in it for Josh. But, mm. he, but he bowled OK. Yeah. Just suffered a little bit when Clarkey yeah. obviously thought about it at lunchtime and then decided to attack him after lunch. Yeah. Holder but, again um, bowls. Montgomery pushes out on the offside. Yeah, and he nearly got Slater just before lunch with that one that just dropped to, to short legs, yeah, toes, didn't he? Very, close, very, yeah. very close. But I thought he bowled quite nicely before lunch, but uh, as you say, a bit of pressure after that. One or two turned, a little bit. I mean, well, you're going to get this shape of game, I think, with the with the Cookerborough ball, where you know side batting first on a reasonable pitch might get a decent score, and it's up to the other side to hang in there during the first innings. Yeah. Third innings of a game, anything can happen, but if they do get a, a, a score on the board, you could find yourself chasing a declaration in the later stages of the game. But Holder balls again, clipped away on the onside by Montgomery, gets a single, he'll keep the strike. He goes to 8, 183 for 3. And of course we've got uh, Jack Haynes in next, so uh, another another ex-Worcestershire player coming in with Clark out there already and Dylan Pennington to uh, to come later and presumably to open the bowling when Worcestershire bat. So uh, quite a lot of interest for those from Worcester who have made the trip 
up here or watching on the live stream. I suppose we all we we hope Jack does well for knots, but just not, not today, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> he started well in his first game. He did. Didn't he? he got yeah. a 17, played pretty well. Yeah, he did. I was talking to Steve O'Shaughnessy as well the other day, Alan, and he was telling me about that game as you were saying about. Uh, he told you as Nathan Smith bowls outside the off stump and Clark leaves and uh, Montgomery leaves he said he thought that the game could have been completely different because in the knots first innings Clark had got 100 and Jack was on 70 and they were in complete control and they both kind of gave their wickets away really in fairly quick succession and the whole game just completely turned around in the space of about 15 minutes and of course, Sam Cook's brilliant performance at the end on the last day just emphasised that. Referring to with Clark being a bit yeah. uh, subdued, this is the thing you don't want to have one wicket go down and then right. two full straight yeah. after. Yeah. Whereas if you keep it tight till your next yeah. partner gets in, then the continue of the run rate will uh, yeah. be well, it will gradually increase. Single to Montgomery takes him to nine. Yeah, that's right, and I think that's exactly what happened. Clark got out, and then Jack hit a full toss straight to mid on or something, and the whole the whole thing changed. But yeah, I thought I I I felt this morning from a Worcestershire point of view, it was a dangerous Joe Clark because he was very very watchful, wasn't he, before lunch, laying the foundations. Smith bowls, and he just uh, elegantly steers this one square on the offside. I think, I think for another single. What happened in that game, Frank, is a, an indication of the difference probably between the second division and the first division. You know, if you um, yeah. let a side back into the game, yeah. they could make you pay. And I think Essex will be one of the dangerous sides this year in the first division because they've got Harmer when it spins. Yeah. And Cook and Porter are both the sort yeah. of bowler that when they get on a spell on a hot streak, they're yeah. going to get four or five in a spell. Nathan Smith from the Radcliffe Road end bowls and uh, Montgomery is forward steering this one out on the offside only one as Jake Libby runs back and slides springs to his feet gets a throw back in 186 for three Sam Cook's not playing today apparently whether he's got a niggle or not we don't know but uh, we're assuming that might be the reason I'm going to complete this over and then hand over to Dave because I've got to go and do a little bit of work for BBC Harvard and Worcester. Um, just briefly, but uh, Dave will come in and continue the conversation. Alongside me, Phil Neal, the uh, Worcestershire president and former Worcestershire batsman and Lancashire batsman and not director of cricket, Alan Ormer. Those are the two voices that you can hear apart from... The commentary. This one steered out on the offside by Joe Clark. Nathan Smith about to complete his tenth over, two for thirty-nine. Two wickets this morning for the Kiwi. Top wicket taker in domestic cricket in New Zealand in the season just completed. And a busy start to his Worcestershire career as well. He comes in now and bowls and uh, Clark plays defensively back up the pitch to the bowler that is the end of the over clock has 74 Montgomery 10 52 overs completed and not having won the toss and chosen to bat are 186 for three and uh, I'll let Phil Neal just uh, say what he thought of that over and we'll get Dave Brace girdle in well, I think Nathan's showing um, why Worcestershire signed him really in, in the previous game at Edgebaston um, he's able to maintain his line and length he's quite slippery um, moves the ball about early on when there is movement for this Cookaburra ball. And um, pleasing thing for Worcester, I think, with the two overseas players that they've been able to sign is how well they've slotted in. And, um, you know, we, Worcester should go big on the character of the player as well as the ability of the player. And I saw a practice session the other day after the Warwickshire game where you got Jason Holder and Nathan Smith both there bowling at everybody else in the nets and, and helping out with the practice. Is Holder from the... Stuart Broad end, Bowles and Matthew Montgomery drops this down on the leg side. That was the, the voice of the former Lincoln City fullback, Phil Neal. <laughs> um, <laughs> and form, I've, I've written director of cricket here, Alan, yeah. but did you not have the title cricket manager? Correct. <laughs> Correct. I thought you were uh, building me up somewhere. Well, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, it, it was it was sort of the same role, wasn't it? There wasn't a separate director of cricket, was no, there? No, uh, I was basically in charge of the cricket uh, for the time I was here. Holder bowls uh, cut away by uh, Joe Clark for a single. He moves on to 75, 188 for three. Yeah, it's... Uh, I was basically it because it, my managerial career started in Lancashire and uh, and I started off with the first team but with the situation was with Lancashire we had so many good youngsters so what I wanted to do was make sure that the youngsters were not overseen and I kept my eye on both sides so that from that um, learning curve I had from managerial cricket. Holder bowls, Montgomery defence. I adopted it here. Yeah. So I kept going back and forth to try and make sure that the youngsters who were the second team which were developing were not overlooked by me. If as long as I was present, they could see that I was watching them and they, they could be uh, sort of energised to do well for themselves because I was there. So I can be looking at them saying, right, is he ready to play first class cricket or isn't he? And uh, and I Old didn't rely on anybody else to give me that information. Older Bowles, Montgomery defence. Because you were a Lancashire lad, weren't yeah. you, originally? Yeah. How did you end up at Lanc New Road then? Well, I left uh, Worcester in eight, end of 83 seas. Yeah, how did you get from being a Lancashire lad? You, you, you were born in Lancashire, weren't you? I was you? born in Lancashire. Yeah. But... I was educated in Scotland. Right. And the coach down at Worcester at the time was a fellow called Charlie Hallows. Right, yeah. yeah. It was the Hallows and Makepeace era when back in uh, the 1918s. Here comes but Holder again, bowls, and this one goes through to the keeper. And there's, oh, there's lots of oohs and ahs out there. Didn't look all that close, but it was a leave from Montgomery, and Nottinghamshire supporters won't need me to remind them that... He was bowled on the final day here against Essex last week. His bat was pointing to the sky, shoulder in arms, and Cook got one to jag back and demolish his off stump. So beware, young man, beware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in Scotland, uh, the, the coach who coached me thought I was the best cricketer, best young cricketer. I was only 13, 14 at the time in Scotland. So he had uh, contacts with Charles Hallows, and he wrote on my behalf, and he got me a trial there in 1957. Uh, when I was Holder in, boy. Montgomery drops it behind square on the leg side, no run, end of the over, Nottinghamshire 188 for three, we've got 11 overs to go until the tea break, we've got uh, Alan Ormrod and Phil Neal, two Worcestershire greats here with us in the commentary box, Alan of course as we've just been hearing spent a bit of time here at uh, Nottinghamshire in an administrative role, but just telling us how he, how he got into <laughs> well, uh, first-class cricket. Yeah, well, I went into Worcester at 57, one-day trial. I got about 20 runs at 14 and that. And then Charlie Al says, right, let's have a look at him. We can develop him over the next two years. So I went back to school at 15, left school at 16, became a pro, and they continued there. And... Uh, the rest it's is history, history as, yeah. as they say. Yeah. We've got the yeah. spinner back on, um, Josh Baker. Uh, Phil Neal's alongside uh, Alan. When he walked in, I thought he'd won the Masters. The, the blazer is magnificent. <laughs> Many congratulations on that. It's Masters week, of course. Um, I've got to ask you how New Road is, and I, and I say that as somebody, A, who's never been to Kidderminster. I'll come back in a second because Baker bowls and this is down the leg side. You've got a couple of games coming up there, but as it stands at the moment, the first scheduled game of the season at New Road would be against Notts in mid-May. Um, so how is New Road and is there any chance that I'll be getting my first look at Kidderminster or, or, or will we be um, looking out for the fish on the outfield as this one's cut away for a single by Clark? I think the date's actually the 24th of May. I hope yeah. it is, because mid-May might be a little right. early. <laughs> um, well, the, the ground's still underwater, or it was. Um, when we all went to Duncan Fernley's funeral, we saw the ground there, and it had, it had flooded again for the eighth time. Uh, hopefully it's receded by now, because we've had a couple of dry days. Yeah. Um, so far, they're still on schedule for the 24th of, of May. The, the, the short floods in and out for a day haven't seemed to do any damage to the grass growth that we've been trying to encourage. So we're hopeful still that we will be able to get there. I mean, Kidderminster have been fantastic as a club. Single to Montgomery, 190 for three. The players have been able to practice there all pre-season. Yeah. 
Um, and I, I actually think the pitches were very good quality and were actually very similar to what we played on at Edgebaston, so it was good preparation for the first match we played at Edgebaston. What needs to be done for Kiddy? Temporary stands brought in, or, or are there enough <laughs> seating facilities already? I'm not sure how much of temporary stands they're doing. Or Next marquees, ball's a dot ball, sorry, Phil. I know it's a very expensive exercise, yeah. kitting, the, kitting a club ground out for a, for a game and, and realistically having to provide some facilities for members to be able to watch the game in relative comfort. 190 for three. Josh Baker, slow left arm round the wicket. It feels off his own bowling. It, crowd catch, bump ball, I think, <laughs> from uh, Joe Clark, who's on 76. Um, just listening to the guys there talking about their chat with Steve O'Shaughnessy. Absolutely spot on last week. Clark and Haynes putting on 100, then getting out in consecutive overs, both to lose shots to mid on. 190 for three at the end of the over. So, uh, yeah, look, very much looking forward to, uh, to to coming and having a look. Just on the Lincoln City thing as as well, I've a, I was at RAF Warrington in the um, what, early 80s and there was a lad I worked with who was going out with one of the girls in one of the admin offices at Lincoln City, <laughs> so we used to get free tickets. And I have a funny feeling, was it Bournemouth you beat 9-0? Correct. And does history record that as being Harry Redknapp's first game in management? I'm not sure of that. I have a funny feeling. No, I'm not sure of that. Funnily enough, we, we won that game 9-0, and, and I remember it for something yeah. stupid, which was the winger, who was one of these flash wingers, and I was playing fullback. <laughs> he nutmegged me when they were 8-0 up. On the halfway line, he nutmegged me and ran round, and, and I managed to recover, but he said, ah, nutmeg. I said, mate, just have a look at the score, will you? <laughs> 190 for three. Let's have a look that up. I've, I think history... Always, oh, this is edged and caught. Good catch by Holder. Big man, really big wicket. It's Matthew Montgomery who failed in both innings last week and he's gone for 11 this time. Had a little flash at that one from Nathan Smith who gets his third wicket of the day. But it was all down to the wonderful hands of Jason Holder. Flung himself to his right. He's the only slipper. So he, he, he's sort of just guessing a little bit where he needed to be, but close enough to hang on. Matthew Montgomery caught Holder. Ball Smith for 11. 190 for four. Good catch, Alan. Excellent catch for, uh, for slip catch beautiful took a actually from here it looked quite easy for him mm. you know uh, I mean no slip catch is easy but uh, that um, the way he, he, he got across to it it's not wasn't it a diving catch it was uh, just an outstretched hand that caught it lovely they glad isn't he that's the area that I what little bit I get involved in the practices I sometimes do the slip catching practice with him and, I, and I've watched Jason and he's, a, he's an exceptional catcher and, and covers a lot of ground actually you know you get some of these guys that are tall you can almost cover an extra slip by the, the amount of reach that they have and he, he sees the ball so quickly here comes Jack Haynes I'm sure there'll be a comment or two out there it's Clark and Haynes against Worcestershire just had to be didn't it it's Played. interesting there, they swapped Smith round, didn't they? Because they, yeah. they wanted the spinner to bowl at this end, which yeah. is probably where there's going to get more assistance. And it was Smith's first over at the far end. Good signing holder, isn't he? I mean, he's got to bring all that experience, all his knowledge, and just the very, I guess the very name would have excited some of the youngsters. The former West Indies captain, Jason Holder, is coming to play with us. Yeah, I, I, it was an exceptional signing at very short notice. I mean, we were... We were lining up another player who got injured and uh, to find that Jason was available and, and wanting to come and play um, was a real bonus to us and, and a, an indication that um, not only do the club mean business but also Ashley's got some, Ashley Giles has got some good contacts. Very much so, yep. Yeah. Two overseas combining there, Smith the bowler, Holder the catcher. I've just brought in two bits of uh, Worcestershire memorabilia which aren't great radio or television but uh, hopefully we can describe this um, we have mentioned it a, a time or two uh, to, today perhaps uh, perhaps you, you, you can each uh, help me out a, uh, a little bit here um, just refreshing the uh, the fading memory the very first time I went to New Road was 1974 a Gillette Cup quarter final against Nottinghamshire uh, a match that Alan played in as this is pushed into the offside. It dragged on for two days with uh, Gary Sobers and Knocker White coming close. You'd had the better of the first day, Alan. Um, and Sobers and, and White uh, made you um, uh, j just made you get a little a little itchy on the last day, but Worcestershire uh, got through. And uh, I've, I've had this in a in a box of memorabilia all pretty much all my life or ever since. Bought in 1974 at the ground on the day Norman Giffords. 
uh, testimonial year and uh, an, an autographed card, which was great for a young schoolboy as this is uh, this is pushed back. So that's what we're looking at is your autograph on there. But uh, yeah. that's a, a nice bit of, uh, of, of memorabilia on there. I, and I can actually remember getting that. The other one I can't. I have no idea where this has come from. But last night when I dug that one out, folded up inside, was a 1987 Worcestershire autograph sheet. So your autograph is on the 1974 one, Alan. Yeah. Phil's is on the 1987, quite right at the top but have either of you ever heard of Botham being called Bronte because it's signed Ian Botham it says Bronte as this is pushed back to the bowler I think I think somebody in the admin office is uh, I think someone on the playing staff was probably being well, mischievous yeah. at that time <laughs> was yeah. it a, anything that you know we know he's Guy the Gorilla he's both he's beefy but Bronte we've never heard that have we I've never heard him called no. Bronte now no. Brontosaurus presumably but I've never heard yeah, that maybe. link to him now maybe no. I think that game you mentioned, the uh, the, the Gillette Cup yep. game. I think that, Len, do you remember that game when Loppy Lugs stood up on the balcony afterwards? On 90 and for four. I think Gary Sobers um, got man of the match on that game, yeah. even though Worcester yeah. had won. Yeah, I can remember him and, more. And one of our more eccentric lo local supporters jumped up on the balcony <laughs> and grabbed the microphone <laughs> and... and announced that he thought his man of the match was Keith Wilkinson from Worcestershire. Well, he got 95, and then, yeah. And then, and, then, and, then, and then ran off. So Loppy was seen chasing across the King's School field with police chasing after him. Well, you earlier mentioned Newark. Now, that's my hometown, and I think I saw you and Worcestershire play there twice. Uh, 190 for four as uh, this is blocked by Haynes, still on naught. When was the championship game you were talking about where I've got a picture of Glenn Turner and uh, Van Burn Holder somewhere that I must uh, dig out. But the other game at Newark, not sure if either of you played, was 1971, a Sunday league game. I remember that. And Garfield Sobers scored 100 and it was the only century he ever scored in one day cricket. Really? In one day cricket? In one day cricket, Gary Sobers only ever scored one century. I mean, he will only have played Sunday League cricket, effectively, but he only scored one century, and that was I, at New at that day. I was responsible for that. Because thank you, thank you, thank you. Because... <laughs> As Baker Bowl start of a new over, nice-looking shot from Clark, moves to 77 with this single, 191 for four. Because Basher opened the batting, and he was caught in the first over by me. <laughs> and that allowed... So to get come in. in, and he whopped us around the ground. Yeah, he chased it down. I think um, Dolly Vera scored a few runs. I'm not sure for uh, for Worcestershire, but yeah, that was at uh, that was at new at the old RHP ground at Elm Avenue. But we we were talking. I'll let you finish this ball. Baker bowls off a few paces. First ball to Haynes from the spinner, defended. We were talking earlier about the Sunday League and the scoring in those days. You know, 40 overs, it wasn't uncommon for a side to score 160 for four or 150 no. for four in their 40 Next overs. Ball. This goes through to the keeper. Of course, Brian Langford famously, eight overs, eight maidens. Yeah. Yeah. People valued their wickets still yeah. more in those days, and the, the idea of anyone getting 100 in the Sunday League was quite a rare occurrence. So there was a prize pot, wasn't there, for anybody who hit a six or anybody who uh, took four wickets in the innings. I think that was right, wasn't it? Does this is played behind square? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not aware of that. No. I thought they, I thought they, or maybe it was just in the televised games. I think it may be in televised games. So obviously, I came here whenever I could come here, and the the, the the away matches you'd watch it on BBC Two on a Sunday afternoon. You guys wanted, don't you? It, been might, playing. Have, it might have been uh, a bonus from yeah. the, the local club, the club you was playing. Might have been, yeah. Down the leg side, LBW shout here, asking umpire Debenham not out. One ninety-two for four. Well, I, are we? Do we look back at that with rose-tinted glasses, or, or, or really was it as good as, as I think it was? And I know a lot of people who still go on about the Sunday League was. I mean, the benefits obviously were for administrators were that the ground you, ground was full every other Sunday, one ninety-two for four. Or was it? Did you play in front of big crowds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did play in front of big crowds. I, I think that the situation. I thought the Sunday League linked with the championship and the 55 volt Benson Edges, the Sunday League was ideal for everybody. I thought it was ideal for the spectators mainly. Yeah. Yeah. They knew ex exactly what was happening on a Sunday, whether you were playing at home. That's all the spectators had to look for. Are you playing at home or are you playing away? Yeah. And it was an afternoon's entertainment. 
And, and I yeah. think it was ideally yeah. ideally timed. The length of time you were there, it was good. I guess it was great, Alan, if you were in the same place for the Sunday as you were for your, your, your Saturday, Monday, Tuesday game. I guess yeah, the difficulty right. was if you played at New Road on the Saturday in a championship game as uh, Clark defends, and then maybe you got to drive to Southampton or to Headedley or uh, Chelmsford or somewhere for a Sunday league game and then come back to finish your yeah. championship game. Because people wouldn't believe it now if they didn't know. You played championship games Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, but could be anywhere else on the Sunday. Yeah, but I think, uh, I, think I mean, it was hard work for the players, but... I mean, you've got to look at this at the spectator factor, and uh, and we 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 enjoyed doing it, you know. I mean, it was it, it was a, it was a situation. Smith where bowls, Clark defends one ninety three for four. So, well, sorry, we've got to, we've got to keep those that are that can't see the pictures that are just listening <laughs> audio. We've got to just make sure they uh, they know what's happening out in the middle. I mean, I, I, there was no Monday morning feeling with play for cricketers, there were, like no. probably. The, the person who goes to work on a mo Monday morning, then they've got to wait till Friday night before they can really enjoy this. Well, we that that feeling wasn't with the players, so therefore the travel wasn't all that cumbersome for us. We we took it in Australia, and plus the fact majority of the the travelling is done by coach now. Next ball dropped on the leg side. Coach now and on and that. on motorways. I know it wasn't quite a world full of black and white when you when you were around, but the roads are. Another well, follow, well, are they much better now? That's that's open to debate, isn't but, it? They're all uh, potholed. We used to drive. Yeah. We used to drive. Yeah. You know, with a full, full car load with yeah. equipment and uh, players. Uh, Phil Richard Stevens has brought you up here. Um, I hope he's looking after you. I, I know. Um, I know the president uh, who came up, who was actually sat in these seats last week, he came and, uh, and shared the Essex game with us, Chris Broad. I know, I know he's out there actually at the Masters. He, uh, he kept rubbing it in. Uh, next ball is defended. But is Richard and the rest of them down in the committee room? Are they looking after you Yeah, today? they're looking after us very well. I, I heard that Chris had gone to the Masters. Yeah. I heard that Stuart had planned to go and then couldn't. And I wish Chris had given me a call because I'd have taken up the <laughs> ticket, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll let you both go at the end of the over because I'm sure there's a nice tea on for you. Absolutely tremendous to uh, to see you both, Alan. Your old uh, your old stomping ground. I can remember your office at the at the far end there. I think uh, once or twice I went in and uh, you gave me a decent interview or two. One ninety three for four. Next ball is uh, driven down the ground for runs by Clark. Will that go all the way? It's going to take some stopping. It was firmly struck. It is stopped, and Joe Clark will just settle for a couple. Uh, he moves on to 80. Could he get back-to-back -back centuries? And Phil, many pleasure you've given me over the years watching you play cricket and also those uh, those few years when I got free tickets to go and watch Lincoln City. Thank you. Um, absolutely <laughs> tremendous. Thank you both for coming up. Enjoy the rest of your stay and whether it's Kidderminster on the 24th of May or at New Road, um, look forward to renewing acquaintances with everybody at, uh, at Worcester then. Great county. Enjoy your season both. Thanks for coming up. Thanks Brilliant. very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, two... Absolute Worcestershire greats, Alan Ormrod, who, of course, as he was saying, also spent time here as the uh, as the cricket manager. Phil Neal, as Clark pulls this away on the leg side, and Joe Leach out there on the fence. The first thing Joe Leach did was turn and start looking towards the sky. Six more to Joe Clark. Um, fabulous shot from him. That's his third six, and that brings the Nottinghamshire 200 up. 201 for four. Hope you uh, hope you enjoyed that, folks. A, uh, a little chat, as we say. We try and uh, we try and get the guests up as and when we can. 201 for four. Over to uh, Jack Haynes, who's just got a single. Clark on to 86 with that big six. Going to be facing Baker. Tosses this one up. Haynes, former teammate, of course, of uh, Josh Baker, pushes this into the covers. 201 for four. Just the one wicket to go down since lunch. Matthew Montgomery. And this is defended. I beg your pardon, two wickets have uh, gone down since lunch. Just moving back to uh, back to my chair to let Frank back in. Next ball is uh, cut away in the offside. Yeah, Ben Slater, a leg side strangle off 
um, Adam Finch and then Matthew Montgomery. Really good catch by the big paws of Jason Holder and it's 201 for four. Frank just uh, saying farewell to our guests. Lovely of them to uh, share, a, uh, share their time with us this afternoon. This one goes through to the keeper. Really nice to catch up with, uh, with yeah, Phil and Alan. Great, great to, uh, great to catch up. I think Phil's uh, perfectly cast in the role of president that he's just assumed. Uh, so he'd be around a lot more and always a lot to pass on to the lads as well. Baker from our end of the ground. The umpire is Ben Debenham. Watches as this one just, uh, just drifts away from Jack Haynes into the gloves of Gareth Roderick. One ball left in the... 58th over. We'll have six overs after this one before the tea break. This is a low full toss which Haynes can't capitalise on, just works it to mid wicket. No run. End of the over. BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester. Hope you're enjoying the coverage from Trent Bridge. This is the first day of the second round of county championship matches. Worcestershire beginning with a draw last week. Not heavily beaten by Essex. Really need to. Uh, get their season going with some sort of positive result in this particular match and they've started well they're 201 for four yeah Worcestershire uh, be happy if they could nick another one out mm. before the tea interval Nathan Smith looks like the most likely doesn't he just just simply because he's at the batsman all the time isn't he and notice as soon yep. as the previous over finishes he's strutting back to his mark mm. Here he is, Bowles and Clark on the back foot, plays defensively back to the bowler, peeling off his sweat. He can't wait to get at, in at them, and it's just brilliant and infectious. I think he uh, he's had a real impact since he's arrived in just, what is it, four days cricket, really, with that one day being off last week. I'll tell you what, if, <laughs> I can't remember what I had for breakfast, but Johnny Blaine, Dave, you're absolutely right. That 9-0 win was Harry Redknapp's first match as a football mm, manager. Yeah. Lost to Phil Neal's Lincoln City 9-0. Thanks, Johnny. Smith again. Oh, and he beats Clark. It's the first time he's played and missed for some time. That Joe Clark, he's been electric since lunch. Um, but since Slater was out, he's uh, not surprisingly... Had to just uh, draw in his horns a little bit, as Alan Ormrod was quite rightly saying. Don't want to lose two wickets in quick succession. That's what happened when these two were out last week, and Clark mm. guarding against that. 86 to him as he waits for Smith from the Stuart Broad end. He's in, bowls, and Clark's working this one on the leg side to one of those two fielders at short mid wicket. The other thing with Clark, he likes big runs as well. Mm, big, yeah, absolutely. Well, we know all about that. Mm. that was, uh, yeah, I just got one message from a lad I used to teach, who's now a, a PE teacher himself and a cricketer, and he just said, "Clark and Haynes against Worcestershire, I am sad." <laughs> I think you won't be you won't be alone, Rob <laughs> Doverston. There'll be a few others. Around the country. Well, uh, well, you know, Jane uh, Libby's going to get 100, that. don't yeah. we, against well, Nelson? You know? Yeah, we can but hope. Here's Smith in. Balls to Clark, who plays elegantly off the back foot. I love that. Even a back foot defensive shot like that, Jay Clark can make it look really elegant. Such a good technician. It's a yeah. gift, isn't it? I mean, we often talk about the Gowers and people like mm. that, the players that make the game look beautiful. Mark Wall was another one I used to think was a bit like that. Not the Mark Wall that played here in for <laughs> Warwickshire, but uh, the Australian. Here's Nathan Smith. Bowls and Clark works this one on the onside to mm. Baker at mid wicket. No run. The other thing we haven't mentioned today, or I haven't mentioned today, because Clark is now the wicket keeper as well, or yeah. this looks to be the way. At the yeah. moment, uh, Tom Moores didn't play in the first game, didn't uh, play or isn't playing in this match. So Joe Clark was effectively, well, not effectively, he was almost on the field for all of the that first three days yeah. uh, against Essex. So um, it'll be interesting to to see if uh, if that starts to take its toll, if he keeps having long periods at the crease. Smith in bowls. Taken on the pad by this one, Clark, I think, as he looks to work it down 
on the leg side. They'll go they'll get two. In fact, yeah, he's got a glove on it, I think, because the umpire's not given a signal of leg by. So two more to Joe Clark. 88 now to him. So 12 away from a second championship 100 mm. of the season. 203 for four. And, uh, well, five overs left till T. I think he said last week, Haynes, that... Um, he hadn't played with Clark at, uh, at Worcester. That was no. the first time he'd, no, he he'd didn't. batted with That's him. Right. Um, they might have played again. Oh, no, I don't even think they've been going to say they might have played against each other in league cricket, but I don't think mm. so. I think uh, I think Jack's just that little bit younger. Well, he is that bit younger. Yeah. There's Baker around the wicket, bowls and hangs down on one knee, just laps it away for a single. Clark uh, pl actually played here against his brother in the yeah. uh, pre-season warm-up game, playing for Oxford yeah. MCCU, one of his brothers. All uh, Shropshire Minor Counties players, aren't they? But, uh, one of his brothers played in that warm-up game. 204 for four. It's Baker now into Joe Clark, hitting for a couple of sixes straight after lunch. Steers this to backward point. That just sort of... Showed us that uh, Knotts had laid their stall out to be fairly positive at the start of the afternoon. Really got after Young Baker. He comes again, drives into the offside, no run. Brett Dolivier is just uh, loosening up down below us. So we saw him have an over before lunch. He might have one before tea. Baker in again. Clark just bides his time, pushes it into the covers. This is the 60th over. So there'll be four overs to go before the interval. Just past 20 to 4 now, so uh, just a little bit of overtime as uh, this one is defended behind Squip. Hots are in a similar sort of position against Essex in their first innings last week and then. Absolutely nothing from the lower order. Again, just push gently to point, no run. 204 for four. They really should have gone on and got a mm. more substantial first inning score. Turned out to be only 40, and that was pivotal in the end. 204 for four. If you'd like to get in touch, either now or during the tea interval, and uh, would like a a mention on air or you've got any points that you wish to make any of the conversations or discussions we've had today at brace cricket at frank watson 58 and we are going to get a little bit of uh, twirly whirly leg spin from brett Oliveira. yep might squeeze a couple in what, what, mm. what did you say four four, four, four left go, yeah. so yeah he'll probably bowl two and baker will probably bowl two it won't take long um and uh yeah See if he can uh, induce an error, I think. That's probably what he's after. He's not expecting to rip one past the outside edge. But uh, maybe just induce a slight error. Jack Haynes will be nervous against his former teammates. Waits now as Dolivera bowls. Nothing nervous about that as he drives beautifully out on the offside. Good diving stop by... Um, Rob Jones at cover, but they uh, still get a single. Actually, I'm not sure it is Rob Jones. Did Jones come on loan right either. at the end of last season? Did he play? It was Cashew. He did come on yeah. loan. Yeah. Played white ball only. Lancashire, oh, right. Lancashire wouldn't let him play red ball. Okay. He got 100 at Northampton and uh, played beautifully, actually. Well, why wouldn't they let him come for red ball? Because they didn't like the circumstances under which he oh. left, I think. Oh, right. Because... Because you were in Division 2 last year, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Dolivera bowls and uh, Clark pushes out on the onside. And there's no run. Yeah, he just got 100 for them. And uh, and then, having not signed a new contract, it told them he was leaving and they weren't very impressed. Dolivera bowls, Clark drives to long off, Finchfields. They get a single. 206 for four. Clark goes to 89. Mentioned it earlier. It, it, Seemed, you know, not to play Lancashire quite a lot in the, uh, in the various competitions. It seems he's always been in a squad of 12 and always seemed to be 12 men. Oliver Bowles 
driven into the ground, bounces over the bowler's head, no run. Yeah, and I think that's exactly why he decided to leave, because he wasn't getting enough opportunities. Um, ironically, when it came out, he just got 100, at, uh, I think at Blackpool. Oliver Bowles, that one's dragged down a little bit, and Haynes goes on the back foot and chops it away through the offside for a single. The man we're talking about, Rob Jones, does the fielding on the cover boundary. Haynes goes to four, 207 for four. And we've got three overs left after this before T. Last ball of the over, Oliver Bowles, driven by Clark up to long off Finchfield. And they take a single. Clark keeps the strike. He will go to 90. So three overs left to go, I should say, before T. And Joe Clark, who was 16 at lunch, is now on 90. And he's been the dominant figure yeah. this afternoon. Very much so, yeah. I don't think he'll uh, sweat about being no. Uh, no. in the 90s if, if that's what he is at, at T. You don't expect him to be uh, absolutely frenetic in his desire to get these 10 runs. But uh, if Baker... Gives him a couple he could hit. He, he, he could well go 4-6 or 6-4 or six, and, uh, and get there in two balls. But uh, don't expect any um, any errors from here on in. Takes a single. Just by the fact he was so disappointed to get out last week. I think he got out for 104. But uh, and it was compounded by Haynes getting out immediately afterwards. Haynes gets a stride in, blocks this out into the offside. Son of Gavin, former all-rounder. Born in Worcester as well, Jack Haynes. 209 for four. Next ball floated up there and blocked. Where's squad number 30? I don't know what number he had at, uh, at New Road. Hmm. 27, no, was it? No, that might be Darrell Mitchell. Next ball is, uh, 17, there was a 7 in it anyway. Pennington has 18. Not sure what Josh Tongs is. Not seen him on the park. He's injured. Ollie Stone's injured. But the sweep from Haynes will only get a single, but just keeping the board ticking over. Did mean to uh, thank uh, Andy Eason who uh, sent me a photograph of the big day for Will Young and uh, and his bride, the new Mrs. Elise Young. I've uh, just retweeted that at Brace Cricket. Um, Will Young on his uh, on his wedding day, his uh, this last week or so. But he should be here for next weekend's game. 211 for four as the over ends with a push to mid off. Was he at home when he got married then? Home as in New Zealand, I as in, presume. As in, yeah. Yes, the, yeah. No, the reason I ask that is because um, he comes from New Plymouth in the North Island, which is where I spent one season mm. playing. And when I talked to him about it, um, all the people that I played with are the sort of coaches that he's grown up with as a, as a young lad. In it's quite a small town, um, but he was he was thrilled to meet somebody who'd actually been there. Is Brett Oliveira from the Stuart Broad end bowling to Joe Clark, who clips this one away on the onside. Oliveira fields off his own bowling, moving quickly to his right, and there's no run. So just one over left after this till the T interval. Oliveira bowls, and Clark drives up to Finch at long off, halfway back to the boundary, and they take a single. Comfortably enough. Clark goes to 93, 212 for four this morning. Not to won the toss and chose to bat. Hasib Hamid, the captain, was first out. Bowled by Nathan Smith for 11. Two stumps removed from the ground. Caught a spectacular dismissal. That was 19 for one in the fourth over. I'll just break off as Dolavira comes in and bowls to Haynes, who's forward, pushing out on the onside, no run. And the second wicket went down in the eighth over, 34 for two, when Ben Duckett was caught behind by Gareth Roderick, again off Nathan Smith for nine. Dolavira in again to Haynes, bowls, tosses this one up wide outside the off stump, and Haynes drives very nicely for four, beats the tumbling Rob Jones on the extra cover boundary. 
Haynes's first boundary he goes to nine, 216 for four. So 34 for two when Slater and Clark came together. They took it to 83 for two by lunch. And then after lunch, Clark in particular really got stuck in to the Worcestershire bowling. Slater went with the score on 167, strangled down the leg side. Very unfortunate. He was out for 70. Adam Finch, the successful bowler. As Dolivera comes in again and bowls, and Haynes is forward defensively back to the bowler. And then the other wicket to go down this afternoon, that of Montgomery. Well caught by Jason Holder at slip. A smart catch moving to his right, again off the bowling of Nathan Smith for 11. That was 190 for four. This one is short from Dolivera, and uh, Haynes misses out really. Gets a single, cutting it away to Jones on the offside boundary, and he keeps the strike. So these two have added 27 so far for this fifth wicket. Haynes has 10, Clark has 93. And we have one over to go until the T interval. Warwickshire. <laughs> I've not looked at the scores for a while. Obviously, I've been uh, Phil Neil Allen Ormrod in here. I've not looked at the scores for a while. Um, folks, you might want to have a little glance at Edgbaston. Warwickshire, 327 without loss. Crikey. Against Durham. Rob Yates, 175 not out. Alex Davis, 143 not out. Crikey. As, uh, as Frank says, as Baker starts the final over of the session, so it is the final over. I can tell you Essex 267 for four against Kent at Chelmsford. Hampshire 210 for four at the at the bowl. As Baker bowls, and this is uh, cut into the offside. A single for Haynes moves to 11, 218 for four. Four balls before T, and Clark is on 93. At the oval, Somerset 223 for Eight. Good afternoon there for Surrey in the Overton derby. Each uh, each side has got an Overton playing, and um, we've already done Warwickshire Durham. I'll give you Division Two in a moment. 326 without loss. Warwickshire. As this is pushed into uh, the offside. There's no run. Um, Wants to stick. There we are. Glamorgan 171 for four against Derbyshire as Baker bowls. Hey, uh, Clark cuts this for four. So he goes to 97 with two balls left. Double Nelson on the board. 222 for four. So just quickly then. Yorkshire 243 for six at Bristol. Leicester should. Uh, Leicestershire 218 for 5 at home to Sussex and North Ants 183 for 1 at home to Middlesex two balls left Clark on 97 Josh Baker round the wicket comes in tosses this one up and Clark lunging forward just happy to play this one on its merit defend it and there's one ball left before the break loopy full toss to tempt him maybe young <laughs> Master Baker long leg is brought up into the ring not that, uh, not that we've got any rings out there, but you know what I mean. Saving one. Clark has a look round. Anything short, there's uh, an opportunity to get runs on the leg side, but it's short on the off stump, and he's cut this straight to Leach on the point boundary. So he'll get a single, so he will be on strike, at least not for the uh, superstitious. Um, don't go in on 2-2-2 two, two, two for four. They end the session on 223 for four with Joe Clark 98 not out and Jack Haynes on 11 at lunch. Knots were 83 for two, so they've scored 140 for two in that session. And Joe Clark uh, individually has scored 82. A good afternoon for Nottinghamshire. They, uh, they look as if they're in the mood to put a decent score on the board but we thought that at this exact time last week and we're eventually bundled out for just 290 or so um any thoughts frank before uh, we all head off for a, a cuppa it's been uh, an engrossing afternoon made all the better by our guests i think yeah um i think i you know i, I have my doubts as to whether worcestershire gained anything from that period where they tried to go short with finch and uh, and bounce clark out i accept that not a great deal happening. They had to try and come up with something, but uh, personally, I would have preferred to see them still trying to hit the top of off and get people out in a conventional way. But that said, it doesn't look like uh, an easy pitch to bowl on. Um, Knotts will be very pleased 
with their decision to bat first. If they can get 400, then uh, they'll be in a pretty unassailable position, you would imagine, with Worcestershire having to bat last on this pitch. Um, uh, I would say good couple of sessions so far for the home side and uh, Ben Slater laid the foundation. Joe Clark very circumspect early on and has uh, capitalised on that since. Played really well and he looks uh, odds on for a second hundred in two games. Thanks very much to uh, Frank Watson. More from Frank when we come back in uh, 20 minutes time. Two wickets in the session. Ben Slater caught down the leg side by Gareth Roderick from the bowling of Adam Finch for 70. Matthew Montgomery superbly caught by uh, Jason Holder at slip from the bowling of Nathan Smith for 11. It's tea time at Trent Bridge, 223 for four. The players will be back in 20 minutes and so will we.
Well, welcome back to Trent Bridge, everybody. In time for the start of the post tea session here on day one of Nottinghamshire versus Worcestershire in the Vitality County Championship Division 1 match with the home side on 223 for four. A position they've managed to uh, get themselves into thanks to 70 from Ben Slater. And they're the man on your screen, those of you watching the live pictures on the um, on the video stream Joe Clark who will start the third session of the day 98 not out he's got Jack Haynes with him on 11 we've had 64 overs in the day so uh, Worcestershire got a bit of work to do uh, maybe an hour or so before a second new ball would become available should they wish to take it no real reason to think they wouldn't take it but uh, certainly can't afford to let things uh, go idle from their perspective over the next hour and allow knots to pile on the runs in the 16 overs uh, that remain before that second new ball becomes uh, due. If you could give Worcestershire a wish night right now, it would be, uh, I'm sure, the wicket of Joe Clark frustrate him before he gets his 100. But Clark has played beautifully. Nine fours, three sixes been at the crease for 166 deliveries he was mainly watchful the first part of his innings but um, really kicked on after lunch and uh, he's on strike now from Joe Leach on 98 and blocks this first ball uh, Frank's back alongside me um, having done updates and uh, been galloping up and down the sta <laughs> sca stairs and uh, I, have, I have resisted the lift I try to, because uh, otherwise you can just sit around, can't you, in a day's commentary and, yeah, tried to get a few steps in. It's my over, isn't it? Is it me? Yes, I suppose it is, isn't it? That end. Joe Leach. In. Balls. And that's short and wide and clock cracks it away off the back foot. He's only going to get, oh, he'll get two. I was going to say he's yeah, only going to get a single, but... Rob Jones fell over. So 100. Sorry, that's why you were doing it, isn't it? Because you, you, you should have been commentating on the 100. Sorry. Joe Clark's 100. His second in successive games. 168 balls, 224 minutes, nine fours and three sixes. It's the 22nd first class 100 of his career. His ninth for knots. His ninth here at Trent Bridge, eight of them for knots, and uh, of course that big one he got for Worcestershire. Uh, and of course also it's his first against his former county. And he waits again now as Leach bowls, and this one's much straighter, and he's on his toes pushing it back up the pitch. And there's no run. Well, you were talking about what Worcestershire would hope for, Dave, and the, the wicket of Clark. I think every, when, when a player gets 100, you always hope, don't you, that there might just be a little lapse of concentration thereafter, and they'll be hoping that. But as you said quite rightly before T, Clark likes to go big. doesn't often get out just after 100. If he gets 100, he often goes on. Leach in, bowls, and uh, gets a single here, just pushing out on the offside. Jones again is the fielder, 226 for four, 101 to Clark. Great start to the season for him. Hundreds in successive games here at Trent Bridge on the same strip. Jack Haynes, who made 70, I think, didn't he, last week in the first 77, inning? 77, yeah. 77, yeah. Just takes his guard again from umpire Alex Wharf. Two former Worcestershire batsmen at the crease and plenty of Worcestershire players that they played with, particularly Jack Haynes. He waits now as Leach comes in, bowls to him, and he's forward, pushing out on the onside. I was having a look at T, and I, th I think that's something like the 8th century already of the day. Dean Elgar wow. got one uh, on his Chelmsford debut for Essex. Um, Tom Lamanby of Somerset. We know there were two at Edgbaston, Rob Yates and Alex Davis. Uh, it was a century for Shan Masood of Yorkshire. Uh, one for Emilio Gay of North Ants. That's six. Maybe this is the seventh one. Leach in, bold. 
and a run for Jack Haynes just turning this one out to square leg she keeps the strike it was the last ball of the over he goes to 12 227 for four the Nottinghamshire score 31 overs left in the day 65 gone and a good decision to bat when they won the toss very much so yep yeah. just um, again those of you watching the pictures um, just a little montage of some of Joe Clark's uh, more eye-catching shots Josh Baker is going to continue from this Radcliffe Road end 15 overs none for 61 so he's going for about four and over the spinner Haynes is on 12. This pair have added 37, so he's uh, definitely been playing the, uh, the silent partner role. As Baker round the wicket, floats one up down the leg side, helped on its way, and there'll be, well, any number here. Might go for four. If it doesn't go for four, it'll be three. Will it be cut off? It has been cut off down there in the deep, and uh, they do run three, so Jack Haynes given the opportunity to sweep, and puts that away nicely seems to me like he enjoys that shot and if I've spotted it already in the brief times I've uh, been watching him um, Worcester should, should know it really and there's no protection for him just to go down on one knee and sweep it fine mm. it was a it was a ill-directed delivery yeah. as well wasn't it really to be fair but it does seem he likes to play it so a number of sweeps from him last week here's Baker now to Clark uh, blocks this one. Clark on 101. So he got to 104 and, and just dollied up a simple catch at mid on last week. Let's see what he does here. Partnership of 40 now. Baker bowls and he's in uh, defensive blocking mode. Came to the crease in the eighth over of the morning when Nottinghamshire lost Ben Duckett soon after a Seba Mead had gone push to the cover region, no run 2.30 for 4 it's been a pleasant day there's not been uh, a cold biting wind that very much characterised the opening match every day as Clark gets a single down the ground flags we can see are just uh, barely rippling I don't think it's been particularly warm but it is still early April after all but at least dry. Expected to certainly remain dry all of tomorrow, all of Sunday, as Haynes digs this out and plays it back to the bowler. Monday's a, a little iffy at the moment, but of course there's still plenty of time for that to change, and who knows one way or another how much cricket we might need to uh, to get a result on Monday. We might still be here watching a, a thrilling finish at 7 o'clock Monday evening, or it might be done lot earlier you just uh, you just never know one of the joys of coming to watch a county championship game here's uh, Master Leach going to take over the bowling duties I think he's bowled the first over of the first session yeah. uh, second session and now uh, yeah. now the third and he comes in now to roll to Clark and Clark is uh, how often have we seen that from Joe Clark just moving inside it and working it to that field at mid wicket Adam Hose, no run. Warwickshire did lose a wicket right on tee, typically. Uh, Rob Yates out for 191, so they were 346 for one at tee. Warwickshire against Durham. I think they were close to a record, weren't they, for the first wicket. I'm just going to have a check. As Leach turns, moves in again to ball to Clark, and Clark is on the back foot pushing out defensively on the offside and they get a single 377 was their first wicket partnership mm. Norman Horner and uh, Billy Abadulla oh, at the, the Oval record. in 1960 Billy Abadulla, Carly um, yeah we mentioned Laura earlier didn't we uh, 20 years since he got his 400 of course that was the uh, that was the Laura match wasn't it Warwickshire versus Durham at Edgbaston all those years yeah, ago it was poor old Chris Scott yeah 232 for four as Leach moves in again and bowls to Haynes who is forward blocking this one out on the offside Haynes has 15 off 33 
Clark 103 off 176. The other main contributor to this total, Ben Slater, who made 70 before he was really unlucky. Tickle down the leg side off Adam Finch, taken by Gareth Roderick. Bit of luck for Worcestershire that they needed in the afternoon session. But they've got to be patient, persevering, inventive on this surface, which is offered little in the way of lateral movement from what we can see. One slip, the only close catcher, as Leach moves in again. Bowls and Haynes is taken on the pads. A big shout for LBW. And he's given. He can't believe it. Jack Haynes. He's got his head in his hands. He cannot believe it. Took a long time to give it. Alex mm. Wolf. The appeal was sort of protracted, and the longer it went on, the more he was influenced, and he raised his finger. Jack Haynes is dragging yeah. himself off. Whether he thinks he hit it or not, I don't know. I thought it might have been a little bit high. Joe Leach celebrates. As if he's won the World Cup. <laughs> 2.32 for five. I haven't seen a replay yet. No. But, uh, I've rarely seen Jack walk off slower than that. Here we go with a replay. Haynes made 15, no. 40 minutes at the crease, one 34 those, balls. One of those replays where uh, it just seems a bit jerky and blurred and can't really tell. Maybe they'll show it again. Anyway, a wicket for Joe Leach and a wicket for Worcestershire in this evening session. Jack Haynes out for 15. Yep, and uh, again, I know it, it's boring to keep repeating, but it is consistent with what we saw last week. Mm. Um, the final session, each day producing the most wickets. Um, Lyndon James on his way out to the middle. Well, I have to see if we can get a replay of that. I think I've got it here, but I'm not sure. It there must be a ball behind. I was going to. They've put the wrong video on, I think, on uh, NV Play, because I just looked at that and it's a perfectly solid forward defensive. <laughs> but uh, certainly, Jack Haynes. Desperately disappointed. Linda James last week made eight in the first inning, seven not out in the second left. High and dry. Very capable performer for Knots to have coming in at uh, number seven in the order as uh, a personal best of a 164 not out. This is his 44th match. Averages 32 with the bat as uh, three first last hundreds. As Leach comes in and bowls to him, and he's off the mark straight away, pushing this one away on the offside off the back foot. And uh, I think I've got this. I'm going to see if I can see this replay now. No, that's still the one where he blocks it. Uh, they haven't got the right one on yet. Anyway, he's gone. It's in the book, as they say, but he was very, very disappointed. He couldn't, he actually couldn't believe it. No. He must have been close to. Taking <laughs> too long and uh, getting himself in a bit of trouble, I would have thought. You don't have to do too much these days. Leach in. Bowls to Clark on the back foot. Pushes out on the offside. Good run. Good run. Despite sharp fielding from Jones. Yes, he's uh, an ebullient character in the field. Rob Jones quickly to it and shy. There was always the risk there. That could have been four overthrows had it been uh, a particularly wild effort or clipped off the stumps with Gareth Roderick unable to do anything but uh, the keeper took it nicely 2-3-4-4-5 four, four, is the uh, Nottinghamshire score Joe Clark on last week's score of 104 Lyndon James off the mark with a single and uh, we've had 67 overs in the innings so Leach has got his first wicket one for 45 you'd imagine Worcestershire would want him to take the second new ball so don't expect this to be a particularly long spell after tea from Leach if he is going to take that second new ball there's Baker bowls now to uh, Clark who defends we've uh, we thought we were in for uh, 
a spare pair of glasses there as uh, this is pushed into the offside. Alan Ormrod just uh, popping back up to, to claim his lost property. Correct. Can't do without. No. <laughs> <laughs> 2.34 for five. Alan Ormrod was with us before tea. I've, I've actually looked at them a couple of times and presumed it was your glasses case as this is uh, pushed back to the bowler. That is, uh, that is T without his, without his bins. Dear old Alan, there's Baker. Bowls cut away into the offside by Joe Clark. So a season best now for Clark. Betters is 104 for, uh, from last week onto 105. And how Knotts will rejig their lower order. I'd imagine it would be. Liam Patterson White, the left hander in next before Calvin Harrison. Might, may go the other way. Won't know until the wicket falls as James defends. Tall man, former Oakham school pupil, has inherited the number eight shirt vacated by Stuart Broad. Nice uh, passing of shirt number to uh, the youngster right at the end of last season from Stuart. Did a lot of things on the last day and. Uh, all the media and more wanting to speak to him came up and had an hour or so with us in the commentary box and was up here to commentate when the first wicket fell under the newly named Stuart Broad end taken by Jay Ball. 2.36 for five, James has two, Clark has 105. The wicket to go down since T, Jack Haynes LBW to Joe Leach for 15. Six bowlers used, three wickets to Nathan Smith. He's clearly the standout, three for 49. Leach and Finch with the other wickets to fall. Leach it is to continue. Still got those two men catching close in, in front of the wicket on the leg side. Balls and Lyndon James is pushing this one up to Nathan Smith at mid on. Uh, Nick Morell's uh, reminded me, pointed it out last week, he's pointed it out a couple of times, and I always forget, but whenever Joe Clark, you, you might know this, uh, but Nick has certainly spotted it in his time as a Nottinghamshire player. Um, when he gets a milestone, takes his helmet off to acknowledge, the knuckles go to the temple, something Nick has always said, mm. and I've always tried to remember to look, but haven't. Leech again bowls and James is uh, fortunate looking to push this one away on the offside. Gets an inside edge down to long leg for two. No, I don't know why. No, I, I must, can't I must ask him next ask time, him. I think, but um, you know, probably just a you know, reset, re go again, reprogram, and re go again. I often say it when you see a, a batter who scored a hundred, ask for a fresh guard. No, he was uh, he's digging in for another one, but uh, Clark tapping his knuckles. Thanks Nick. James goes to four on strike again now as Leach comes in from the Stuart Broad end and bowls and he's working this one away on the onside fielded by Baker. No, Hose. One of two players in a sort of short mid wicket. Holder at slip, the other catcher. We've got a backward point, cover mid off Deep backward square and a mid on. Thanks very much to Mark Hutchinson, who was another one who uh, remembered it was Harry Redknapp's first game that Lincoln 9 Bournemouth nil. It was brought up because Phil Neal played in that game. Phil Neal, former Worcestershire player, of course, now president, who earlier came and had a chat with us. Leach bowls, forward comes Lyndon James, plays it straight back up the pitch, hits the stumps at the Far end, no run, 238 for five. And Bournemouth, of course, they had a 9 0, didn't they? they? Was it Maidstone United or when Ted didn't Ted McDougall Ted score? Ted McDougall, yeah. Did he, how many did he score? I'm not he sure. scored six, I think. I'm, sure. uh, um, I'm sure it was a 9 0. Just seen that Anthony the Gibson, cup. the uh, Somerset commentator. Uh, even by the standards of Somerset batting collapses, that was awful. Collective brain fade. 196 for one, 216 for eight. Crikey. Uh. Leach to James. <laughs> pushes out on the offside, fielded by Rob Jones. It can happen. It can happen. You never know when it's going to happen. 
Let's hope it happens to Somerset next week. Unlikely. Yeah. Notts haven't got a great record at Taunton. But that's what that's that's why fielders just have to hang in yeah. there and be patient and persevere. Somebody comes along, and gets a hat trick. Yeah. Game changes. Two thirty eight for five here. Twenty seven overs left after this delivery. Leach to James Bowles, and he's on the back foot, playing defensively back at the pitch. Tidy over from Joe Leach, 15 overs, one maiden. One for 47 for the Worcestershire beneficiary. Josh Baker will continue from the other end, 17 overs, three maidens, no wicket for 67. He's been quite tidy, the youngster, despite getting a bit of stick from Joe Clark post-lunch. He's uh, pulled it back quite well, bowled quite nicely. Early season, I always think it's difficult for the spinners, although he was away over the winter, Josh Baker in Australia, got quite a few overs under his belt out there, I think, quite successfully. So uh, probably not like in the old days where a spinner felt he had to bowl a couple of hundred overs before mm. he really regained his rhythm. Great for a young man, isn't it, going to spend a, a winter down in Australia and just helps you with your cricket, with your with yourself really 238 mm. for five get away from mum and dad or whoever it is who looks after you and just get out there in the big wide world see something different a bit of exploration a bit of learning a different culture meeting new friends this is uh, two quick deliveries sent down and blocked quick in senses of uh, how few seconds it took can absolutely race through and over I would imagine Baker Three maidens to his name already, and now halfway to another. If you come into the ground over the weekend, can I point Nottinghamshire supporters in the direction of the Nottinghamshire Cricket Annual? The new one is uh, is just out. It's always published by the Nottingham Cricket Lovers Society. Really, really good read. And there's a wicket for Baker as Clark goes to court, and he's gone for 105. Disappointment again. Clark has to trudge off the Worcestershire players all go to Baker one or two uh, congratulating Gareth Roderick never easy standing up but that one just obligingly just clipped the outside edge and landed in the gloves and Clark has to go caught Roderick bold Baker for 105 faced 185 balls was at the crease for uh, four hours nine fours and three sixes and Joe Clark has once again got a ton and then got out and once again it's uh, the last thing that Nottinghamshire needed as the uh, as the lower order potentially are going to be exposed either side of the second new ball might not get to that might not get to that still some way to go 238 for six another big wicket for Worcestershire we're enjoying a fine little spell here straight after tea well the one thing I would say is that earlier on Three, four times Josh Baker beat Joe Clark on the cut like that, and I thought it was the arm ball, and Roderick took it. Probably uh, in not not in any quick succession, but interspersed throughout the day. Um, and he probably on those occasions thought, oh, he might just have got a nick. And uh, on that occasion, the ball, I think, just carried on with the arm a little bit too close for the cut, and he's ended up nicking it and as you say Dave good catch by Gareth Roderick they're always good catches standing up mm. and um, he took it nicely little bit of luck a breakthrough Josh Baker has earned it in my opinion and um, well you know Worcestershire now will be hoping as you say with the new ball not too far away that uh, they'll be sniffing further inroads, won't they? They'll be uh, hoping they can wrap it up today, I would think. We've Calvin. still got 26 overs left in the day. Calvin Harrison has uh, got to just have a reset, these two now, I think, haven't they? Come in ahead of Liam Patterson White. Baker bowls to him and he defends this one. Sort of replay of it, and no, it, it wasn't actually all that close to him. It oh, was a ball. I beg to your pardon. No, I, just, beg your pardon. I just yeah. saw the replay there, Frank, and it just yeah. turned away. Nice little oh, bit did it? from okay. Baker. He went to cut so it. So didn't go on with the arm, no. There you go. Next ball is uh, blocked back to Baker. So no, I was kind uh, of... Um, got I was his wicket, 238 for six. I was kind of basing that on the ones that happened yeah, earlier in the yeah. day, you know, and uh, and it, it wasn't well. Good good, good reward for him then, well, well bowled. 
But yeah, reset needed by these two, I would suggest. Just two or three overs of circumspection. And an interesting bowling change because Adam Finch is being brought into the attack at the Stuart Broad end. This is the, probably the second new ball is uh, is coming into the thinking. Mm. It's, it's one of those, isn't it? As, as the skipper, do you press now and try and bowl them out before mm. the second new ball, or do you think, well, it, I think I've got one away available in yeah. ten overs, so yeah, Baker's going to bowl five of them pretty quickly. Yeah. I think I think he'll be keeping Smith back for the new ball, but we shall see. But Finch it is who is entrusted with taking up the attack now from the Stuart Broad end. Got Slater, didn't he, with one that drifted down the leg side and, yeah. uh, and Slater. Beat the bat two or three times this morning from that end with balls that climbed a little bit quite steeply. And he's got uh, a leg slip and a conventional slip. As he comes in and bowls and Lyndon James is pushing this one up to mid on. So Worcestershire have fought back well actually I think from 190 for three. had one message that says that uh, Jack Haynes must have hit it because it did look quite straight but um, don't know hard to tell <laughs> a message that will amuse you I'll just tell you about this is Lyndon James tickles this one from Adam Finch down to Joe Leach at long leg for a single a message from Josh Baker's dad who said you said <laughs> they, it's a good experience getting away from mum and dad and he says yeah we had a great time <laughs> while he was away <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that Paul You'll be pleased to have seen that wicket, I'm sure, in that last over. No, you know the spirit. It was, it was intended. I do, of I mean, course. It's great. You know, I'd, I'd have, you know anybody yeah, would love it, absolutely. wouldn't they? Yeah, I did it when I was a young, yeah. uh, young player. Great experience. Finch again bowls, and this one is uh, Harrison's first run as he tucks it off his pads down to Leach again at backward square leg. 240 for six. Harrison on one. James on five. And... The men out in order of dismissal. Hamid, 11. Duckett, 9. Slater, 70. Montgomery, 11. Haynes, 15. And a moment ago, Joe Clark for a brilliant 105. Adam Finch moving in towards us. Tall, angular bowls in behind that. Lyndon James punching it up to Nathan Smith at mid-on. And there's no run. Any positive I can uh, I can see in that Joe Clark dismissal was how, how annoyed he was again at getting out. Mm. And 104 last week. If we, yeah. if we can pencil him now for 106 in the first innings at Taunton next week, well, well he didn't. We'll take that. He didn't whack it down long on's no, throat either, no. did he? This time, I suppose. Just an error of judgment. Been out there for a long time. Had played really well. Finch in bowls to James, turning this again down to long leg. Suggestion from the reaction of the bowler, hands thrown skywards, that had he missed it, it might have been an appeal, but he didn't. And Leach has been a busy man down there at long leg in this over, chatting to his coach, Alan Richardson, on the boundary, does the fielding. One ball left in the 71st over. And it's Adam Finch to deliver it. Balls and forward comes Harrison. Not very far forward. Just uh, gets on top of it, turns it down on the leg side, and there's no run at the end of the over. 241 for six. It's been an interesting day with all our guests, hasn't it? We've yeah. had some variety up here in the box. It's been good fun. Very much so, yep. Uh, Calvin Harrison, 25 years of age. Um, I'm sure Worcestershire um, supporters, followers will have uh, become aware of him over the last. Uh, two or three years. Only played 11 first-class games now, a couple for Oxford University before 
joining Knotts, played uh, nine previous matches for Knotts as a best of 39, but has really made an impression over the last couple of years in the white ball. He's, uh, he's played in the 100, had a five for last year in the 100. I think he was the first bowler to do that in that competition as uh, Baker bowls to Lyndon James, who defends. Um, just wondered, I saw Liam Patterson-White uh, in the squad, whether uh, it may be one spinner in, one spinner out, but not playing them both in this game. Calvin Harrison, the leg spinner, and Liam Patterson White, the slow left arm. Is Lyndon James again blocking. 241 for six here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester as Baker again bowls to Lyndon James. And it's defended. So that wicket for Baker ends a sequence of wickets for the Seamers. Five to the Seamers and one to the spinner as this one's turned to mid wicket. Worcestershire have their second bowling bonus point as well for snaring that sixth wicket. Not still nine runs away from the first batting point as Lyndon James mistimes a drive. Liam Patterson White, Luke Fletcher, and Dylan Pennington to come. As Baker bowls push into the offside is nicely fielded be very interesting tomorrow afternoon end of the over 241 for six if Worcestershire are batting Luke Fletcher's out on the field big Forest fan and um, Forest are playing as Frank knows uh, only too well Forest are playing uh, just over the road behind us tomorrow there'll be all sorts of uh, noises drifting across well, not so much drifting across as, uh, as drowning out whatever's going on here particularly the pre-match music and the yeah. tannoy announcements it's always very very loud coming across the road here and as I say Luke Fletcher a big fan he doesn't miss many matches except for when he's cricketing and when he's on the outfield or when he's bowling he's, uh, he's always turning and cupping his ear and asking people what's going on over the road <laughs> so uh, there's often a, a little bit of byplay out there and if, uh, if there's a huge huge roar and he knows they've scored it's, uh, it's fun to watch because he'll be running around like a madman and We've seen that in the past with Stuart Broad and Samit Patel, who equally were big Nottingham Forest fans when they've all been on the outfield. Seen them have a little bit of a dance together. 2.41 for six. Adam Finch bowls down the leg side to Harrison, who looks to clip it away but misses it, taken by Roderick. Well, if Worcestershire are in the field tomorrow, well, they won't be. Obviously, yeah. if well, if they are, you might it might work the other way because... Um, Joe Leach and Adam Finch are both big Wolves fans. Are they? <laughs> um, indeed, we did a, a, an event for the Joe Leach testimonial a few weeks ago in a pub in Wolverhampton with Steve Bull and Matt Murray and Joe up on stage together, which was an excellent evening. Adam Finch. Oh, that short and wide outside the off stump. Very, very ill-directed, left alone wisely by Harrison and taken by Roderick tumbling to his right 241 for six so who's that joe leach and joe him? leach and adam finch yeah joe joe in particular but finch is also <laughs> always fun be, yeah. yeah and it's a funny it's an interesting one for me tomorrow because i've done all wolves home games this year bar one and i've done a lot of forest home games as well so uh, the two come together i saw the game at molyneux earlier in the year Finch in bowls down the leg side again to Harrison. He didn't quite know which side. He's going to get a jaffer in a minute, isn't he? Yeah, one down the off, one down yeah. the leg, one down the off. Yeah. Of course, tomorrow is uh, it's also Grand National Day, isn't Grand it? Grand National Day. Um, I was talking to Will Smith, who's the match referee this morning, and he uh, he tends to know about these things. I think he, uh, Did he give you a tip? Limerick something or other. OK, I need one because I apparently one of the radio stations that I'm going to be working for tomorrow, they want each... <laughs> reporter to give their tip before the race Next Finch ball. again bowls this one is straight and Harrison on the back foot pushes it into the covers uh, I, hope no I'm, uh, I hope I'm not breaking any confidences there uh, Will if, you, if you're listening and we know the officials listen and it was, <laughs> it was funny last week I know you've had a chat to Mr O'Shaughnessy uh, yeah. during the week when you, when you saw him but um, Don Topley uh, did the game last week with me, the first two days for BBC Essex, and, uh, and he went and had a natter to the umpires. And um, apparently they, they've got an earpiece in here, the match referee and, uh, and what have you. As Finch comes in again, 
balls and that's down the leg side and uh, Harrison misses out thinks he should have got a bat on that one and I don't know if it's Steve O'Shaughnessy or Tom Longley but one of them told Don Topley I was fiddling about trying to get it to work my, my earpiece and I fiddled it onto the live commentary so for <laughs> half an hour I was listening to you two so uh, it may well be that the umpires have uh, Oh, it'd From be great if you knew, wouldn't yeah, it? It'd be it would. great. We could have some real fun, couldn't we? Yeah, give us a wave. Yeah. Do a David Shepherd hop that's, on one foot. I'm sure three. that's over, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one ball left. Finch changing the field. Sends a man back from uh, leg slip, leg gully to deep backward square. He comes in now. And he just back of a length and punched up to mid on by Harrison. A real curate's egg of an over, that one from Finch. Two down the off, two down the leg and two straight. <laughs> 241 for six at the end of it. Looks 23 good. left in the day. Looks good in the book there, doesn't it? Six dots. 241 for six, that's his first maiden. Uh, it was. It well, was all over the place. Yeah. 73 overs of now gone. One or two more people coming in. They want uh, Friday afternoon early knock-off. 2.41 for six. I must keep aware of uh, the five o'clock um, BBC Radio Nottingham update. I've got to confess that my four o'clock one came just as I took a mouthful of sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Sat here with me. Not the first on. time. There's Baker around the wicket. Floats it up to uh, Lyndon James. Hopefully I uh, managed to sound fairly coherent for a change. bit of encouragement out there now Worcestershire sense that there's still an opportunity to uh, pull knots out today this one's drilled into the offside who's that there in, in Adam the Hose close? Adam Hose the Isle of White it's Adam Hose 241 for six next ball is uh, cut away into the offside or behind square on the offside and uh, they'll get a single should recognise Adam Hose actually uh, I actually commentated on, here we go, name drop, uh, in the uh, in the Caribbean. He, he was part of um, that North v South uh, series back in 2018 that uh, covered for the BBC out there. 2.42 for six. And Joe Clark was the man of the series. As, uh, this is defended Stephen Mullaney's North beating uh, whoever it was, the skipper of the, the South, Nick Gubbins, uh, not uh, Nick Gubbins. Um, Sam Northeast. Sam Northeast. He was the skipper of the South team. 242 for six. Calvin Harrison on one. His first class score of 39 pushes us back to the bowler, but has a century on this ground. And it was an innings that changed his life, really. Came here with Oxford University or Oxford MCCU three, four years ago. Pre season friendly, scored 100. Gone after that one, hit it up in the air, and it just falls behind oh. Holder and Hose, and they get a single. Not Hose, behind Holder certainly, and uh, they get a, a single. Um, that was a loose shot from Calvin Harrison, and uh, and he gets a run. Um, yeah, he got a, a century here against Knotts in a pre-season friendly. They like to the look of him, and more so when they saw his leg spin, gave him a trial, and the rest, as they say, is history. But a, uh, um, it was Finch that uh, that one fell between. Sliced off the outside edge, landed between Holder and Finch. 243 for six. Yeah, well, right place, right time. Take mm. your opportunities and yeah. all that kind of thing. And I, th I always think with those games that, that there is always that possibility, isn't there? That somebody will be spotted. It's Finch bowls and Harrison is forward. Pushes straight back to the bowler. Yeah, it wasn't a complete unknown to the counties because the season before, so was that 20 or 21, um, it played a few blast games, or in fact two blast games for Hampshire when Mason okay. Crane was out injured. Hampshire had had a little look, but clearly they, um, they felt they'd got enough leg spin cover with Mason Crane, who ironically has now been let out somewhere, hasn't he? He's gone somewhere for a season's loan. There's Finch, again in, bowls, turned on the leg side by Harrison, picks up a single, Hose fields on the boundary, 244 for six, Harrison goes to three. 
Well, it's not a world of difference having two right-handers out there or a right-hander and a left-hander, but I, I would have sent Liam Patterson mm. White in ahead of Calvin mm. Harrison for a number of reasons. Does have a first-class 100. Very capable player. Good player to have coming in at nine. Finch in. Balls to James, who pushes out on the offside. It's all gone very quiet, yeah, hasn't I, it? I was just thinking this is great for Worcestershire because had Clark been there, yeah. his cricket, cricket instinct would be, well, the ball's as soft as it's going to be now. For the rest of the day, we've got to whatever it would be, five, six, seven, eight, nine overs to go before the taking of the second near ball. Time for me to tuck in. Um, but he's not there to do it. And so Worcestershire can bowl at these two relatively freshly at the crease and they're not scoring any runs from the, this old dog-chewed ball. There's Finch again, balls down the leg side. Loose. James flicks at it. Doesn't get anything on it. Missed it by quite a long way. I think it was so wide. And Roderick skipping mm. across to his left takes. I think when that last wicket, well, I was just giving a bit of a plug for the Nottinghamshire yeah. cricket annual. If you are coming, folks, uh, over the weekend, it's a terrific read. Everything obviously to do with knots, all the age groups, the women's uh, game as well, right across the county and the county sides. Here's Finch in, balls, pushed out on the offside by James. And they pick up a single as Cashew Fowley does the fielding. 2.45 for six. It always sounds good on the highlights when you're just giving a uh, when, when you're just giving a plug for something. Well, we've plugged a few things today. Tim Jones's book, mm. Joe Leach and uh, Stephen Mullaney's testimonials. Do get in touch with either Stephen Mullaney's website or Joe Leach's if you're a Worcestershire or a Nottinghamshire fan interested in attending one of the events. Finch Bowls. Forward comes Harrison, plays up to mid off, no run, end of the over, 245 for six. James eight, Harrison three, the two men out since T, Jack Haynes, LBW to Joe Leach for 15, and Joe Clark caught behind by Gareth Roderick off the bowling of Josh Baker for 105. Uh, Worcestershire have just done a swap over, I think we've had a sub on. Um, is this the skipper coming back? Yeah. So, five overs to go before that second new ball is available. Doesn't have to be taken, of course. Ethan Brooks, I think it was. You'd, uh, you'd imagine they'll uh, yeah to go with that second new <coughs> ball. So Worcestershire would love to get another wicket before then, as Baker bowls to Lyndon James. Blocks this one. He's on eight. A little bit of movement at the far end, the pavilion end bowling's from this end so it doesn't matter but a few people wandering about next one's cut away by James for a boundary behind uh, point well, clatters into well it would have clattered into the uh, the bricks at the base of the Fox Road stand but it got caught up in a one of the ground staff's tarpaulins that have been deposited over there James on to 12 his highest score of the season and not so one run away from getting their first batting point of the match James again cuts and he will get uh, a single. It's a good stop out there from Leach. It is just the single. 250 up, 250 for six. So in terms of bonus points, it's Worcestershire two, Nottinghamshire one. That's bottom of the table. I mean, lost to Essex. Got just four points from last week's game. It's the only match out of the nine the uh, first week of the season that ended in a result so uh, very positive start for Essex last ball was blocked here's Baker in again bowls and Harrison again just happy to see the ball just come off the face of the bat drop on the leg side there's no run 20 overs left in the day if we get them all in and uh, it's defended right now you'd say well no reason why we shouldn't 250 for six after 76 overs knots going along at 3.3 and over and with Lyndon James Calvin Harrison at the crease Patterson White Fletcher and Pennington to come just wonder how many they can 
actually get a little bit of bat in there but likewise another couple of wickets and uh, and they'll be they'll be fearful of getting any more batting points a good day for Worcestershire if they can bowl knots out today yeah yeah I think so I think I have to say it's slightly in favour of the batting side because of the, the potential they still have to go on to a big score but yeah, un under 300, I think mm. Worcester should be yeah. fairly happy with. Yeah, especially as they lost the toss. If they'd won the toss and put yeah. the toss in, they might yeah. view it slightly differently. But yeah, Finch to continue from the Stuart Broad end. Balls to uh, James, who clips him very nicely through mid-wicket, but he'll only get a single because Adam Hose is on the boundary out there and he's quite quickly in to do the fielding. James goes to 14. Two five one four six. Yeah, I generally think Worcestershire have been tidy mm. for me, apart from that one little period that uh, I thought they ran about the sort of thirty-five to forty-five over mark. Yeah. You know, they tried to bounce Joe Clark out, and it cost them. They bounced him in, in fact. Mm. As Finch bowls, and this one's pushed up to mid on. Have we gone off again? Why, did, why does that happen? I don't know. I have no idea why. Um, we should still be on for the uh, live stream, so most people who are on the live stream would uh, still be with us, but it looks like we dropped off air momentarily via the BBC Sport website. We should be back now, so uh, apologies if you did lose us briefly. I think you missed one delivery. No addition to the total here, 251 for six. Finch again, then. Last umpire Alex Wharf, the taller of the two. And he bowls, and Harrison is very solidly forward, playing it back up the pitch. There is very little in the way of lateral movement at the moment, but that might change, as Dave was suggesting, in three and a half overs' time when the new ball is due. Probably see Nathan Smith take it. With, I don't know, possibly Jason Holder. Be an update for BBC Radio Nottingham listeners coming shortly. Here we go. Where Nottinghamshire, 251 for six now. They've got themselves into a really good position. 70 from Ben Slater, century from Joe Clark, but then just as he did last week, uh, went past three figures and got out for 105. Still got 19 overs to go in the day, so a little bit of cricket still to be played yet. Nottinghamshire, 252 for six. We're in the 77th over of the innings now, so uh, that second new ball. Not too far away. Finch in. Bowls. And James is forward. Playing back up the pitch to the bowler. JC's been back. Um, says Baker picked up 50 wickets this winter playing New South Wales grade cricket. He also trained with the stateside. And he had a bowl in the nets at the Pakistan batters before the test against Australia. Thanks, oh, JC. Right. That's it, isn't it? Good experience. Good experience for the parents when their son goes abroad and <laughs> good experience for the son as well. Here's Finch down the leg side. That's uh, four runs tickled very fine down to the fine leg boundary. And not for the first time, the last over of, the last ball of an over from Adam Finch is... Uh, Expensive, and it goes to the boundary. 256 for six. Then Lyndon James goes to 18. Calvin Harrison has four. If you're just joining us, and I know people are just joining, especially at this time of day, getting in from work, etc., or getting in the car on the way home, not to win the toss. Lost two early wickets, 34 for two. The men out, Hamid and Duckett, 11 and nine respectively. But since then. Clark's 100 and Slater's 70 have seen them into a relatively strong position. Baker bowls and Calvin Harrison drives it on the bounce back to the spinner. Harrison.
it's an on four. Here it comes again, lovely rhythmical action, high action bowls, and Calvin Harrison blocks it. Boulder, superb ball, Calvin Harrison, typical leg spinner's wicket to uh, get rid of Jordan Cox in the Essex match. Goes deep in his crease and defends. It was, uh, if you think Warren Gatting, it was, it, it was that sort of dismissal. Pitched leg-ish and turned and clipped the top of off. A wonderful, wonderful bit of leg spin bowling to a fellow that was nicely set on 70. Defends again Calvin Harrison. Got a couple of wickets in the second innings as well. I think uh, many people feel he was a little bit under bowled. 2.56 for six as he defends again. And it was one of those games for Notts where you really were looking for reasons why they were so heavily beaten. Could he have done this? Could he have done that? Etc. Etc. It's uh, it's one that's reconciled to history now. It's got a bit of help in the spin department this game with Patterson White playing as the over ends with another push into the offside straight to the field. Uh, 78 overs gone, 256 for Nottinghamshire. With 18 overs still to go in the day, five past five ish. So. We, uh, we're going to have a bit of overtime and we're going to have a, a seventh bowler used here, Frank. Yeah, Kashif going to have a little little roll. Kashif Ali, who until yesterday I, I wasn't aware of, don't get the chance to see much second 11 cricket, but he has played for Nottinghamshire seconds. Yeah, at, uh, I think he played for six second 11s. Yeah, five or six games back in 2018 or so, something like that. I think he played for six second 11s mm. before anybody took him on Worcestershire took the plunge and it's paid off handsomely it's another leg here the way he's uh, mixes it up a bit twirling it around yeah mixes it up comes in there and balls and that one just tickled away on the onside to mid wicket he did last year have a problem with no balls particularly in the nets I know but uh, bowled a couple of overs last week without any problems I think short run up and bowls leg spinner pushed through that one a little bit short again played off the back foot by James out on the offside no run not sure it even qualifies as a run up <laughs> no. just two steps isn't it 256 for six he comes in now and bowls and that one's clipped away on the onside by James comfortable single Hose the fielder out on the boundary. Certainly Finch, in fact. Certainly shouldn't bowl no balls off uh, no, it's, those uh, few paces. No. There are all sorts of reasons that spinners yeah. shouldn't bowl no balls, but sometimes they do, don't they? Yeah. James has gone to 19. 257 for six. Harrison just uh, adjusting his grip slightly. Waits now as Kashif is in. Bowls, that's a better one. Good length. Maybe end of turn away from the right-hander. Taken by Roderick. Left alone by the batsman. In again. Kashif bowls. Good delivery. Nice pace. A little bit of loop. Pushed away on the offside. No run. Getting through the over quickly. Which is what it's all about, I think, from Brett D'Oliveira's point of view. Just get to that new ball. One over after this. Kashif bowls and uh, ooh, finds the edge, but uh, there'll be a couple of runs for Harrison. Off the edge, running down past Holder at slip. D'Oliveira pursues it. Libby, in fact, pursues it down to third man. Throws on the turn. End of the over. Harrison 6, James 19. 259 for 6. One over to go till the new ball. 17 left in the day. No sides have been bowled out as yet. Somerset the closest. They're nine down at the oval. 270 for nine at the other end of the spectrum. Warwickshire still only one down. 390 for one. I've had a really good day with the uh, the bat there. In fact, he just changes to 392 for one. Alex Davis, 174 not out. Rob Yates made 191. Poor old Durham who uh, came up with Worcestershire last year. In fact, Durham came up as champions, of course, there. Getting a bit of a larruping. That off the back of a complete four-day washout last week. 
Over number eight he begins then. Baker to Lyndon James. Just plays this calmly and carefully into the offside for a single. James goes to 20. 260 for six knots. Will they be vulnerable to that second new ball? Are we going to get Nathan Smith straight into the attack as next one's dropped to mid wicket? One or two starting to loosen up. Sixty for six. Baker. Balls again turned onto the leg side. And there's no run, another dot. Done a good job, Baker. This is his twenty-third over, but you'd imagine in three deliveries time he'll uh, be able to take his sweater from umpire Debenham and concentrate solely on his fielding effort for the next however long. If the seamers do what he's hoping, then might have bowled his last over of the innings after this one's completed. 260 for six. He's in again and bowls. A little bit of turn. But Harrison won't want to get out to another member of the spinners' union. Blocks this one. for six. Lots have lost a lot of the momentum obviously they had when Joe Clark in particular was going along well. Another block from Harrison. Jack Haynes certainly from his actions feels he was a little unlucky. Almost had to be Dragged off the field, didn't want to go. Another one's punched into the covers, so that's really, really good from Baker. He's impressed today. 23 over six maidens, one for 79. That's not going to leap off the page. That's not going to make you think, uh, wow. But um, he's bowled well today. Went for three sixes off Joe Clark, but held his nerve and has, uh, has really bowled well. We can see a second new ball in the umpire's pocket right yeah, now. Joe Leach is walking in with mm. his cap in his hand as well. So uh, it'll be Leach and Smith, I reckon. Alex Wolf has just just dropped something there. He just dropped something, Mr. Wolf, the umpire, and uh, Cashy Valley's just picked it up and given it back to him. Might have been the polythene bag that the ball's been taken out of. It uh, looks very much as if Worcestershire are going to take it straight away. Yeah. 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 Leach, definitely. Smith. Smith warming up, and where is Smith? So it'll be Leach from the Stuart Broad end, just moving the fielder at two. Uh, Long leg round to the, his left. And in comes Leach now. Bowls, first ball with the new ball. Pushed back up the pitch by Lyndon James. And we've got Ed Pollock on as a sub, by the look of it, down at long leg. It's Nathan Smith that isn't on, I think. He might be changing his boots or something like that. No, he is on, he's at mid on. And he's bolted bowling the ball to Dolivier, so I think he will be joining the attack. Here's Leach in. James is forward. Punching up to mid-off. Yes, it would have been a bold call to take the second near ball if uh, you'd only got one of your yeah. prospective new ball bowlers on the field. Yeah. Although I thought, I suppose Jason Holder's taken the new yeah. ball a oh, good yeah. few times yeah. in his career. But Smith's been the standout today, there's no yeah. doubt about that for Worcestershire. Good from Baker though, I think. 23 yeah. over 6, Maidens 1 for 75. Leach in, bowls. That's wide and hammered through the covers for 4 by James. A gift from Leach. Wide half volley, no pace. And 
Not going to miss out on that, Lyndon James. 24 now to him. 38 balls faced. 264 for six. Could be a crucial little spell in the context of the whole game, yeah. this, I think, yeah. this next hour. Yeah. I really do. I mean, all hours are important, but you just sense at certain times it could go either way. If Worcestershire bowl them out tonight, be a good day for them. If not, only lose one more wicket, none at all, perhaps. Be a really good day for them. Leach, hoping it's Worcestershire's day, and oh, I thought he'd uh, bowled him. It yeah. Beat the bat, hit the thigh, I think, and then ran down to slip. But certainly, moral victory for the bowler on that occasion. Yeah, it looked like Lyndon was groping at fresh air there. Yeah, it I'm, did. I'm with you. I thought, uh, I thought the first connection is likely to be with the top of off. Just on the on the the right thigh, I think. But uh, nice way to reply for Leach, having been hit to the boundary. Sets up this next ball quite nicely. He's in and bowls, and uh, oh, again, James is uh, <coughs> undone. But he's going to get runs, probably three of them, down to third man off the edge. It didn't carry, went down between slips and backward point. Jake Levy chased it down to third man, and they got three. But again, moral victory for the bowler. Calvin Harrison on six, now on strike. Just getting a bit of advice from James about uh, what Leach is doing with it. He threatens both edges, Leach. Bowls like this over the wicket at the right-handers. Can go either way of the seam. He's in and very, very well forward is Harrison getting right over the top of that, steering it out square on the offside. There's no run. Nathan Smith is already peeling off his sweater. He is keen to get at it. Picked up three wickets so far. Sensing he might get a five for and striding back to his mark already. 15 left in the day. Yeah, if you weren't with us, we had uh, an interested, interesting observer from the other side of the world this morning. Andre Adams sending a message. Say he was watching, and his comment was that Nathan Smith is a jet. Terrific bowler is uh, is what he put. 267 for six. Not sure if he's in New Zealand or in Sydney now, where he. Spends a lot of his time coaching as Smith starts this latest spell. He's bowled 13 overs up to this point in the day. First ball of this spell is uh, harmlessly wide. Three for 49 is figures. Two maidens. Knocked over both England men. One current, one former in Asiba Mead and Ben Duckett. Made a right old mess, didn't he, of uh, Asiba Mead stumps. Two of them knocked out of the ground. Smith in again, where's number 20 bowls and this is punched into the offside and new hard ball takes some stopping but has been stopped. Just two for Lyndon James, 269 for six. He's doing well there James, he's crept along hasn't yeah. he, 29, he's only faced 42 deliveries. Played all of the uh, the last two seasons batting at five and I said earlier, three centuries in that time. Highest score of 164, not out. So a very capable player. For much of that time, he was only playing as a batter, as uh, Smith bowls and he defends. Had uh, some side and back issues, but now fully recuperated. Playing as a genuine all-rounder, as we'll see in this game, is uh, going to get his fair share of bowling. Let's wonder if he... Might get more than his fair share with Knotts just going in with three seamers now and two spinners. So uh, he's no longer the fourth seamer. He's been promoted up the pecking order, but could, uh, could do with going into his bowling spell with a, a good score behind him. Smith bowls. Lyndon James happy to block. 269 for six. Went on. England Lions tour, not this last winter, but uh, 18 months ago, 15 months ago, whatever it was, I think it was Sri Lanka they went to. 
So uh, certainly being recognised by uh, those that do the selection. He's played for the England First Class Counties 11 the last two or three years as well when they've played against the Tourists. Here he is thrusting the bat at one wide outside off, steers it to Ali in the covers. And it remains 269 for six. sat out there now just gets into your bones doesn't it if you just sat out there in the, uh, the cold air all day as James again defends good accurate nagging over from Nathan Smith Nottinghamshire 269 for six here at Trent Bridge at 82 overs out of a prospective 96 over day so 14 more remain Nottinghamshire see it through to the close without uh, total collapse. They lost a mead for 11, Duckett 9, Slater 70, Montgomery for 11, Haynes for 15, Joe Clark the last to go for 105. Still going to be Leach. Leach and Smith will bowl in tandem for the next eight or ten overs. Maybe a bit of Jason Holder. He was just checking whether they want him in at second slip, but yes, says the bowler. Here comes Leach. Past Alex Wharf bowls. This gets high on the splice, and Harrison plays it out as far as former knotsman Jake Libby. Cornishman. Dane Patterson on the boundary edge. Clearly having done a spell in the indoor nets or in the gym. 269 for six. Harrison on six on strike. Leach from the broad end bowls and Fairly defensive push into the offside. Decent crowd in at Trent Bridge. All the stands open, so people sat all around the ground. But those of you watching the live stream now with a view towards the pavilion end or the, the broad end, um, you can see a, a decent number there, but there's always a lot of people on the vantage point of the Radcliffe Road end and look down on the plate. Delivery again blocked by Harrison and runs have totally dried up here. Although, uh, what Lyndon James was doing there, I'm not entirely sure. He'd come halfway down. There was maybe one if they'd both gone straight away, but certainly that didn't seem to be an option for Calvin Harrison. And Lyndon James had to turn and get back quickly before Cashy Valley well, he got to it and shied at the stumps but missed. And now. A slight delay whilst uh, some running repairs for Calvin Harrison. Uh, I beg your pardon for Lyndon James. It's okay, he doesn't have to uh, change his gloves or anything. He's good to go. Leach again then. Bowls and uh, runs for Harrison down to third man. One anyway. Thought about two, but. Uh, Jake Libby did that thing that you were talking about earlier, Dave, where he slid, got the ball in the air mm. quickly. It wasn't a very good throw, but it was in the air so quickly that the batsman decided against a second. Which means that James is on strike. He's on 29. Quite fluent. Quite comfortable. Joe Leach... In his 17th over of the day, one for 55. They've all been quite tidy, the Worcestershire bowlers. Finch a little bit wayward in the middle. Leach in, bowls. That's a lovely shot from James. 
really nice shot for no runs straight down the ground Dolivera running across from mid off to field um, Durham have just taken the second new ball according to Martin Emerson the uh, BBC Newcastle commentator taking the second new ball at 404 for one <laughs> Cracky me it's a tough watch isn't it for uh, Durham Perspective. It's not. It doesn't say a great deal for the Kookaburra experiment, nope. does it? Here's Leach in balls. Oh, that's a good one. He's beaten James there. All ends up pushing at that one. Just missed the top of off, I think. Taken by the keeper. End of the over, 270 for six. Standout innings today. Joe Clark, 105. And Ben Slater, 70. Slater, the glue that held it all together early on. Clark... Big partnership with Slater for that third wicket and then blossoming. Played some glorious shots between sort of 20 and 100 really. He was very circumspect, uncharacteristically so to start with, but cut loose after lunch. Mm. No runs Played to, splendidly. Uh, no runs to really talk about yet for Masiba Mead or Ben Duckett or Matthew Montgomery as... Nathan Smith comes in, looking for his fourth wicket of the innings, fires this one uh, full and pretty quick actually, just outside the off stump. Calvin Harrison lets it go through to Gareth Roderick, who's taken a couple of catches today, 270 for six. In fact, he's taken three catches, hasn't he? Duckett, Slater and uh, Joe Clark. Mead was bowled, Haynes given out LBW and Montgomery caught at slip by the bucket hands of Jason Holder. Smith bowls, Harrison again just happy to block. Soaking up a lot of balls in this partnership. Worth 32 now. Is that 62 balls or 82 balls? 62 I think. Uh, oh, it is 82. It is 82. Smith once more. We're in the fourth over with his second new ball. And again, Calvin Harrison just happy to soak up a bit of time, spend some quality time at the crease. Blocks this one. would love to get to 300 and beyond 293 was their first inning score last week and they'd really got themselves into a position where they probably should have gone on and got 350 or so minimum Smith still running in as purposefully as he did at the start of the day and that's a lovely looking shot square of the wicket on the leg side for four by Calvin Harrison just strayed slightly onto a leg stump line there, Smith, and Harrison's worked that away. That was a high-quality shot, and again with the new ball, the hardness of the new ball, it went very quickly out to the wicket, um, to the boundary, on the leg side racing over those old wickets, or the practice wickets. 274 for six. Worth 36 now. Smith three for 55. And again, lovely delivery here. Strikes the pad. They're asking behind the wicket. Smith not interested. 274 for six. You do get bowlers, don't you? That um, they don't sort of. Mm. <laughs> you know, to flip it round, you get those that appeal for everything, yeah. and you get others that don't see the point in a frivolous appeal and wasting energy bellowing in the direction of the umpire when they know he's just got outside the line or know it's going over and Smith appears to be one of those there's no point to appealing if I've got no chance of getting it comes in again bowls this wide of the mark Harrison shoulders arms lets it go through to Gareth Roderick 274 for 6 Nottinghamshire who won the toss at 10.30 Opted to bat first. Completely different game plan from last week. 
by Notts. Amid won last week and asked Essex to bat first and then promptly bowled them out on the first day. This time they've gone about it slightly differently on the same strip, remember. 274 for six. Jerry Leach to continue. 17 overs, one maiden, one for 55. His figures. Smith, 15 overs, two maidens. He's also gone, also gone for 55, but he has taken three of the six wickets to fall. Three slips now for Joe Leach. They all look pretty close together from where I'm sitting. Hose at first, Holder at second, Baker at third. Leach bowls, and this one's worked up to mid on. Strange old innings from Somerset. They're the first side today to be bowled out for 285. <laughs> You've got Lamanby 100, Renshaw 87, Gregory 50, and then 10-10-1-3, naught 12 not out So uh, just three really contributed in the runs, and everybody else sort of owes the side a, a few. But Somerset been bowled out for 2.85 at the Oval against the defending champions, who had uh, three wickets from Atkinson and three from Cameron Steele. He got a five for last week, didn't he, the spinner? Leach. Again, in bowls, and James is working it. On the onside this time, Cashy Fally at mid-wicket does the fielding. Very quiet period of the mm. game, this, since T really. Yorkshire. These two, you know, quietly, they've put on, what, 36 yeah. for this seventh wicket. Yorkshire now all out as well, 326 all out. That's at Bristol against Gloucestershire. Century there for Pakistan international Shan Masood. With Leach again. Bustles in as he usually does. Bowls. A little bit slower. This time on the back foot. James pushes out on the offside. Rob Jones, the fielder, at extra cover. Greyish, chilly sort of evening now, but it's been the best day of the cricket season, I think you could say so far. For a couple of hours yesterday afternoon in my garden, Dave, I was warm. I was actually working quite hard as well, and uh, the sun was out, and I was actually properly warm for the first time, I think, since about August. And it was a nice morning, wasn't it, early afternoon. Yep. Leach bowls, James is forward. Slightly uncertain on this as he pushes it into the covers. Jones is again the fielder. They've stuck at it pretty well in the field. Worcestershire, there was one bad mistake by Dolivera, of all people, early on when he took his eye off the ball, I think, and it went through him for two. But other than that, they've been pretty tidy. And uh, the bowlers have stuck at it. Nobody's been particularly wayward. Finch at times, perhaps, lacking the experience of the others. But generally, I think it's been a fairly tidy performance. Leach is in again and bowls, and James is pushing this up to mid on, where the aforementioned Finch is the fielder. And there's no run. I suspect Jason Holder is a golfer. He was just uh, yeah, practicing his, that, his, yeah. his swing there. He won't be as good as your mate. <laughs> Franklin Stevenson. He, yeah. Uh, he's a scratch golfer. Well, played professional for a while. Worcestershire's best golfer has left the staff. Who was that? Tom Fell, who's now at Oakham School, uh -huh. his old school. There's Leach Bowles, and James drives up to mid on, and Finch fields, and there's no run end of the over. 274 for six, and a maiden from Leach, 18 overs, two maidens, one at 455, which leaves, I think, Jake Livy has the number one goal for now on the staff. I think, um, I, mean, I, d I don't play or go or follow or whatever but I think um, they all say Brett Hutton is the um, the pick of the golfers for Nottinghamshire. Jake Ball was as well of course uh, Jake Ball now down at Taunton with Somerset looking forward to uh, to seeing Jake next week. Uh, Alex Hales of course we don't see him very much now at all but uh, he's a, a very keen golfer as well. Stuart Broad and Michael Lum were certainly I know it's a few years now since we saw Michael Lum here but He's a very keen golfer. Here's Nathan Smith in to bowl, and this is uh, just played out on the leg side. And there's no run. James Taylor as well. He, uh, yeah, he's really good, isn't yeah. he, James? Now, apparently, taking it very seriously. 
wasn't uh, wasn't remotely interested in it um, until obviously his life changed dramatically. See him from time to time when he's here on his England scouting duties. Sometimes pops in back of the box, says hello. Smith once more. He's charging in and keeps them nice and honest here. There's no freebies from uh, Nathan Smith, is there? Except when he's overstepped and given lots a couple of runs for his no balls, but he's, uh, he's running hard at them all day long. 74 for six, only 10 overs to go after this one. We're just slowly winding down. Interesting in the last two or three overs of the day if they decide to send out Liam Patterson White or the traditional old night watchman, Luke Fletcher. He had that job, or has had that job for many years, although, as I say, he didn't play in the last few matches of last year. Nasty ankle injury which required surgery. This one down the leg side, tucked away nicely by Harrison on this occasion, gets a single. 275 for six. It's a bit of a crawl for Knotts from 250 to 275, but if they can do it again, there'll be another batting point. They're up for grabs. I think 300 is no better than par. As we've seen up and down the country and particularly here at Trembury's last week and, and so far this if you don't strike early with that new ball Pat tends to have dominance over ball in the second period as James defends so side should be capable of getting around about 300 that should be par I would imagine Two balls left in the over, one or two starting to drift away and head off towards their Friday evening social engagements or maybe just get in and stick the fire on. <laughs> oh, the radiators or, uh, or whatever heat in they use. Because, uh, as I say, it gets into your bones after a while, doesn't it? Sat out there on a chilly day, 275 for six seen anybody in a t-shirt yet this season watching the cricket there'll be a few in t-shirts and shorts at the city ground tomorrow don't you always <laughs> are <laughs> well, so Worcestershire next week at Kidderminster who, who are the visitors Durham well they might as well stay down aren't they if they're at mm. Warwickshire mm. this week <laughs> crikey that's that's uh, asking a bit, isn't it? Go back home potentially mm. on Monday night. Well, and no, then back again on Thursday. Back on night. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. They might stay down, I suppose. No, I don't think so. Well, you, I don't know. I don't know. They like to get them home and get it's them away from way. cricket, don't they, it's for a, a day or two? Yeah. It's a long way from everywhere. 275 for six. And on the. Uh, Deep square boundary has been brought in to mid wicket. Smith in and uh, good delivery past the outside edge of James Bat. End of the over, Nottinghamshire 275 for six. It's been uh, slow going recently. They took the second new ball at 260. So, so they, they have added 15 in six overs. So. Not quite as pedestrian as I was uh, as I was making out 15 in the last six overs. It's going to be Joe Leach to continue. He's another one who will sleep well tonight. This is going to be his 19th over. Yeah. One for 55, his figures. There are runs all over the place, aren't there? Mm. You're looking around all over the country. Yeah. Not many bowlers will be voting for the Kookaburra, I don't think. But the batters will. Joe Clark will. Yeah. Here's Joe Leach. From the Stuart Broad end bowls and uh, Harrison on the back foot plays defensively on the offside. All the time in the world to play that. Yeah. We wondered last week if uh, if Sam Cook had actually taken um, 
too much balls home with him because you can mm. imagine in the first innings the one he got a hat trick with he'd yeah. want to take and yeah. then six for 14 or something yeah. in the second innings yeah. so. probably it makes you wonder how statistics over the years might have been altered had they used a kookaburra all the time or <laughs> something like that I often think about it with football as Leach comes in and bowls and uh, beats Harrison outside the off stump as he pushes at that one. How many of Alan Shearer's Premier League goals would have been ruled out by VAR? <laughs> At least a hundred, I should think. Mad as it sounds. Essex going well again. Obviously, they uh, won here last week. They're 377 for five. Dean Elgar got 120. Matt Critchley's 87, not out. Jordan Cox made 67. Michael Pepper who's uh, standing in as wicketkeeper for the injured Rossington, is 39, not out. Here's Leach in to bowl, and forward comes Harrison, pushing out on the offside. Lovely looking shot. No run. It does strike you that they've got a lot of time to play at the moment, these two, doesn't it? The, mm. uh, the ball not deviating much. Jason Holder loosening up, looking as though he's going to come into the attack shortly. Might, with his height, just get a little bit more out of the surface with the kookaburra. Just get a bit more bounce. Did see one or two bounce this morning. Leach in again. Bowls and again. All the time in the world for Harrison just to sit on the back foot and drop it down on the offside. Emilio Gay has just brought up his 150. 150 not out for North Ants against Middlesex. Of course, Middlesex were in that uh, high-scoring draw against Glamorgan at Lords last week. Both sides topping 600. Northants 270 for two. Emilio Gay 150 not out. Leach again. Three slips. Wait. Bowls. And again, Harrison is studiously forward. Watching it all the way onto the face of the bat, head low down. Very, very correct defensive shot. And there is again a no run. 275 for six. So tomorrow the plan, pop in here for lunch and then yeah. pop over to the city ground to watch the football. Yeah, and have some more lunch there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, might might try and grab a an hour of cricket first, I think. Leach is in. Bowls outside the stump. Left alone by Harrison. End of the over. Another maiden for Joe Leach. 19 overs. Three maidens. One for 55 for him. Jason Holder is going to come on at this Radcliffe Road end. So Smith being withdrawn. Whether he'll go to the other end or not, I don't know. Smith's figures. 16 overs. Two maidens. Three for 56. Looks like me interviewing Luke Fletcher out there. Brett D'Oliveira, all of four foot six, chatting to uh, yeah. Jason Holder, who's seven foot eleven. He did. Uh, po <laughs> Brett, Brett posted a picture on his Instagram of the two of them at Edgbaston, where he went and took Holder's sweater off him, and it was an absolute little and large, lovely shot. Not quite the James Taylor, Will Jefferson one that was famous all those years ago at yeah, Leicester. There was, um, there was one in the winter, wasn't there? Ben Duckett for the National Anthems. Didn't they put in between, was it Zach Crawley <laughs> yeah. and somebody else's? Was it Broad? But uh, Ben Duckett almost masked out by the mascot in front of him as Holder comes in and bowls. And this is defended to 75 for six. Yeah, we're all changed tomorrow here. We've got uh, Grace... Well, I say we're all changed. I'll be here. Uh, Grace Ballinger, who uh, Nottinghamshire supporters will... Uh, well, no, she's become a regular voice here alongside me over the last two or three seasons. Um, Grace Ballinger will be back tomorrow and Sunday and uh, representing BBC Hereford and Worcester. We've got Jim Dale coming up to uh, stand in capably and ably, I'm sure, for Frank. 275 for six as this one's defended. Jim Dale, now his sister Emma well. Yeah. <laughs> He's done well since the Carry On films. <laughs> I used to love the Carry On.
old films, and, I, and he's a young man, isn't he? I bet. I bet. Uh, I bet he, 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 won't I bet he wouldn't get any well, of the references. No. He, well, he, uh, he maybe that one because people must have told him, I suppose. But. Next ball is uh, down the leg side off the thigh pad, I think. So there's going to be a leg by here to knots. First run in a while. Move to 276 for six when. Ian Smith comes out of his slumber. There he is, and, uh, and works the the board. Two seventy six for six. We've not mentioned the uh, um, the scorers or uh, it's or anybody fastest, else today. Uh, it's actually, the fastest board around, isn't it? Or oh, it's got to be one of the fastest. Roger Marshall uh, doing the notching for knots. Sue Drinkwater here for Worcestershire. They've scored a few games together. Those two, as uh, this one is defended by uh, Calvin Harrison, who's on. 12. Coming along tomorrow, folks. I think the forecast is uh, is pretty good. Should be a good day of cricket. And if you uh, if you're all in and are in, do it. Do it. Sad to say, after this match, it's only five more county championship games at mm. Trembridge this year. Yeah, there you it's are. Mad, isn't it? Put that in a, a Ooh, sentence. Four well, this has come off. The shoulder of the bat. I think it's a no ball, so this could be six to Nottinghamshire. Four to Calvin Harrison, but it's a no ball. So uh, two against Holder, and he pushed at that one tentatively. Says Brace Girdle getting through the one word he hates saying, but I've just heard Frank say it, so I'll have a go. <laughs> tentatively. I always say tentatively, but he pushed at that tentatively, and it uh, it flew between second and fourth slip. There's nobody at third slip, and ran away for four, but. He overstepped. Six to knots. That's got the board moving. 282 for six, tentatively. Hold it in again, and this is pushed into the offside. Do you, have you, is there a word that springs to mind that you... Oh, I, I, won't, I won't go there. It's always tentatively, um, which unfortunately in cricket is one that you're tempted yeah. to say fairly often. I can't think of it. There probably are <laughs> words. but I know what you mean, though. You, you're almost drawn to the ones that you find... Most difficult. I, I was doing um, I was doing a Liverpool game earlier this year, and it was when Dominic Saboslai had just oh, yeah. joined, and I practiced and practiced and practiced Good luck with that. the day before, yeah. and then sure enough, got it wrong when I said it on air, and I didn't even need to say it. You know, I mentioned that he made a pass or something. I, d I could yeah. have just said it was passed through, but you do, you just kind of like you feel you need to. 282 for six is the score. We just had to wait whilst Calvin Harrison tied up a bootlace as uh, Holder bowls and this goes through to the keeper. I've reported on Mickey Naynard scoring a goal uh, in yeah. the past. 282 yeah. for six at the end of the over. Tentatively. You're bound to make some mistakes, aren't you? When you talk all day. Uh, Charlie's been in touch. Nice to hear from you, Charlie. One of our regulars, Joe uh, Clark. He's a class act. He got his head down today, then cashed in, and it was gorgeous to watch. Thanks for that, Charlie, on the old uh, Twittery thing, at Brace Cricket, at Frank Watson 58. Um, just heard from uh, James Coyne um, thanking us for uh, having him up here, which was an absolute delight earlier from the cricketer. We've had a number of guests today as Joe Leach comes in. And balls to uh, Lyndon James, who gets a inside edge, really, looking to push that, up, well, a lot straighter than it went, and it squirted away to mid-wicket, Cashew Valley, no run. James is on 29, he's faced 61 deliveries. Calvin Harrison's on 60, he's faced 60. It's been, well, attritional stuff, shall we say, yeah. since yeah. T. Two wickets have gone down. Haynes and Clark, the men out. But uh, both sides have been uh, pretty focused in this session. As Leach is in, bowls, and James gets a run. Just turning this one to the right of Kashif at mid-wicket this time. And Nathan Smith coming off the boundary at deep square leg to do the fielding. That's his first run for an absolute age, yeah. but it doesn't matter. No. Said. Absolute age. About getting through the day now. I think seven mm. overs left after this. Should finish about quarter past six, I would have thought. And Joe Leach turns the Stuart Broadend and comes in towards us and bowls. And 
Harrison pushes up to mid on. I'm just struck by the ease with which these two are playing. They've mm. got loads of time. So little pace in the pitch. Not much lateral movement. It's going to be hard work to bowl anybody out twice, but yeah. that's obviously the knot's plan with mm. batting first, Worcestershire batting last on the last day, two spinners, etc. It's not rocket science, is it? Leach again. Bowls. Drives Harrison back past the bowler. Tumbling stop. Finch coming across from mid off. Long way down for Big Adam. He's got long legs, hasn't he? Yes, indeed. JC's been in touch again. Jim Dale, he says. <laughs> yeah. Apart from being an actor, he wrote the lyrics he to did. Georgie Girl. He did. The yeah. film. Yeah. And a hit for the Seekers. He had four top 20 hits himself. And he wrote the Des O'Connor hit, Dicker Dum Dum. There you go. Can you remember Dicker Dum Dum? You've got to be careful how you say that one as well. Yes, Dicker Dum Dum. Leech. In, bowls outside the off stump, left alone by Harrison. 283 for six, in case listeners are getting excited, <laughs> it's not the Jim Dale who will be who will be in this chair tomorrow. The 80, whatever he is, 81-year-old Jim Dale. But, um, yeah. Des O'Connor. He sang, a, was it? Oh, no, that was Maldunican, wasn't it? Paddy McGinty's goat that he sang about. What did Des O'Connor also sing? Was that a toothbrush? Well, just, got a pink I'm, toothbrush, got a blue toothbrush. No doubt. Mr Curtis will shortly <laughs> inform us. His leech again is in. And bowls, fuller this time. Equally comfortable on that length. Harrison is forward, pushing up to mid on. End of the over. Seven left in the day. Leach, 20 overs. Three maidens, one for 56. Tidy from the Worcester Beneficiary and Jason Holder even tidier, 11 overs 5 maidens, no wicket for 18 will continue Yeah, He's put a good shift in today hasn't he, uh, John Curtis, been with us since the start of play 283 for 6 Nottinghamshire, as Frank said, just 7 to go it's going to be Holder Liam Patterson-White, Luke Fletcher, Dylan Pennington. The three that we've not seen on the field yet as James reaches forward, steers it out to Cashy Valley. No runs there. Worcestershire top order the same as last week. Jake Libby have got good runs at Edgbaston in the second innings and Gareth Roderick top of the order, Cashy Valley Rob Jones Adam Hose, Brett D'Oliveira that's a strong looking top six as Holder comes in a little bit of sunshine there this, this is clipped away onto the leg side by James, gets a single I'm alerted to the fact that I've got an email from John Curtis I wonder what that could be about Dave, pink toothbrush was by Max Bygraves, thank you <laughs> thank you John you shouldn't know you're dealing with an idiot, John. 284 for six. An idiot with selective memory at best. Pink toothbrush. Massive hit. Holder. A shadow all around him from the sun. Floodlights aren't on, thankfully. So this is played up to Joe Leach. It's the, not bothering to pop a sweater on between overs, Joe Leach, so we can actually see his number, number 23. It's not been a day for number recognition today with uh, most of the Worcestershire players with their woolly pullies on, keeping nice and warm. Holder, who appears to be nameless and numberless bowls. I think that is a Worcestershire shirt, isn't it? But he hasn't got a number on it. 284 for six. I think he's got. Do you think he's got one underneath? He's. I think he's still got his sweater on. Actually, I don't know if he's got a shirt underneath. But he's still. I think he's still got the sleeveless. Yeah, he's still got a sleeveless sweater on. He comes again from a West Indies skipper balls to. Calvin Harrison and another overstep. Yep. 
Two more to the total. At least they found him a pair of trousers that fit because Al Zori Joseph came over oh, a couple yeah, of years yeah. ago and he had trousers that ended halfway up his calves. Oh, I thought uh, that Ian Smith there obviously saw it and popped it up straight yeah. away because as soon as I looked up, the partnership said 48 and I was just waiting for it to change to 50, but it had clearly gone from 46 to 48. To 86 for six. Here comes Holder. Again, bowling and lovely rhythmical action, smooth action. Harrison defends as somebody on a motorbike whizzes by, but we can no longer see them. We're devoid of any traffic views now. Thanks to the building of the Dave Bracegirdle residential home away to our right behind the William Clark stand. That's 14 away from a second batting bonus point. So Holder balls pulled away by Calvin Harrison. There should be at least a couple here. Should be cut off. They've run two. In fact, they'll uh, come back for a leisurely third. So 289 for six. Harrison on to 19. And that is the 50 partnership between these two youngsters. Nicely done. As uh, Frank said a moment or two ago, could make a case for it being attritional, but they've got the job done. Yep. 51 for the seventh wicket from 124 balls. Lyndon James slightly outscored Calvin Harrison, 27 to 19. A couple of no balls thrown in there as well. But uh, unlike last week, where Knott's lost their last six wickets for 34, their last five for four runs or whatever it was, at least uh, some welcome runs from the lower order. Nathan Smith coming back for one last salvo in the day. Six overs remain. That's good from Dolivier, isn't it? He could have just popped himself and Cashy Valley on and, you know, let's just get off the field and start again tomorrow, but striving still whilst this ball is new and hard yeah. just to get a wicket. Yeah. Smith it is. Racing in from the Stuart Broad end. Pushed defensively out on the onside. He's kept going all day, Nathan Smith, hasn't he? It's 17th over. I know Joe Leach just bowled more, but Smith absolutely tanks in, doesn't he? And yeah. He's, he just, he's a very um, what's the, what's the purposeful yeah. performer, I think. Very ha focused. He has bowled from the broad end before, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. One yeah. Uh, spell from a little before, spell. I think. Yeah. But he's very aggressive, isn't he, at the batsman. Comes in now. Bowls. And on the back foot, this is played back to him by Harrison. Looks like uh, the head coach is on the way around. Uh, doing his rounds, matron's rounds. Bringing a drink <laughs> round for Joe Leach, I think, who just happens to have gone right over the other side. <laughs> so he'll have to come all the way around. Well, you'd imagine Alan would have got staff to do that for him had yeah, he wanted I think he to. Must he wants want to come word. in and have a word. Yeah. He likes to get round the yep. ground as well, I yep. think. It's a long day if you just sat in there, isn't it? Yep. Looking at a screen. But also, where this strip is, it's not a great view from the pavilion. Here's Smith again in bowls and uh, pushed out on the offside by Harrison. I would say as well about these two youngsters, you know, I, when I said it was attritional, it wasn't meant in a derogatory sense. They've done the job, yeah, but yeah. they've they've both done it with a minimum of fuss, haven't yeah. they? Absolutely composed and professional. They've played really well. But I think equally, with the exception of that one little brief period, I think Worcestershire too have been quite yes. tidy. Yeah. Smith again is in and bowls. This one's driven up to Dolivera at mid-off. And there's no run. 289 for six. Score remains. Five overs left in the day after this. I'll stick to my prediction of a, a quarter past six finish. Which is not too bad. Be away by seven. Maybe a bit earlier. Do a quick post-match interview. I'm hoping to speak to Nathan Smith, actually. BBC Hereford and Worcester listeners will be able to hear that tomorrow. He comes and bowls. Worked away on the onside. Fielded by Kashif. It's nice, isn't it, when you mm. do your interviews and you don't have to wait around too much unlike 
Premier League football, Dave. <laughs> I can tell you. Well, you have to. They have to do the Premier League, and then they have to do match of the day, then they have to do whatever other TV channels there are. And oh, goodness me, you can be there for ages waiting. In comes Nathan Smith again. And he bowls and is pushed out on the offside by Calvin Harrison. End of tidy over from Smith. 17 overs, 3 maidens, 3 for 56. His figures, 5 left in the day. Jason Holder to continue from the Radcliffe Road end. By Wharf just scratching away at the bowler's crease at the far end there. Will of course be freshened up overnight. Been uh, the sort of day that the ground staff very much enjoy. Been able just to get away for two hours at a time and put their feet up, get a cup of tea. Holder comes in, bowls wide of the pegs. Lyndon James lets it go through to the keeper, but uh, won't be too long before we see them on the boundary edge get in there hover cover, the other cover's ready to put the ground to bed for the night. That's just trying to get to stumps. If they can, be uh, 96 overs completed in the day, so there'll be 14 more overs left tomorrow morning in which bonus points can be accrued. And whisper it quietly, and Notts might be thinking about 350, but they'll need this pair you would imagine to uh, stick around for a bit longer yet as James on 31 defends. Added 51 after both. So both missed out last week. Lyndon James was not out in the second innings. He was left high and dry. The uh, the rest of the lower order just collapsed all around him. Didn't stay there for long, but uh, both of them. Spending a bit of time in the middle for the first time this season as uh, Holder bowls again. James defends once more. <laughs> Nearly done. Four overs remain. We've had uninterrupted cricket since 11 o'clock. Nottinghamshire 289 for six. Lyndon James on 31. Calvin Harrison 19. These two youngsters doing really well. They've added 51 together. Star of the day for Knotts, Joe Clark, who made 105. There's Holder, past umpire Debenham bowls, and that's on the pad, so that's going to get the treatment. But uh, is it hit? Straight out to deep backward square. A couple of runs to Lyndon James. 2.91 for six. Keep it to 20 seconds, Dave. Keep it to 20 seconds. I don't know if that was anywhere near 20 oh, seconds. Oh, it was about but, right, Dave. Uh, How about it right. wasn't. Uh, there weren't too many times for frills to uh, to talk about. Seba Mead and his exploding stumps, or Joe Clark and his three straight sixes. Just dipped in and out quickly. Nottinghamshire flag hanging absolutely limply from the pole above the pavilion as James again pushes into the offside, sharply runs single this time. And moves on to 33, 291 for six. No, 292 for six, I beg your pardon. Gareth Roderick's been very tidy today, hasn't mm. he, as well? I think kept very, really well. Good take there from that throw. Good catch standing up. Yes, he's had a variety of dismissals. One down the leg side. Holder bowls driven crisply up to Leach at mid on to end the over. Harrison remains on 19. James 34. There's a little bit of noise that we've. Um, We've heard from time to time. I don't know if there's a stag party in or, uh, or what it is or who it is in particular they're cheering or what have you, but um, they're at the cricket. They've paid the money to come in. They're having a good time, and that's what it's all about. Four overs left. Nathan Smith will bowl the first of them from the Stuart Broad end. I think it was the last match of last season. Sort of been a double booking. The cricket was going on, and somebody had 
booked Trembridge for their wedding reception downstairs um, with a disco. Who's Smith? Over the wicket, balls turned <laughs> off his hip by James. So cricket was going on whilst um, booming out from the rooms downstairs mm. for everybody to hear was your YMCA and your uh, all your other big uh, you get the players big disco start dancing. hits. And, uh, well, the umpires um, initially can we not turn that down and uh, no, so uh, they, had to, they had to play on. But uh, it was a, it was <laughs> it was very strange, very strange indeed. Josh Baker loosening up at third slip. I reckon he might be on at this end in a minute. A couple more overs before the end of the day. Smith bowls, pushed out on the offside by James. He's trying just as hard now, Smith, as he did yep. first over of the morning, I reckon, which is great to see. It's been a tough old day out there for both sides, I think. If you do speak to him, tell him Andre Adams says he's a jet. I will. I think they were yeah. his words. I will. A terrific cricketer, he's a jet, said the great man. Some player, Andre Adams. And he comes again. Nathan Smith bowls, and forward comes James, pushing out into the offside. And fielding is done by Rob Jones, who's been uh, as busy as anybody out there today. It's another no ball, I think, Frank. Oh, it was. Been too many, haven't there? Too many. I think that's. Uh, 15 now. 15 no balls. 15? 15. Yeah, that's really... That's that's annoying, isn't it, from a coach's point of view? How can you have 15? Oh, well, no, 15... Hang on. I was thinking 15 instances. It's 292 on the website with 14 no balls. I've just gone up to 294, so... Uh so that's, that's eight no balls then. 16 runs have come from no balls, so eight times. Yeah, sorry, that's it. Them. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. yeah. Of course you can't have 50. No, I was thinking 15 no balls, 30 runs, but yeah, obviously yeah. no. Yeah, eight no balls. But it's still too many, isn't it? Of course it, it is, yeah. Just, you know, in, a, to, in, a, in, a mind, tough, yeah. in a tight <laughs> game. To my mind, you do it once, you've mm. too many. Smith in, balls. Back foot drive by James. Beautiful shot, actually. Probably as good a shot... Well, certainly as good a shot as he's played. One of the best six or seven of the day, actually. Beautifully played on the back foot. High left elbow, perfectly straight back. Past the diving fielder at cover and out to the boundary. Lovely shot from Lyndon James. Is that a sign that Nathan Smith's just getting a little bit leg weary? Yeah, or, maybe. Or will we get a response from the Kiwi? Maybe. 38 now to James. 2.98 for six. Two runs away from that uh, batting yeah. bonus point. Worcestershire just need to finish the day tidily and here is Smith what will the response be that's a foolish delivery driven by James straight to Jones at cover trouble free batting really I think for most of the day really after that first hour 34 for 2 in 8th over when Duckett was out to Smith, Hamid having gone for 11, Duckett out for 9, but then Slater and Clark steadied the ship. They then pushed on, and since then, even with the new ball being taken, it's been hard work for the bowlers. Smith again bowls, and James is forward, pushing up to mid on, and that's the end of the over. So there'll be three left, I think Holder is going to carry on. 298 for six. James 38, Harrison 19. So lots have gone past last week's 293. Three overs, or a maximum of three overs left in the day. I imagine we'll get them all in. Worcestershire would love to break this partnership and just exert a bit of pressure on Patterson White or Fletcher. Or indeed Pennington, whoever comes in next. Perhaps finish the day with a bit of a bang. There's Holder. Watery sunshine. 
Cascades down on the Trent Bridge outfield. Short hit up in the air, but it's going to fall well short of the fielder. Nathan Smith, so 2.99 for six. Harrison taking on the pull, moves to 20. He wasn't in control of no, that one. Harold no. Holder looked disappointed because it could have gone anywhere. Got away with it. A rare error, though. Yep. He's faced, a hundred, what, 77 balls. The partnership, 144 balls. And, what, two, three mistakes at the most. Very, very good. So James on strike on 38. Holder bowls to him. Just, uh, again... Happy to push it into the offside to Cashy Valley. Lovely sound from the bat of Lyndon James. Not seen the umpires uh, bring out those gauges and uh, just check the bats. Of any of the Nottinghamshire players today might have uh, might have been done. It's it's not something you you just automatically are looking out for or pick up on. But last week. Clearly they, uh, they just chose to check them. This is down the leg side, taken by Roderick. It's brought half an appeal from Holder, but nothing more. 2.99 for six. But, uh, for the Worcestershire supporters who weren't aware, there was a bat confiscated here last week in the game against Essex. Ferro's Kushi, the Essex opener, had his bat checked. It didn't go through the gauge. It was taken away by the umpires given to the match referee Steve Davis for further investigation this is uh, on wide of the pegs that goes through to the keeper the precedent that uh, a lot of journalists brought up two years ago Nick Madison the Australian who was playing for Durham at the time his was the other high profile incident of a bat being confiscated from the field and Durham were penalised 10 points which vaguely remember at the time but the more we thought about it last week doesn't that seem a little harsh 2.99 for six the team penalized 10 points bouncer this goes through to the keeper you can say yes the coaches should check the players should check and everybody but um it wasn't the individual in the durham case we don't know or i don't know any more details about that but uh Ferro's kushi's bat was confiscated and at some point at some point you'd imagine we may hear a little bit more about it and the uh, adjudicator will I'm sure decide if there's a penalty to pay um, Jason Holder going round the wicket here with one ball left in the over 2.99 for six comes into bowl to Lyndon James and rolls it outside the off stump James defends and there's no run I wonder if he's going if, if he's going to go round the wicket he might want to push a short leg in there but didn't there's two overs left in the day not one run shy of 300 and Alan Richardson runs on with a helmet so uh, this will be for Josh Baker to bowl the penultimate over of the day yeah well these two done a great job I think Lyndon James and Calvin Harrison just when Worcestershire perhaps sensed a chink in the armour with Haynes and Clark going 238 for 6 looked like a really good fight back by Worcestershire but uh, any hopes they had of wrapping things up tonight have been well and truly extinguished by this partnership which has taken not to within one run of another bonus point and they've done it in untroubled fashion. James perhaps the more assured of the two, but Calvin Harrison equally impressive in many ways. Inexperienced player. Been very solid. And he it is who's on strike for Josh Baker to bowl the penultimate over of the day from the Stuart Broad end of the ground. He used to be called the Pavilion End. And He's just making a final adjustment to his field. One slip, short extra on the catch. And he bowls. His first ball is pushed through quite quickly and dropped a bit short and very easily clipped through that gap on the leg side to bring up the 300 for Knott's ripple of applause that you can probably hear. 303 for six. Bit of a loosener from Josh Baker. Maybe an order himself. Thank you.
Second batting point for Knotts. Balls forward comes Harrison. Pushes up to mid on. Looseners are annoying, aren't they, for captains, I think, and bowlers yeah. themselves, really. Don't quite know why it happens. Baker again bowls, right on the money this time, pushed out on the onside. And it doesn't matter how many times they bowl it to mid off or mid on or whatever. S some tension, perhaps, in the shoulders, in the fingers. But uh, that first one came out wrong. This next one is better. Pushed out on the offside. No run. 303 for six. Baker in his 24th over of the day. He's in again now and he bowls. And a single clipped away on the onside for Harrison. Fielded by Kashif at mid wicket. 304 for six. One ball left in this over from Baker. His 24th. One for 80, his figures. And then we'll be into the last over of the day. Here is Baker. He's in bowls. And uh, another run for Lyndon James on the back foot playing out into the covers. And that is the end of the over. 3.05 for six. James keeps the strike. One over left in the day. I'd say not today by... 10% or so, nothing too drastic in it, but uh, they won the toss and chose to bat. They wobbled a little bit at first, they wobbled again a little bit at 2.38 for six, but they end the day in a very solid position indeed. Um, one over left in the day, just uh, one or two thank yous. We've had um, four wonderful guests come up and share their time with us. Tim Jones this morning got a new book out on Worcestershire cricketers, 61 for one at... Um, at Brace Cricket, at Frank Watson, 58. We both uh, retweeted all the details there. If you want to get in touch with uh, Tim um, to get a copy of the new book. This afternoon we had the former Worcestershire legends, Phil Neal and Alan Ormrod, come and share an hour with us, which uh, was an absolute joy. We've had uh, James Coyne as well from The Cricketer. And, of course, many thanks to you for... Uh, for being there with us throughout the day and uh, to everybody that's uh, taken the trouble to get in touch. Here's Holder. Bangs this in short and it's through to the keeper. 305 for six. in the day the time for Worcestershire still maybe to get another wicket it's uh, defended on the leg side no run here by James of course if a wicket goes down they'll troop off so uh, three remaining batters can uh, get their pads off knowing they won't be required to come to the middle Oh, that would have been stump. silly, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, Lyndon James had a mighty old who are at that one. Gets nothing on it. Ooh. Crikey. If it uh, nicked that through to the keeper, it would have been uh, very, very disappointed as he trooped off. again comes in round the wicket poles and this time Lyndon James bobs underneath that one so uh, expect a, a little bit of leg side theory to end the day he's got a short leg in he's got a leg slip man down at long leg for the hook another one out at deep square leg so Lyndon James just got to be aware there are traps being set there by Holder and Dolivier, who now moves himself from mid on to shortish mid wicket. Holder in again, bowling. Again, a delivery that James can 
bob underneath so there's one ball left um, many thanks to Frank for his company and commentary throughout the day scheduled to be back we well, might pop in tomorrow he said but scheduled to be back on, on Monday. Monday yeah so wonder uh, whether I should what's, bother. What's, well, no, no. Uh, I, I thought that. you meant the weather no, forecast. No, just, no, it was just what state the game is yeah. uh, is going to be mm. in by then. Yellow belly. Brilliant stuff today. Started watching the live stream just after lunch with Clark and Slater going well. Glad to see James and Harrison see the day out and gain the second point. Thank you, Yellow belly. Appropriate note to end the day on as Lyndon James bowls to... Uh, I beg your pardon. Lyndon James pushes the ball back to Jason Holder. James is 39 not out. Calvin Harrison is... 25 not out they've added 67 for the fourth wicket knots finish on 305 for six we've had a full day of cricket which is the most important thing and uh, i'm sure those that have come along or those of you that have uh, taken the trouble just to be with us for uh, part or all of the day either on the live stream or uh, listening via the bbc sport website and app i hope you've enjoyed the coverage and uh, you'll come back and do it again tomorrow morning um Final thoughts for the the day, Frank. Not just a whisker in front, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Good, good day for Knotts. Um, excellent from Clark. Good from Slater early on. Very good from these two youngsters at the end. Worcestershire uh, pretty tidy, I thought, for most of the mm. time. A little bit sloppy after lunch for a, a period of time, uh, which allowed Clark to really get himself in. But uh, generally speaking, fairly tidy. Good attritional cricket on a surface that has offered little help um, but yeah uh, good hard day of county cricket thank you Frank very much indeed look forward to uh, catching up with you um, either tomorrow or on Monday I look forward to uh, the company of Grace Ballinger and Jim Dale in the commentary box to tomorrow and very much enjoyed uh, today I look forward to sharing it all with you all tomorrow final score then from Trembridge Nottinghamshire 305 for six two batting bonus points for Knotts two bowling bonus points for Worcestershire all to play for in the morning as long as the sun shines and as long as we're all here enjoying the cricket we'll uh, we'll take that I think from us all at Trembridge wish you a very good night